Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is the final weekend of the Millions Online Festival here at Party Poker. And joining me today, 08 Grinder, alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, for event number 65, the 7 Max Weekender. 08, we've got a $320 buy-in with about 40000 up top, my man. Wow. So, wow. time to strap ourselves in, I guess, because these right. guys are going um, bounty on it. I'm ready. I'm ready, Henry. Let's go. Let's do it. What do you think we're going to expect? I guess straight out the gate, it's going to be pretty slow to start off with everyone kind of just easing into the tournament. But with this bounty structure, you know, I expect to see some loose calls and some aggressive plays from everyone in the field. I expect nothing less, Henry. Let's do it. I hope Let's that... see some action. I hope that's the case. People are going to let me down if they're not in there with, you know, the ace five suited as the cold four out of the big blind chasing bounties. All right. How are you doing yeah. in the chat, ladies and gentlemen? Thanks for joining us this evening. And without further ado, yeah. let's jump into it. So tournament info, $320 buy-in, event number 65, seven max. So that means the ranges are going to be a little bit wider than usual, Oh wait, This isn't, you know, your American nine-handed, ten-handed poker, all right, boys and girls. We're in there with the king nine suited. <laughs> and you can yes. see that we're going to be playing down to a winner as well. So around about 40,000 for first. And also worth noting that the prize pool got absolutely smashed. Just shy of 300k collected. Let's take a look at the chip counts. It is Leonard Oliver Mayo leading the way with 29 million. A couple of recognizable names in there. Anton Wig, Carlos De Silva as well, and Ben Warrington. Names that I've all seen on the streams before. So be keep an eye out for them, but still a very long way to go. Myself and 08 Grind are going to be calling the action for you boys and girls for the next few hours. We're going to be doing our best to break down the hands as well as possible. And let's take a quick look at these pairs before we jump into the action. So just shy of 20k for first, but those bounties, I know a lot of you guys that are regulars here, be more than aware that sometimes the bounties can be you know, two and a half, three times as much as first prize. Obviously still got a long way to go. Oh wait, let's jump into it, my man. Without further ado, let's get some blood on the blood, blood on the streets, blood in the seas. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's blood chase everywhere. some bounties. There we go. These bounty formats, though, oh wait, you know, they're becoming more and more popular, even in the live format as well. Yeah, I I I don't have any experience playing uh, these uh, bounties, these uh, these crazy knockout terms, but. Judging by the action, I, I think I, I need to change my stance and I, I got to play a lot of these. For sure. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I just think any type of game that just draws as much attention as these, these bounty events do in the sense that 
it attracts a lot of pros and recreationals alike, right? Because there's always the chance that you can make money without even making the cash. So mm -hmm. it yeah. tends to uh, attract a lot of out of line poker being played pre flop and post flop. Do they have any of these for Omaha? Oh, man, Just curious. Don't, don't, don't tempt us with a good time over here, all right? <laughs> That the heads at party <laughs> poker, please listen to our pleas. Like, can you imagine? Get some, uh, get, I mean, a mysterious bounty here, low PK. Oh, that would be, oh, no, mysterious, mystery cool. bounty. Sorry, not mysterious. I mean, maybe it is mysterious. I don't know. Mystery as well. People like mystery, they do indeed. It definitely adds to like the allure of the event, right? Like you can only knock one person out and uh, and still win six figures, five figures, happen. <laughs> I love that. Just gonna adjust my, my camera away. There we go. Yeah, they, they need to see, you know, what you've been working on that chest area, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I yeah. wish, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing to see here. But what about you, man? You, you were saying that you've been, uh, been maintaining shape. You've been, been staying healthy. I, I've been trying, man. I've been trying, you know. But uh, it's, uh, it's a lot harder now that uh, 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 recently we have uh, my mother-in-law uh, stay with us, and uh, she, she cooks like, like no other. Uh, I've been eating oh, yeah. like I've been at the. Like I've been at the wind buffet for like the last two weeks. It's uh, it's insane the kind of food, you know. And I was like, I, I I'm never gonna lose weight now. The food's too good. The food's too good. It isn't that part of the marriage agreement that the mother-in-law is to is meant to keep you well fed, right? Whenever she she visits. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was in the contract. I think it was page four, paragraph seven. There we go. So, uh, I, you know, I, I usually skip that part because uh, I never, I never really believe that these things actually pull through. But, yeah, <laughs> now, now we've pulled through. So, yeah, but you know, I'm happy that she's here because, uh, uh, you know, it's always nice to have family close by. You know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so now, now you're reaping the rewards. I tell you, who else is going to be reaping the rewards? Thomas, with top hair, top kicker up against Louis in the big blind view. Just defending pre. It's one million out there already. I mean, Thomas is potentially going to get pretty unlucky here in the sense that he might not get the full double with the ace of diamonds rolling off on the turn. That was a good chance if the brick had rolled off that Louis would have just gone with his hand at this stack of pot ratio. Look at that, oh wait. Let's see the... Nice. the these are the small parts of poker, you know, where we, we talk about the skill and the luck involved. That's definitely part of the luck being involved mm -hmm. there in the sense that Louise managing to get away from potentially getting stacked up the flopping top pair against the better top pair. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. He got lucky. He, he, it, it didn't come like a three or a four. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ferrero with all the chips what's going on here oh wow 25 yeah i you know what let, let me just say i love the fact that everyone starts with like a million chips i i i, I love this it it's it's crazy it's crazy i love it yeah definitely um i don't know there's a bit of oomph on behind what you're betting you know like when it gets to the point where you can just start wagering a hundred million chips i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> uh it's like what i told nate uh last time uh, uh i was here uh, it makes me feel like you're at the final table of the main event and everyone has millions of chips like yeah. early 2000 uh mid 2000 main event yeah there we go i told him i i, I want to i want to do what my idol jerry yang did at the final table where he would stand up just so he could bet like one million chips <laughs> he had to stand up every time he did it that's my favorite moments wow. and this was this was jerry yang 
Jerry Yang, yes. Jerry Yang. Ah, I'm gonna have to. Former world champion Jerry Yang. Former world champion. I forgot what year he that. won. I think it was, uh, what year was it? I wanna say mid 2000s. It was like, might have been 2007. 2006 i'm not sure i'm sure chat knows we, we got all of the uh all the chat pros out there guys you guys know wow that's right 2007 so just, jerry yang so he just came came he saw he conquered and then just basically disappeared i mean so yeah. he, he he won the main and then like the year after uh jamie gold yeah and then after that didn't attend the world series for like three years and then kind of like disappeared for four or five years he's recently had some caches um wow that's crazy um, i guess yeah. uh i guess he he found some time on his hands after winning the uh, the main yeah, I'm not sure. Like, so his his fifth ever catch was winning the main. Prior to that, his largest score was seven thousand dollars, dude. That's no. absolutely wild. That's oh my god, that's insane. That's, that's insane. insane. And this turn is insane. Yeah, Peter. With pretty solid lock on the hand needs to fade seven or a jack although i assume the sevens are gonna get out of the way see if ferrero decides to block or goes for check call instead how how big is peter gonna go here oh okay sizable sizable bet on the turn i mean our river i think it's a really good size targeting the exact type of holding that ferrera has yeah like the jack x of the world peter can still have yeah 10x and open enders although nice hand peter Yeah, Snowball making a great point saying you see that online quite a bit too Henry where someone binks a massive score and they uh, they have very few and only small caches bright yeah yeah for sure definitely happens quite often it's just this I don't want to make any assumptions but it feels like it could be a pretty heartbreaking story in the sense that like he won 8 million and then Four years later, he's playing hundred dollar and two hundred dollar live buying events. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, is, maybe that's mm -hmm. just me making assumptions in a spot that I shouldn't be making assumptions in. But I've I, heard, I've heard scary stories of people, you know, yeah. winning the main and then all of a sudden they get invited to these big private cash games. They disappear for three or four years, and then when they come back, you know. They don't have much left, but I don't know. Or they make uh, bad investments. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I, that's true. That's true. Uh, we don't want to assume, so. Uh, but hopefully that's not the case. Maybe he just likes to, uh, you know, mix it up every now and then with $100, $200 buy-in events. Mm. So we don't know. I don't, I'm not going to say anything. Jim Lad, thank you. And hope you are well too. Hey, so Henry, World Series of Poker is upon us. It is indeed. Starts this Tuesday. It does. Starts ah. this Tuesday. I, I can already feel the excitement. I, I woke up this morning and there was like a, a gush of air, a gush of wind that hit me in the face. And I just said, oh, 
it, it smells like pros coming into town. I saw it on Twitter as well. I kind of opened up Twitter and the vibe was, um, was I know what you mean. There was, there was a different, different vibe in the air. It's like people were like, okay, there's no friends in poker. You know, WSOP season is upon us. This means war. And a lot of warriors coming into town. There we go. A lot of warriors. Yeah, the, the biggest. You... Go on. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I was going to say the, the biggest, the biggest warriors are going to be out in Barcelona, mate. The party poker millions. So you Ooh. guys, you, you, you can have your, uh, you have your WSOP out in Vegas. Okay. We're going to Barcelona. We have a beach. <laughs> oh, ouch. We have, I think we have a few fake beaches on the strip. Maybe true. If we come, if we can combine all of them. <laughs> I don't think that's enough coastline to, uh, to battle with, uh, with Barcelona. I'm, I'm jealous actually. At, uh, I, I haven't been, uh, to that side of the world. Maybe one of these days. You still, still haven't made it to, uh, to Europe. No, no. I well, I. Uh, prior to COVID happening, shutting everything down, uh, uh, we did have plans to fly over the pond, you know, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, plans change, but you know, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, those plans are still alive, you know, we'll make a, make a quick stop in the UK and no, nah, don't do that. Don't, don't waste your time <laughs> in the UK. Why not? Why not? Uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of my good friends are British. You know, some of my good friends are British, and they tell me all the time, yeah, "I gotta stop by at least once." Stop by. But that's something. Once. That's something that you, you, you American people do just so you can brag. You're just like, "Oh yeah, I befriended a few British people." You know, <laughs> like we, we the you Americans, you take us under your wing. You're like, "Hey, come on, buddy, I'll look after you." That's, that's, that's what Nate did to me in Vegas. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's how Nate is. He's he's southern, you know. So he's he's got that southern hospitality. You know, he, he, he likes to take care of he likes to take care of people. He likes to take care of people. Mm. It's like indeed. when I went out to lunch with him, I asked him to lunch. I asked him to lunch, and he and he and he sneakily pays for lunch when I had plans to pay for. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? I'm the one that asked you. But that's how Nate is. Nate's a good guy. Yeah, I still, I still owe him. I'm fairly sure I still owe him like a hundred bucks. All right, we're getting information sent over. Okay, cool. All right, so this this break's going to be a bit later than usual. Okay. Check yourselves in, boys and girls. We've got okay. an extra five minutes. The people still a long old way to go. But yeah, yeah, you, you, the Americans, you, you, you see a Brit lost in Times Square or, you know, some of the beaches in Cali and just, they, they just look like lost puppies in the big old land of America. And then you guys like, come on, I'll look after you. <laughs> it's a, uh, what's it called? Like... It's, it's, it's a way to flex. You're like, oh, how, I... how, how many British friends do you have? five wait hold on does that include you oh no i, I was just talking hypothetically but yeah sure you, you could you can ask the question <laughs> uh let's see hold on i gotta i gotta count all right including you that four okay so you, you... You got a lot to brag about that. I I have I have I have a small number, you know. I mean I don't know what the what the average number is for any other people, but you know I I think four is good. It's a good Four's number. Four is a solid number. Yeah, that's good. And you know what? No, when I when I when I come I want to come visit. I want someone to take care of me. You know, I, I want someone to show me around. That's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it should be. Look at this from Ferrera, by the way check raise with the open ender just putting a ton of pressure on the 
wide opening range of a man on the button. See if he continues on this club turn. He does. Oh. Uh, he's got the back door club draw now. And he does indeed. Yeah. Ooh. How's it luck? Oh, he checked. 6.5 million out there. Yeah, Check man. Back just showdown. Ace Jack beats all the busted but all the busted draws without a club. That's a pretty big one. Yeah, I, w I wonder. Uh, I wonder if uh, if Iman's uh, bounty size had any uh, altered his decision there to check, or was that like a like a standard line to take? Whenever you check raise, check raise lead, turn. Mm, you mean in the sense that he wanted to to start building the pot on the flop? Yeah. Yeah, definitely could be the case. Although the problem is, is if we're bluffing, we don't want him to call, right? Mm. So his his bounty doesn't matter. What's up, Maximus Black? In the chat, how's it going, dude? And uh, yeah, Axe for Grind was giving us some info as well on Jerry Yang saying apparently his bracelet was auctioned off so he could pay delinquent taxes to the IRS. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a fan favorite. Fan favorite. Uh, it seems like a lot of poker players have problems with the IRS. Maybe not everybody. But Jerry A. I wonder who has Jerry Yang's bracelet now. That's pretty... Pretty grim. Like, well, I don't know. I don't know the rules in the system over there. I don't, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but I assume there are easy ways to, uh, you know, pay your taxes, if you will. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know uh, what the rules are when it's a uh, when it's a, when you're a millionaire. I've, I've never been, so. I'm pretty sure he he probably had an accountant. I don't know, someone that did his uh, finances for him. Axe for Grind says a 50 year old male sports collector paid thirty thousand dollars for the wow. for his 2007 main event bracelet. That's interesting. That's interesting. Oh. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's that time of year again, oh wait, where everyone's discussing markups on WSOP packages. Love to see it. Oh yeah, uh, I I caught a little bit of that on Twitter. What's uh, what's your take? Uh, what's your take, Henry? Um, honestly, with more and more people getting involved in the content creation side of things. Um, I think that we have to be more open-minded towards the fact that it's an open market and people can sell at what they want. If there's a buyer, there's a buyer. It's like, you know, with our way, I think like for the longest time we've approached it in the sense that, hey, the player has to have, you know, um, a certain ROI and whatnot. So, in order, in, in, it has to be profitable for both player and investor. But I think now, with just how many people are, you know, creating content, there are people that are going to be willing to pay, you know, a 2.0 markup to buy some of Rampage's action. Mm. The line is obviously always drawn between, you know, what is, uh, what is you know ethical and and what isn't and and i think that's down to um i think that's down to to the people that want to buy 
So yeah, yeah. it's a it's a tough one. It's yeah. a tough one. Yeah, I, I I agree with your uh, uh when you bring up uh, content creation because because uh, now players, you know, particularly players that offer something more than just you know them playing in the event like someone like rampage who is a content creator on all platforms right mm. he's got his youtube channel he's he's on tiktok he's on instagram he's on he's on he's on everything imaginable and he's providing uh content to you know uh not just his diehard fans but you know just casual poker uh, enthusiasts so uh I think you're right. Like I think people should be a little bit more open-minded when it comes to uh, markup because it's not just the player playing the event. He's got content uh, ideas, and con uh, things in, in production that's uh, engulfed by his participation in all of these events. So, yeah, I think people mm -hmm. should be a little bit more uh, more open-minded. That I totally agree. It's it's a tough one, man. Like. When we stream, me and the other better express boys, like there have been occasions where, you know, Espen will be playing a 10K, Ben will be playing a 10K, and, you know, we could easily sell at like 1.1, 1.15, 1.2. But for the people that are, you know, watching the stream, we'll sell at face because, you know, we're, I don't know, it's it's really tough to, to, to find the, the right answer for this right because at the same time you could be like well if you're selling at face then you're basically like giving money away just because people are watching your stream and vice versa and then there are people that are like oh you know you're you're a um, you're a content creator why are you charging markup like you shouldn't be charging markup to your fans i don't think it's that black and white there's a lot of gray area in between um i think what Sir Fred says is is a good point. You know, if you never cash the main and you, and you're trying to charge, you know, 1.4, 1.5 markup, um, odds are you're a streamer. You have diehard fans. But on the flip side, you know, and this is no offense to anyone. I'm not trying to, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to make any enemies. But there's a lot of you know people in uh, around the world outside of America that are beating you know, hundred, two hundred dollar tournaments online, and. If you're beating a hundred or two hundred dollar tournaments online, then you can pretty easily justify selling for the 10k main at 1.5. It's not even close. It's not even up for debate. But when you've never, when you've never played with these guys that can beat two hundred dollars tournaments online, you kind of feel like, oh well, it's completely unjustified because they've never played a 10k before, or you know they haven't necessarily run deep in the 10k. But that's not how it works right mm -hmm. yeah. at least in theory yeah i think there's a lot of uh um unfounded uh comparisons too right because like we have dean eggs selling at no markup just at face so people start yeah. comparing well you know so and so is selling at 1.4 but look at dean eggs he's selling at face you know how can you you know so there's a lot of unfair uh comparisons too you know sure. uh there's totally two different people different uh uh goals as far as like you know what they're trying to achieve with uh with them selling action so yeah yeah don't get me wrong there are some complete scams out there like i'll oh, see yeah i'll see people you know selling at 1.4 1.5 and i know I know their online screen names. I know the tournaments that they're playing in online, and they'll try to make it sound like they're they're doing much better than they are. And the problem is, is like not many people do their due diligence due diligence before buying action. They'll just look at like a hand of mob. They'll see one or two big scores, and they'll be like, "Okay, yeah, this guy, I'll buy from him." We've opened up a complete can of worms here. Oh wait, this conversation. <laughs> Get that, get the chat all riled up. Yeah, that's how it's done. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, get, so I, 
Like so, about there, Marco, please. Yeah, hilarious. Well, you know, just uh, if if you're a buyer, like what you said, do your due diligence, uh, do proper research, and uh, you know, you know, uh, buy at your own risk. Right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Like, it's like what. Well, what can we even compare it to? It's such a difficult thing to compare it to anything because, like, you could say the same about NFTs or artwork or anything. Like, what is worth a hundred k to someone might be worth zero to someone else. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, someone will go to like an art auction and be willing to pay two, three times the estimated price on something purely because of the art or whatever. Um, whereas if, if you're just buying it for the sweat, like you're a recreational that just likes having pieces left and right, and you don't really care how much the pieces is, is for, you just want to have that sweat. You want to have five or six sweats of the main and you know, you're willing to spend, I don't know, two K each year. That's just like your little hobby or whatever. But yeah, it's tough. Like, so for a say when I see a streamer who has an ABR of $20 and they're charging 1.4 in the main, I just get upset. I agree, man. I, I agree. I don't know who you're talking about. I'd like to know who you're talking about so we can throw some shade <laughs> their way. You know, just really get the juices flowing here on the stream. So um, Fred, so Fred, bring it, bring it a shade. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Who is it? Who's who's charging 1.4? We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll we'll head over there. We'll, we'll give we'll give an honest honest answer. Acts for grind said what I want to know is was Jerry Yang's uh bracelet really worth 30k again so depends who the buyer is yeah I mean the the guy that bought it thought it was worth 30 there we go yeah I think it's from Iman just flicking it in with the car from the 742 maybe getting a bit impatient things not going his way so far this tournament with the flat he's got he's got devious plans he's got something up his sleeve yeah although this flop's not uh i think that's gonna work out for him this time Currently have two thousand six hundred people watching on Twitch. What is up, boys and girls? Two thousand six hundred people. Welcome. Eagle turning the nuts. Peter in trouble with top pair open ender. I am the king of hearts. Drawing dead. That four. Might save him some money here. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, check through flop. Okay. Let's call it off. Yeah. I mean, blocking. Blocking ace 10. It's, it's tough to think of many offsuit hands that Eagle could have that would turn into a bluff other than maybe eights, nines, tens with a heart. Yeah. Would maybe feel like they had to, to bluff. Like this does cool it off as we change tables. What a great table for Winkle, sir. I mean, there's what, one, two, three sub six million chip stacks. Hey, can you hear that sound? Oh wait. Hear I that? did. Well what is it? Yeah. The police. <laughs> Sirens. Is it is it getting closer to where you are or is it going away? <laughs> it's going away, but you're the one that's saying, Hey, I want to come to the UK. I'm just saying, hey, listen, mate. Depends. Depends what you want to do. 
<laughs> uh, as, as long as it's not getting louder, then I think uh, I think we can just assume that you'll be safe, Ariel. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to have to run this show by myself. Ah, you'll be fine, man. Uh, Snowball Sam, I don't know anything about 08 Grinders poker backstory. Quick rundown, perhaps, online or live player. Any notable results? All right. Uh, we'll put 08 Grinder in the hot seat, will we? Okay. All right. All right. Let's go. Yeah. 21 questions with 08 Grinder. 08 <laughs> Grinder, we want your, ne your full name, your social security number, your date of birth, your address, and we'll start All off right. with those four, and then we'll go from there. All right. All right, Snowball, you know what? I'm going to pull up my, my Tinder profile and I'll just read you some of the things that, that, uh, that, that's on here. Uh, long walks on the beach, uh, preferably a Wednesday afternoons because uh, those are the best times to go. You know, you can be alone with uh, your date. Um, I do like my wines, but, you know, I'm not really a fan of rosé. So... Uh, and uh, I'm a big fan of uh, of Korean barbecue. So oh um, yes, please. Plus you know, one. So oh you oh you did say it. yeah no I'll get there I'll get there we, we got to start with uh, you know my personality so Korean barbecue yes definitely Korean barbecue <laughs> uh, no okay so quick run on poker back his uh, I I don't have much of an online i don't play tournaments all that much uh, but i am in the process of uh of turning that around hopefully with the with some good uh good coaching and some study maybe we'll, we'll uh we'll crack the uh we'll crack the uh the ceiling there uh so yeah, you'll never you won't know who i am if if i told you my screen name no no notable uh uh, caches or anything so I'm, I'm primarily a cash game player I play uh, Omaha primarily Omaha high low and all of its variants and uh, that's that's who I am a mix of a live online Omaha high low player the high low streets yes you Americans love it man. You oh yes oh yes oh, yo yes. ASM ASMR saying uh Nine eight seven six double suit is the new ace ace do three double suit all day, all day. <laughs> Give me the nine eight seven six double suited rundown. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. Henry likes those. I prefer those because I don't, I don't have that negative thought intrude my, yeah, my conscience when I look down at ace ace jack ten double. I'm just like, all right, shit. Here we go again. How big of a pot am I about to lose? But when I got nine eight seven six double, I'm just like, yo, someone's getting stacked right now. So. <laughs> you get that two pair hold. There we hold, go. Please hold. Flop comes eight nine three. Some bloke is gonna jam with ace ace jack ten. Oof. And you got the eight nine seven six. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, you know what, Henry? Speaking of bloke, right? I, uh, I, I was looking up some British slang that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Because right? like I have no idea what they mean, so I figured like I write them down and I'd ask you, and you maybe you could tell me what what it means. Okay, but just quickly. Uh, Snowball saying, so long story short, we have two Omaha players commenting on a No Limit Holding Tournament. Hey, listen, firstly, I final tabled a WPT, all right? And I chopped the GG millions. So, you know, just saying. Just saying. Just, just saying. Hey, you know, Don't say less, wrong. say less, Henry, say less. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I completely luck boxed both of those tournaments. But... <laughs> You know, I just want all the flips. I don't know. It was what both of them were just like. It was a classic case of there's nothing that you could do in order to not run deep in this tournament. The cards are just going your way today. 
Yeah. But anyways, go on. Oh wait. Tell, tell them who you jump. tell them who you chopped it with. Oh, with Mormon. There you go. There you yeah. go. There you go, guys. Yeah. The real OG. Yeah. Yeah. That Henry, say less. Sick. Say less. That's the so flex insane. is good. The flex is good. <laughs> I just I just placed my first bracelet there as well. Oh. Yeah. Is this is this uh secret? No, no, no. I just I this is how confident I am. Is I bet against my friend that I would win a bracelet before him. And he's going out for the full world series this series and I'm not so he gets a one series head start on me that's how confident I am that I'm gonna win a race it for him get out in the tournament streets well, well uh what would be your first event Ooh. I'll have to check out the schedule to be honest with you but I think like setting a package for everything under everything on the 10k would make sense right yeah i'd love to uh looks like carlos is gonna take it down with the six six the nuts uh, but yeah we got sidetracked a bit there all right what, what are you saying before <laughs> that oh uh i i was gonna read off some british slang and I, there we uh, go i was gonna ask you I was okay. gonna ask you what they meant, because I just all found right. this list. All right, and some of them I've, I, you know, I'm familiar with, because you know I, I am a fan of British television. I've watched some British shows, but some of these I've never heard of. So I was wondering if you could shed some light. All right, so uh, let's see here. The first one to leg it. To leg it. Yeah, to leg it. What is that? <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. That means to, to get out of there, to run away, you know, you got to leg it. Or, oh, okay. or, or like, say, say, like the bus drives past you and you're still like a hundred yards away from the bus station or the bus stop. You have to leg it to the bus stop in order to catch the bus. Oh, OK. OK. All right. So oh, it's kind I, haven't of like had that. I haven't <laughs> had that in a long time, man. I, I just found it. I just found it. it. It just popped up on my on my feed. So that's brilliant. I like it. All right. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I wrote down here. Uh, lost the plot. Uh, yeah. So he's completely lost the plot. It means he's lost it in his head. You know, he just doesn't doesn't know what's going on. Or like for example. Uh, Say for example, yeah, so you're, you're in a relationship and I don't know, you do something that your partner, your boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't agree with and they just turn around and just be like, have you completely lost the plot? Ah, what are you doing? okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I get it. I get it. Okay. This is good. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. Throwing the wobbly. Throwing the wobbly. I have no idea. Oh, maybe the chat knows. Chat, any uh, any Brits in the chat? Let us know. Throwing no cheating. Wobbly. No cheating. No cheating. Chat. No googling. If you know what throwing oh, okay. a wobbly means, throwing let me know. I have no idea what it means. I just wrote it down. <laughs> throwing a wobbly. I've never heard that before. Uh, all right. Snowball says it's like tilting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just Googled it. Having a paddy throw. I love that. There we go. Yeah. So, Fred, I thought is a wobbly a beer as well. I thought like, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're throwing a wobbly, it means you, you've had a few too many to drink or something. I was trying to reverse engineer the, uh, the statement. But, uh... Having a patty. So having a patty is uh, is 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 the same as 
throwing a wobbly. Yeah, okay. having a paddy, throwing a tantrum, throwing his toys out the pram. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Max for grind yeah. saying taking the piss was the one that had me going her when I first heard it. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Our lean is jarred through that curveball at me as well. He's, he knows all of his, uh, his British slang, <laughs> British slang expert. Look at that, Warrington getting the double barrel through with the threes there. Getting bogged down to fold the best hand. Very nice. Very nice. Right, cool. What else have you got for us? All right, I got one more. All right. Um, I think, I think. I think I know what it means just by just by the wording, but uh, I I don't I don't want to assume. Uh, slag off. To slag off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to to disrespect someone, to talk behind their back. Um, for example, uh, he caught me slagging off his best friend, or you know, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I I, th I thought it was just being lazy. <laughs> That's oh, my okay. initial. No, my, no, that was my initial. Uh... Yeah, to talk to talk bad about someone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we know. Now, now we know. know. All, now we know. All you North Americans there, Canada included. Now we know. Oh, yo, Renato with the cold fall. Honestly, I can see this. Renato Rib Ribeiro. That sounds Brazilian. I yeah. Uh... Oh. Ooh. I thought we were gonna get get the cold ball but out of the big. Uh, I can't even pronounce the uh, the button's name. Oh, uh, that is Bogdan Runovic. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the, I don't know how to read that. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, that is uh, that's Bulldown. Bulgarian. Yeah, that is Bulgarian. Oh, yeah. Like I, when I when I saw it, I was like, "That looks Russian or something," but I I didn't want to say. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's close. Um, it, uh, Gibraltar and saying slack off would be to be getting lazy. Yeah, that is that is true. Sir Fred wants to visit an old English pub. They have they have pubs that have been open for four hundred years. See, that's what that's one thing I want to do too, to get properly drunk, at at an English pub. I think I think that that I think that might be a, a rite of passage. I think you guys have been uh, you've been watching too much Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You've been watching too many romantic comedies. I don't, I don't know what you think is going to happen if you get drunk in an English pub, but you know you're not going to be picked up and put on a horse and carriage and like driven away to your castle. You're going to get your head kicked in. All right. So okay. So obviously I've been brainwashed by uh, Hollywood. What should I expect, Henry? I go to an English pub, order a pint. What happens next? <laughs> No, nah, you'll be fine, mate. You'll be fine. <laughs> it, it, it depends where you go. Like, are we going? Are we? Are we going to like the local spoons, or are we going somewhere you know in Covent Gardens where a pint of pint of beer is going to cost you about fifteen bucks? Oh, my goodness! Yeah, because if if you go into the local spoons, there's a good chance. You end up having the type of night that you didn't expect that you'd have, you know. You you, you end up having a one AM burger at TJI Fridays. You end up going to uh oh what's it called? I see I haven't lived here in so long. I haven't lived in the UK in a, in a, in a long time. Man. I I know, I noticed because you the first you said TGI Fridays. I didn't know you guys had that over there. Yeah, yeah, I'm fairly sure. I'm fairly sure they have TJ. Oh, man. 
That's not, that would yeah. be the last place I would want to eat at, to be honest. TGI Fridays. If you you end up in Pop World at 1.30 a.m., you're doing one pound shots of Sambuca whilst dancing along to ABBA, you know, you're feeling good. You get a kebab at the kebab van at 4 a.m. That's what happens when you go to, you just go for like a cheeky pint at Spoons. Your friend's like, come on, 08, let's grab one beer down the local Spoons. And you'd be fine. You'd think you'd be fine, but no, you've been deceived. But if you go down to Covent Gardens, then, you know, because the gin and tonic costs 15 pounds, $20 is all you can afford is two or three drinks and you have to go home so that you don't have to file for bankruptcy. I, I may not swallow my drink. I may just kind of like recirculate it in my mouth. And yeah. then... There we go, and, and then uh, and then spit it back into the pint. Just just yeah. keep it, keep it, keep it going in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Gibraltarian <laughs> yeah. well, saying this guy should watch some Mickey Flanagan. You'd pick up loads. Honestly, I would love for you and Nate to watch some Mickey Flanagan, and just just to kind of see if. Um, you find it as entertaining as us Brits do. All right, let me, let me he, write that down. Mickey yeah, Flanagan. He's, he's, in my opinion, he is one of the funniest comedians in the world. And he, right. he, he has he has this um, this great sketch on his first visit to America as well, back in the 80s and 90s. So I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. I, all I right, think. All right, all right. Send I, it to I me, think, Nate. Uh, I will. I will. Yeah, I will. Big hand developing here, by the way. So, cars for the open from plus one Bogdan in the low jack. Wow. Wow. With the King A suited. Alex just flat calling the jacks from the big blind, and Bogdan absolutely drilling this flop. I like to see him size down here. Yep. Yeah, nice. Goes cool. Not bear with the flesh draw. Wow. I mean, Alex just getting away from it as cheaply as possible. You could argue that it should be called four bang. Out of the big, but hey. You made the, uh, uh, the great fold there. Yeah. Giuliano asking, do you know where the oldest pub in the world is? All right. Uh, Giuliano, I have no idea if you care to, uh, let's, to share that well, knowledge. Let's try and break this down. It's the oldest pub in the world. So it can't be in America because America is only 150 years old. Nope. Um, nope. We're still a baby. I'd say... All right, so maybe not Middle East? Yeah, maybe somewhere like Italy? Somewhere in Italy would make sense? The Ro well, actually, would it? Yeah, Roman times, like Roman times. I'd, I would say like... Yeah. Greece. Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, yeah. UK oh, would be... Oh, yeah. You know those Spartans love to get down. There we go. Yeah. I think I saw a scene in 300. They were drinking, so. Oh, that would be my guess. So Fred's saying, I loved Sean Locke from 8 out of 10 Cats. The man was so funny. He was, man. Yeah, he was. It was very funny. Wow, Sean's bar. Athlone Island, 900 AD. Wow. That's scary, man. 900 AD? That's actually scary. Wow. Oh, I can't imagine. Sean's bar. Wow. Okay. I'm going to write that down. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, the Jeopardy information there. I'm going to love that.
Wow. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. That's wild, dude. Do you know how many people have walked through those doors? Stayed open literally through the dark ages. My God. It's insane. Well, I'll be damned. Learn something new every day, boys and girls. Who said that you could only learn things poker related on this channel? All right. Mm -hmm. How about some uh, general knowledge? Yeah, and some history. Oh, my God. That is insane. Hey, I've, I, I, yeah, but I guarantee you, yeah. This I can guarantee. Back in 900 AD, if you went into Sean's bar and you weren't happy with the service, I bet you couldn't go onto TripAdvisor or Google and leave a bad review, could you? <laughs> no, I think what they would do is like they would find uh, that one fellow that that just wouldn't shut up, and he would just tell that fellow, and and after buying him a drink or so and he would just tell everybody that's what i that's wow. that he he was probably the uh the town yelp or trip advisor <laughs> i'm reading here though boys and girls that it being dated to 900 ad is actually fake news i don't know oh, it's fake to... oh uh, Better not be fake. I've, I've, I'm somewhat emotionally invested in it now. Yes, it seems like it's dated back to the 17th century. Which is still obviously older than America, like, you know. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a long time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, GG's Dominic, most likely. Dirty Biggs, seven handed. No, oh, just flat. This from Alex taking it upstairs with the ace queen. See if he's prepared to three bet fold. Wow. Wow. Welcome to welcome to online poker boys and girls. So there's a few hands now where I'm just like, okay, this is just going in pre and Instead, we're going three ways to a flop with the effective stack being less than pot in the form of Dominic Rickard's pocket nines. One over to the pocket tens. See if Alex continues with the two overs, no diamond. This is a rarity, multi-way three bet pot. Yeah. Indeed. Not a turning is set. Uh, Alex is going to get out there. Mm. Big pickup. All right, so Snowball saying we need to play that game with 08 Henry. What's the quiz game you play on stream pool again? So you want to play some lot and things with my man 08 Grinder. We're going on break after this hand, but when we come back, we we'll, we'll, we can play some we'll play some lot and things with with 08. That sounds oh, like great. Well, I am I am terrible at this, but you know, for the chat, I'm I'm willing to uh, embarrass myself. Let's nah, do it. you're be, you're, you're being too <laughs> modest, man. 
Yeah, way too modest. We'll, uh, oh, that's we'll, we'll modesty is my middle name, Henry. Modesty is <laughs> my middle name. So I expect that they're stacked up, but 20% I still either jam or fold free. I guess it's just really going to come down to Alex's bounty, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like the type of hand you want to be. Actually, no, I keep forgetting how deep they are. 140. Oh wow, so yeah, it's over like 40 effective. It's just crazy because there's like stacks at the table, you know, with 200 big yeah. lines and we're mm -hmm. down to the final 100. That's what yeah. happens with these multi-day flights. So boys and girls, me and 08 Grinder are going to go grab ourselves a fresh cup of tea, some water, some snacks. When we come back, we'll be playing some more KO poker here on the Party Poke channel and today we'll be crowning a winner. We'll be going home with well in excess of thirty thousand dollars see you guys shortly peace in the hijack mm. 18 baits and a dream <laughs> 18 baits a dream and a couple of hooks not a bad spot at all oh boy mm. oh dear oh boy there may be trouble ahead for Artur Martyrosian Macalau gonna have some raised folds off of 18 big blinds. And Ace 10. Kind of a nice hand unblocking those raised folds. Ooh. King Queen, King Jack. Ooh. Gets away, Henry. Will Anton get away? Oh. Chan most likely. Although some reverse implied odds, he be up against stronger Jack X, stronger diamonds. So short though, anyway, I guess uh, yeah. the price is just too good to turn down. And well, a set once more, Anton this time. Quickly checks it over. Makalu, uh, a little upset, Henry. See the A side board. How's the impetus? Up against the small and the big, does the side to continue? Now we see some four Hollywood. Oh, he's going for the race. No slow playing. Some of like that, 1.4 he says. Yes, fortunately for the Frenchman, it's an ace high board rather than a 8-5 deuce. Mm. <laughs> I love that unsteal from the chat saying wasn't Arto grinding online earlier. Wouldn't surprise me. Mm, you know, just make it to day three of this 2K with a quarter of a million up top and, well, it doesn't start till one o'clock in the afternoon, got to fill the morning somehow. Why not play a little bit of a uh, cash online? Oh, actually, 
they're taking loads of time over this. Maybe Henry, you know, thinking, well, what's he check raising me with ace-8-5? He got big ace, so we had to find out pre-flop. As he waited towards the flush draw, of course, Maclou's holding the jack of hearts, kind of a bad card you'd think to have if you're wanting your opponent to be in there check-raising with flush draws. Does eventually give it up. I think probably always was Henry, but this stage of a tournament, you're going to uh, you're going to make sure you take a little moment. So the, uh, yeah, I'm just looking. I mean, obviously we're getting uh, some requests about Johan Gilbert, but it looks like he is actually the tournament chip leader out on the other table with. 15 million in chips. Um, looks like he may have busted someone. Yeah, looks like he's. Um, wow, yeah, he doubled up, Henry. It looks like a bizarre. Uh, oh, okay. Doubled up for four mil. Uh, Limp called it off at ace ten against queen nine. Fell behind on the nine high flop, but turned an ace and riveted ten for good measure to get the double up. Uh, looks like he. Welcome back, boys and girls. Henry Kilbane alongside O8 Grinder here in the commentary booth for the final weekend of the Millions Online KO Series event number 65. It is the 7 max weekender, $320 buy-in, with well in excess of $30,000 up top. This one, 08, had a cheeky little 250k guarantee, which we you know, smashed out the park. Just shy of 300k being collected here. So without further ado, let's jump back into the action and see how things are going down over there. Well, Martin, getting a double. How is your break, 08? How are you doing, my man? Uh, I'm good, man. I am good. You know, I chatted a little bit in the chat, trying to, I've, you know, appeal to myself to the, to the population since we're going to be playing a, uh, a quiz game. There we go. Need okay. people to get a good feel for me. All right. So. So what what part of it, what part of love and thinks are you are you anxious about? Like what part do you think you're not you're not good at? Because the whole idea of love and thinks is that you're not allowed to judge the brain. So no matter what your answer is, it doesn't really reflect negatively on you, right? Yeah, you know what? I just think uh, I'm such a people pleaser. You know? Right. So when i so if let's say i'm i'm lon and yeah. you ask me a question i think of a number and if people don't get if nobody wins i feel bad <laughs> it's like i'm supposed to like i'm supposed to say some uh some uh some number that everyone should be able to get and then i feel bad when nobody gets it so right that's uh okay you know i, I want everybody to be happy okay no, I know I, everyone mean. everyone's a winner everyone's a winner with me yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I'm a bit of a people pleaser myself, man. This is something I've been, been working on, so I can relate, dude. I can relate. Um, but no, I tell you what, we'll start off. We'll start off with a fun one. Uh, this is the one that I like to to use as like a entry level lot of things. All right. Um, Yeah, the chat, the chat will know this one. I've done this one before. I, I'm debating whether to use the same one that I use or to mix it up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> ASMR said my ex-wife was a real people. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, you win. <laughs> you win. Uh, Giuliano had me sweating there for a minute. I'm on a plane to Barcelona on Wednesday. He's saying that, um, saying that the final table is going to be broadcast on Wednesday at the main event. It's going to be on Tuesday, boys and girls. Tonight it's me, 
08, Nathan Gamble and Tyler Patterson. And then tomorrow, I believe it's the same, the usual suspects. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet who's who's in, who's out, but we're all here over the next couple of days, alternating between the roles. And then James Dempsey will be returning the main man, the man that has been running this ship for the better part of, what, three, four years now. There you go. Once he gets back from the World Series, we'll be uh, hopefully handing him back his ship in in perfect condition without any dents or nicks in it you know so it's the uh, paint is the paint on the ship is pristine there we go there we go all right entry level lot on things let me see how many tickets i can give away let's let's see if we can go can i give away don't worry boys and girls if 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 the powers above say no I'm still going to give away tickets. It's just, <laughs> I'm just trying to get confirmation first, you know? Yeah, it's. We try not to have too much paperwork to fill out. Giveaway. Everybody loves a giveaway, right, chat? All right, they're, they're responding, chat. They're responding. The dot dot dot. But yeah, you, I'm giving away take time away, boys and girls. It doesn't matter. Just <laughs> sweet, holy, holy moly. Okay, we've got 15 tickets to give away. Okay, there you go. All right. There Legend. You go. All right. Okay. So, just like that, out of nowhere, we have two hundred and thirty dollars worth of tickets to give away. So without further ado, boys and girls, the first question that I'm going to ask my man, OA Grinder. You guys know how it works, but I'm going to explain the rules for those of you that are new here. And I'm going to explain the rules for OA as well. All right. So I'm going to ask OA Grinder a question. He is going to text me his answer privately so that you guys have no clue what his answer is. And then we're going to give you guys and girls at home about five minutes to get your guests into the chat box. Whoever gets closest to 08's guests will win the ticket. And don't forget, there is no right or wrong answer. There's no point in using Google. 08's not going to be using Google. It is literally just a guess on his part of what he thinks the correct answer is. There is no right or wrong. So there's no point getting fancy with your calculators and your pie charts and your Googles and all that. Unless you hack his phone, as uh, cast <laughs> the point out. You know, there's no point. Let's let this hand play out because we've got a three-way hand occurring. You know what they say? Everyone loves a three-way boys and work, boys and girls. So let's uh let's see what, what goes on here. Michael with the ace of spades. Pedersen gonna get out of there with the six, one would assume. Dennis lurking in the big blind with top and bottom. The somewhat shallow stack to pot ratio. Do we go for the jugular now and try and stack off just in case a scare card rolls off like an ace? Ooh. Or do we pray for a blank and give Michael as much rope as possible? ASMR saying, I'd say who else, who else loves the three-way, but I don't want another message to lead it. I'm sorry, dude. You know, I don't control how the band hammer works, but I still love you, man. I respect the effort, you know. Dennis is top and bottom oh. getting counterfeited. Yep. And Michael, gonna say, thank you very much. Ace of thank Diamonds you. on the turn. Right, boys and girls. My question to 08 is, Mr. 08 Grinder. All right. How many planes do you think there are in the sky globally at this very moment in time? So take, how give many, yourself 20. How many planes? How, how many planes are in the sky? That's it. You don't, you don't. Don't have any follow-ups because the the chat aren't meant to know your logic behind it 
you know? Okay. So it's, right. it's however you have perceived my question. When you get the chance, fire me over a text message with your answer. And then we'll let chat start, start guessing. And we'll give them okay. five minutes. To... Okay. I love this one because people get so torn on it as well. <laughs> Nothing to write home about here. Boom. So 08 has sent over his first guess. So don't forget, give you guys five minutes or so. Whoever gets the closest to OA's guest that he sent me in private will win themselves an $11 ticket. But make sure you stick around, boys, because we've got 10 $11 tickets plus five $22 tickets to give away. So even if you don't win this one, don't worry. Can uh, can uh, can one person have multiple guesses? No, it's one. No, it's one guess one, per person. Okay. One guess per person. Okay. I'm excited now. Yeah, I love I love playing this game. All right. I've got to try and keep it out in the chat, you know, just in case someone gets like really close. Why is this an absolute pain in the back? I'll uh, I'll help you. Well, wait, am I am I allowed to uh... to help? Am I allowed to help? Well, yeah. If you, <laughs> I mean, I've got I've got a notepad open. <laughs> Uh, so I just I just copy paste all of the. Oh winners. yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's and then true. um. And then after the stream, I'll send it over to the powers. Above to get those people messaged and uh, get them tickets. We're gonna have an all-in and a call here, boys and girls. Who's is gonna hold for Martin? Whoa! All right, all right. All right. I think that's twice now that Martin has uh, doubled up through Mick. Yeah. All right, so just to reiterate, a couple of people coming in late asking what the what the question was. So the question I asked OA is how many planes does he think are in the sky at this moment in time? I'll give you guys about another 60 seconds on that. Closest guess. We'll get a $11 ticket. Uh, do we get to find out the actual answer or are we just going to go based on my answer? Well, you can Google it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do, I'll do it later. I don't want to I don't want to disrupt the flow of the, uh, of the questioning. So I'll do it later. To be honest with you, I haven't got any other. No, I've got, I've got another one. I've got another one afterwards, but I just want to make sure. All right, chat, I'm going to give you 20 more seconds on that, okay? And I'm going to pull the plug. So, get your guesses in. See if it comes in last second. Oh, Marine's in the chat. Marine, how you doing? Thought you were playing Scoop tonight. Hopefully you're on break and still in it. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, the last guess in the chat was from Immortal A. So any guesses after that past the cutoff point? Oh, wait. I asked you five minutes ago, how many planes do you think there are in the sky? And your answer was 8,050, which, by the way, is a pretty solid guess, my man. Really? Like that's not Is too it? far away. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Oh, all right. That's pretty solid. 
And the closest guess was one of the latecomers, Oleshke, with the 7913. So only out by 137, if I am not mistaken. I'm going to quickly double check. But I'm fairly sure I got that bang on. Good so Leshke guess, coming in. Yeah, out by just 113. Triple checking. Yep. All right, so let's keep winning the first eleven dollar ticket of the night. All right, all right, boys. And Congratulations, guys. Alesh. Good job. <laughs> so, so I thought the sky was bigger. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think the the typical answer is between nine thousand and twelve thousand, just depending on the time of time of year. Um, and like commercial flights running and whatnot, but typically, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to figure out if, if we were talking about like every, every plane, yeah, in the sky, you know, like, no, I knew you were that, that's that's why yeah. I kind of like said, I was like, no, nah, mate, it's it's up to the viewers, you know, to try and break down or at least try and work out how they think you're gonna answer my question you know so um, yeah, well, i'm gonna have to google saying. i'm gonna have uh, i'm gonna have to google the uh, the correct answer because uh but you say i'm but you said i'm close so I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy with that yeah you're very 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 close man congratulations to olesh Good guess. Good guess. You know, I can't I can't help it. So I'm gonna Google it now. <laughs> I wanna know. I wanna know. Let's see. How many planes? are in the sky right now. Oh, what's your Google in that? Oh. Dive into this hand, Martin. With the gut shot, back to space, Michael with a gut shot of his own. Yuri out of the small and complete with, but it's actually the King Jack of Nick Lemon. Currently with the best of it. See if Michael flicks in the cheeky ball getting what well, six to one with the gut shot. Ten improves Martin to a pair and a gut shot. Enticing for Martin does call, and now even losing to you know the seven next that maybe stab turn, not really beating too much. Look at this, they're going for the lot. Martin gets away. So do you, do you find the answer yet? I did. I did. I I, I I couldn't help it. I I had to know. Uh, between seven thousand seven hundred and eighty-two to eight thousand seven hundred and fifty-five planes in the air. How much? Seven thousand. From seven thousand seven hundred eighty-two to eight thousand seven hundred and fifty-five planes wow, in the man, air on out. average at any given yeah. time. I was like, "Oh wow!" 
So you absolutely smashed it with your guess. I, I was I was right in the middle. I was right yeah. in the middle. Wow. That's solid, dude. All right. Okay. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> you re you retire. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I'm. I'm calling it a career. But you it's know, so if you guys want me, if you guys want me on, I'm I'm I'll stay. Oh, you know, we still have tickets to give away, so I can't. I'm unretiring. I'm back. I'm back. All right. What the what the fuck what's going to come up with? Yeah. This is this is Jordan I, 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 in '96. I'm coming back. I don't. I'm back. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go with like a number that's too big, because then like chat will just be spending the next five minutes typing like a ridiculously large number <laughs> all right okay all right okay so next question boys and girls this is for, for another 11 dollar ticket okay so again we're going to give you guys five minutes now you know the rules i ask away the question he's going to take 20 30 seconds to mull over his options and he's going to send me his answer privately and then we're going to give you guys five minutes to get your guesses in the chat closest guess is going to get an 11 dollar ticket all right this is a bit of a fun one now boys and girls it's one of my favorites actually so mr 08 grinder how many golf balls do you think can be fit into an american school bus oh oh that's a good one I'll give him give him 30 seconds boys and girls and then we'll start getting the guesses in the chat golf balls as we as we wait for that nicola carl taking the 23 big blind three jam spot with the effective jam there we go all right boys and girls so 08 has sent me his answer so you can get your guesses in the chat. How many golf balls do you think can fit in an American school bus? <laughs> My favorite part of this is watching the person who I've asked the question watch the chat as the chat type in their answers. You, you can you can get you can get like a you see a lot of like facial expressions and stuff yeah oh yeah i should do that <laughs> i wasn't even looking but okay i'm gonna look now okay okay we got we got some answers okay okay i call the freshly found chips Marine says, you can totally imagine you, Henry, interviewing people and giving them these exact same questions. I agree, Maureen. <laughs> I agree. Should I uh, should I start doing it at the end of my podcast? Just be like, okay, whoever I'm interviewing, should like... Actually, so... you should, Henry. You should. You should. That's that's uh, Actually, that's what I do. Well, that's what I used to do when I, when I did interviews. I had a, a set of like eight questions that I would ask each person so okay. same questions i ask each person that i interviewed and just want to see like their responses mm. it's an homage to uh uh to a show i used to watch where the uh uh interviewer uh james lipton i don't know if you're familiar with james lipton but he used to do uh an interview show and he would ask yeah each guest the same uh i think it was like 10 questions at the end i i asked i asked my my guests the same five poker related questions at the end but i guess yeah i don't know as like a as a funny way to sign off you could just throw like a complete curve out there you know, right at the end All right, boys and girls, we're going to give you three more minutes. Get your answers in. And then, yeah, well, I saw someone make a suggestion that we should let 08 ask me a question. That sounds good. 
sounds good to me. Oh man, I got to think of a question now. Yeah, it's, uh, some of the some of the really good ones. Um, like at the dinner table, you know, where you're playing London things to decide who will pick up the bill. Some of the really good ones are to try and test out what people's like integrity or um, <laughs> like what their uh, yeah their values are. Oh yeah. Like one of one of the one of the ones that I think Sean D really likes to ask is um, for how much money would like what amount of money would you accept? Where if you accept said amount of money a completely random person in the world loses their arm. It's just such a <laughs> sick question to ask at the dinner table, man. Yeah, I can I can see Sean asking that question. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, chat. That's that's not the next question, all right? We're uh, that's def- no, 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 we're no, still we're still we're, on the golf ball question. We are indeed. We are indeed. Actually, I, I, I want to Google that one too. Uh, these are good. Just getting some last second guesses in. Andre saying, hello, G. What's up, my G? <laughs> Gus, Gus saying, which arm? Oh, we're all good. Huge double barrel from Dylan, by the way. The King 5, 3, 9 turn, just saying, hey, pal. I have aces, ace king, kings. You, you don't have much of that on the big. Gets it through with sheer aggression. Blocking with that plus draw as well. 30 seconds, yes. boys and girls. We'll give you. Gas is asking, which arm? <laughs> it, it's one of those ones, right, where when the camera's running and the, and the microphone's recording, everyone's like, oh no, I'd never do that. I'd never do that. But if the opportunity actually presented itself, you know, how many people would actually accept a decent amount of money? How much time do they have left? Give you guys 10 seconds. There you go, guys. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. The time is up. All right. So, J2, I love you's final guess of 37,657. Don't forget, boys and girls, only one guess per person. So, make sure you are only guessing once because if you guess twice and your second guess is the closest it won't count yeah the first guess first guess is what we will take yeah let's just talk about this big hand going on between Ioannis and jamie staples mr party poker pro oh is that james oh. it is indeed turns third pair to go along with his flush draw Ioannis turning the nuts. Bricks out for Jamie. That was fine fold. So, I asked the way grinder, how many golf balls does he think would fit into an American school bus? And his answer was 1,286. Now, I know what some of you boys and girls are thinking at home. Has 08 ever seen a school bus before (laughs) and remember the number one rule of London things on this channel is we do not judge the brain okay Mm -hmm. so zero judgment this is a safe space to play London things and Nufo998 coming in with the 38 one of the first guesses in earning him or herself an $11 ticket let's Uh... go (laughs) Oh 
man. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I, when I googled the answer, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm way off. Wait, there's an actual answer? Has like a test been done on this? All right, so I like to see uh, this. when I, when you Google it, here, here's here's the answer. Eighty-five inches is the radius of a golf ball. If you divide that by two point five cubic inches into one point six million, uh, you come up with six hundred and sixty thousand golf balls. What is the one point six million come from? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I guess somebody inches. asked asked the question, and and that's what came out. It's a very, it was answered very recently, just this year. Someone asked, and an answer was given. I calculate the volume of golf to be around two point five cubic inches. I have no idea if that is remotely close to correct, but... Oh, okay, right. So, the... That's a lot of golf balls. A standard school bus is 8 feet wide by 6 foot high by 20 foot long. So, 960 cubic feet. And since there are 1,728 cubic inches in a cubic foot, that means about 1.6 million cubic inches. Okay. So, yeah. 2.5 to 5 ball. Sick. So this is actually like a legit question. This is yeah. this is a uh, this is apparently a interview question. Why would someone ask this at an interview? Clearly, clearly snowball. But I think uh, you give me too much credit. <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard the question loud and clear. Okay. And uh, I just made a very, very poor guess. <laughs> but we're not we're not judging me on my guesses, right? There's no, yeah, there's there's no judgment, yeah. there, right? Look at this, by the way, Jamie Staples just lost a pretty big pot to Anis. Now comes out with the three bet button versus cut off with the A seven suited, and Anis just yeah set in the trap with American Airlines. James with the bet. Ooh. Love. Love the call there. Yeah, this could be. This feels like one where with the SPR this low, it's yeah. Nice check by Jamie. It could be really tempting. To blast off him. Johannes on an absolute tear as of late. Chat, does anyone know why that is a legit interview question? Like, what what could an interviewer gain from asking this question? Is it just to kind of see how you how you kind of tackle these this kind of problem solving in in a quick and timely matter like are they just trying to get an idea of of how your approach would be or what logic you would try and use it shows the interview how you think and break down problems yeah that that makes sense <laughs> that makes sense yeah i'm not much of a problem solver Alright. Yeah, so purely for problem solving. They don't they don't actually care about the answer, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've, I've, I've heard I've heard multiple uh multiple types of questions similar to that where it's just designed to see how you would uh you would approach it. Yeah, Snowball, I'm right there. <laughs> oh, 
All right, what have you got for me then, all right? Oh, okay. So it's my question now. It is okay. indeed. Uh, God. I haven't thought of one yet. That's all right, man. No, you're good. You're good. One. Don't you have another one for me? Well, Let great me plus. Me. Same possible question. How many hours does it take a person with a spade to dig a 25 meter by 25 meter swimming pool? Wow. Uh, Do you know what? Is this, is this for me or is this for Henry? Wait, 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 wait. I've got. Hmm. I've got an idea, right? Wait. But it, it, it could get extremely competitive in the commentary booth if we if we do what I'm about to suggest. So we let chat come up with a question. Now they're going to have to be diplomatic somehow, and they're going to have to come up with the best question. And then you and I have to send each other's answers to each other. Oh, okay. And then the chat has to try and guess the the closest answer and who guessed the closest answer. To say, for example, how many days in a year? I guess 363, you guess 364. Someone in the chat has to say 364. No, that gets pretty complicated. I'm, I'm complicating it. <laughs> that is interesting though yeah great bluff what's the depth of the pool bro Asin's already out there 200 hours he says We'll save the twenty-two dollar tickets, boys and girls. Just pick who gets as close to each of you two winners. We get one guess. Nah, because then there's no. Yeah. There's no competition that way. Yeah. Then it, then it's not a lot in things. All right, we're just gonna we'll give O eight some time to, to come up with. Come up with a, uh... Damn it! I gotta think of one question. Right, I'm just gonna... <sighs> can I can I Google one? Can I can I find something online? No, just get get creative, you know. Uh, okay. Just, um... I don't know, like how. You know how many how many suitcases do you think are lost each year? Yeah, globally. Or how many people are struck by lightning each year? I, I don't know. Like, there's, there's loads. You can literally just take take anything and just you you take something and you add. A time period to it, whatever. Well, I, 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 I kind of want to. No, maybe, maybe I'm setting the bar too high, but I was like trying to think of something along the lines of the golf ball inside a school bus question. <laughs> so may, maybe I can. All right, let's see. Let me think. Um... <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> the chat's been on fire today. Kasan saying that's one way to put. Stolen by an airport crew. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got. It. I, I really Still like this Saudi's one, by the way. It said, "How many pencils would you need to use to draw the Colosseum in real size?" Oh, Jeez, that's a good one. Dude. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, do you want, do you want to go for that one? How many pencils uh, do I need to draw the Colosseum in real size? So the Colosseum as it is, or as it was? Nah, see, you're, you're complicating it. You, you're not allowed to 
you're not allowed to follow up questions. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm just gonna remember okay. the question is to be interpreted by the brain, right? That's what people are guessing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna think of a, an answer to that. Wait, what? So you want to do that one or not? Yeah, I, I think I want to do that one. Okay. All right, we'll do that one. Gastaudi, you get an eleven, an eleven dollar ticket for for coming up with a good question as well. That's a, good one. That, 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 that's a deal, chat. If you if you come up with a question that we use, then uh, you also get an eleven dollar ticket. Cass said, how many school buses can you fit in a golf course? <laughs> All right, chat. Okay, right, cool. So we're going to lock this one in, boys and girls. So we have about eight minutes until the next break. The question that Gastaudi came up with, can we find over 08 Grinders way, is how many pencils do you need to use to draw the Colosseum in real time? Don't forget, you can't Google this. There's no, there's no Googling or anything like that. It's a question that we've asked 08 Grinder, and he has sent me his answer privately. And it's now up to you to get your guesses in the chat for an eleven dollar ticket. Right, we've had two people ask about your socks, Henry. There's... Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows I have an OnlyFans, so. Ah, I see. I see. They found their way. Okay. Yeah, if you want, if you want socks, sock picks, then you know, ex exclamation mark Henry in the chat, and you'll get my uh, my link tree. Jamie Staples with 15 from the day that they say. So he's just going to defend here. Swing and a miss. No luck with Jamie today. He's uh, with the most of these flops. And Samara says now he understands how you can afford that baller clock behind you, Henry. There we go. <laughs> that is a nice looking clock. I don't know. They're about like 15 pounds. There you go. $20. Steel. Steel. That's a fine. Uh, I'm currently, currently in a, in an Airbnb, about 20 minutes drive from my parents' place. I was going to stay, I was going to stay in uh, Spain. That was the plan anyway, was to just stay in Spain and then Go straight to uh, the Party Poker Millions in Barcelona, which, by the way, boys and girls, you can see in the chat, the Millions Europe Festival in Barcelona from the 2nd until the 12th of June. Check it out if you want to come and, you know, hang out, grab a beer, or for those of you that don't drink, like me, we can go for a run at 6 a.m. along the beach. It's highly up to you. Uh, but yeah, make sure you do fire me a DM if you you're going to find yourself heading over there. Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona. Barcelona. That's Nate's favorite city. Yeah? Yeah, he he'll he'll tell you that at least three or four times when when you see him later. Wow. I feel really bad <laughs> not inviting that. <laughs> Love All you. Right. Love you, Nate.
if you're watching. Give the boys and girls a couple more minutes. Oh, I've got to try it. Let's have a look, see who's closest. Not many guesses for this one. What's going on, chat? Have you lost faith in 08 Grinders? You just need to get as close to my answer to get a ticket, guys. Come on. Okay. So once again, for an $11 ticket, all you need to do is type a guess into the chat. How many pencils do you think would be required, necessary, to draw the Colosseum in real size? Let me know. Let us know. Give you guys a couple more minutes on that one before we close the competition. Snowball said, I based my answer on 08's last answer. I know how his brain works now. Wait, what did you get? <laughs> Oh, man. Oh. Radol saying cantharid sized pencils or regular size. This is up to this is up to you guys. Man. This is the stuff you need to figure out. Yeah. Is how is uh, oh wait, gonna yeah. Perceive did this I, question? Yeah, did I base my answer on if if I were uh, only limited to mechanical pencils or there we go. <laughs> you know. Uh, a regular number twos, number tens, who knows? Mixture oh, of all. Shit. Golf pencils. <laughs> <laughs> Little tiny it's, ones, right? <laughs> it's kind of scary that you you even know the different types of pencils i i don't know any pencils man oh man i uh i don't even know why i know <laughs> gibraltarian with the 2hb i recognize 2hb I, re I recognize hb yeah do recognize that i don't know i feel like I was what, like 12, 13 when I think I got my first phone. Yeah, then we started like at school, started like typing instead of writing. Left school when I was 15. Man, I bet I can even write my name on a piece of paper anymore. It's been that long since I've used a pencil or a pen. You guys out here trying to trying to catch me out like what's going on <laughs> yeah your first phone at fit man i feel old now i didn't my first phone until i was in university all right boys and girls so this is going to be the final hand before the break and then when we come back we will be announcing the winner of that giveaway as well as the final hour with OA Grinder in the booth before Nathan Gamble, I believe, is going to be joining us. So yeah, quick five minute break, boys and girls, and be coming back with event number 65 of the Millions Online series here on the Pi Poker channel. See you guys shortly.
is Henry. The man that I feel I've said his name more than anyone. Maybe him and Rock Costisa are the names I've said the most over the last year and a half. That's Phil Howard. Including, uh, you know, my brother's name, my mum's name, the dog's name. You know, it's all. It's been Arthur and Rock. Here they go. Uh, Arthur limping in with Queen Six of Diamonds, Henry from the hijack. Spicy. Limping in off 15. Watch and learn, kids. The thing is, James, if I did that, everyone would be screaming <laughs> at their screens. And what yep. is this fish doing? But when Artel does it, everyone runs to their computer, checks the solvers, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you meant to do that every now and then. Go to the limp. We see who we're pulled. Everyone has a little bit. Alto, a top pair is gonna bet. And check two. Chan. Overcard. Got short, but with 1.5 million chips. Well, there we go. It is gonna stick around. And must have off with the uh, the bottom end open ender, Henry. But if you're in decay, this may seem very attractive. Wow. Yeah, again, you know, turn a 10 and you don't really know where you're at. Right. Especially against the short stacks, the SPR is going to be so low. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a bad turn card for Chen. The nuts. Wow. <laughs> Very tiny. Really quick as well, Henry. Arthur has dug himself a hole. Mm. Did he find the ladder? Climb on out of it. Not yet. Stick around for at least one. Fortunately for him, doesn't improve. Yeah, look at that, just a mini left. 25k chips, the only ones left in Chan's stack. Chan goes for half a milli. Henry just desperate to get paid here. And I mean, if he's up against a 10, it's going in anyway, right? So he's just trying to get some value from two pair. Right. And I suppose the kind of range of hands Alto limps with here, um, we'd expect to have two pair if they've got something, right? You're not. I guess we're not expecting to see Queen Six of Diamonds, but Chan might expect to see some of those connected cards in the middle that have stuck around on the turn. So this does make a lot of sense in that sense. And I guess that's why Arthur probably folds this one, Henry. Is a tank. I mean, uh, what do you think Arthur's thought process is here though, right? He's tanking. I just, I mean, I'm trying to think of what plus we could have against here. On. <laughs> I can't, yeah. King nine. Wow. I think, wow. Let's call it off. Oh, huge turn around for Chan, a near double up. Starting the hand so short. Arthur leaving himself well below 10 bigs. Reminds me of that scene from The Matrix where he's like, see, he is human. to Party Poker TV, ladies and gentlemen, Henry Kilbane alongside OA Grinder for event number 65 of the Millions Online. This is the KO edition of the 7 Max Week and we have, well, 19,500 for first, plus the booties, which we assume is going to be anywhere between 10, 20, 25,000 or so. Final hour. 
in the booth with Mr. Owe until he will be bowing out for that. Like, Do I want to be kind to Nathan Gamble straight off the bat? I guess so. You the can. man from Texas. The the soft, the soft southerner. Yes, yes, it's very soft. Big old soft. We'll have to try and get the three amigos back sometime as well. Oh my goodness, I don't I don't know if they can handle it. I don't know if they can handle it. To be fair, I don't know if they can handle it. That that that's just too much fun. <laughs> I think that, that's illegal. It's illegal. It's two illegal time bracelet winner, Nathan Gamble. I apologize. I do apologize, chat. <laughs> two two time bracelet winner, Nathan Gamble. Uh, soon to be three time bracelet winner, Nathan Gamble. Remember that uh, that that short clip of Jim Carrey? That I, yes. That I yeah, 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 yeah. That was amazing. Uh, that was that was. That totally good. reminded me of of Nate. Yeah. The annoying thing is, is he's going to win a bracelet this summer. This summer, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have, have to call him three time. Three yeah, time. Three time bracelet oh. winner three-time real foot winner oh my goodness but anyways boys Wait. and girls before break we did another giveaway $11 ticket was up for grabs the question we asked you the fans at home to answer was how many pencils do you think it would take to draw a real size version of the Coliseum and we fire that question over to OA Grinder. And he fired over his answer to me privately. And his answer was 12 million pencils. And the closest, the closest guess was the man that asked the question, Gastari Marze, with the 2.5 million. So not only did he get the $11 ticket for coming up with the question, he then gets the $11 ticket for getting the closest guess to 08 Grinders, <laughs> yes. So my question to Gastaudi is, do you want two $11 tickets, bro? Or do you want one $22 ticket? Ooh. Can only choose one. Can only choose one. Don't forget, there are 10 $11 tickets up for grabs, and there are five $22 tickets up for grabs, which will be given out of the course of two times 11. That's the smart move, dude. That's what I would have taken as well. Mm, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Great bluff said, are you building a replica or drawing it? <laughs> Imagine the paper. Oh man, that's an absolutely fantastic. I, l- I like this guy. I like Great Bluff. <laughs> I like this guy. The leader You're my guy. You're my voice. guy, Great Bluff. You're my guy. I love this guy. All right, let's take some of the heat off 08 Grinder. Right, 08, come on. We we got 45 minutes left. <laughs> let's fire a question my way so the chat can start. You know. Okay. Okay. All right. So. In, during break, I went to, uh, you know, I, 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 I Googled a lot of things. And uh, it said one of the main things is it has to be something that's not easily re- uh, something that you can find online. Right. So I thought of something. It's going to sound okay. silly, but. I wouldn't expect anything less, to be honest. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Um, how many uh, couples do you think uh, were forcibly uh, well they forcibly had to 
uh, quarantine together. You know, couples that they were on the verge of breaking up, but they were, but they forcibly had to live with each other because of quarantine. That are still together now. What the fuck? <laughs> How? Wait. So. <laughs> I have so many questions. How many? Can you rephrase the question? Okay, okay, okay. All right. So. So, how many couples that were on the verge of breaking up? All right. But they okay. had to forcibly quarantine together because of okay. COVID. Right. So, so they didn't break up in time. Right. They, okay. So, so they many, were so they were on the verge of breaking up. Then COVID uh, happened. Then they COVID had to happens. quarantine together. And they yeah, worked right. through it. Through yeah. COVID. Yeah. So how many of them are still together now? What's the number? All right. I, I got my answer. Got my answer. Straight that light. Straight away. There you go. There we go. So the question that 08 has asked me, boys and girls, is yeah, how many couples were on the verge of breaking up and then had to quarantine together because of COVID and are now still together? Can't ask any questions, boys and girls. Remember, Great Bluff, it's up to you to decide whether I perceive the question as throughout the world or in the USA. Now, I'm not even going <laughs> to... I, I was going to throw some shade. I was going to throw some shade, but, you know. Definitely a WTF question. <laughs> It, guys, it threw me off a bit. It was a bit of a curveball. Guys, guys, I am I am a weird person, okay? All right. Don't expect anything sane to come out of me. <laughs> Will Meister, bro, why don't you just type 500k? Why have you got to be all smart? The 0 0.5 mil. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Uh, Gastelli, are, am I a streamer? Um, I guess technically I am. You used to stream, right? I, I did um, the last streams I did was about two years ago where I streamed uh, almost every bracelet event online bracelet event. That's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember. Yeah, I, I did those. Those were gr grueling. Eight, 12 hour streams every day. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's when I had Nate jump in on the stream once. That's, mm. that's how I met him. Then we found out we were related. All right. Him and I share the same mother. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but but no, Gus, I haven't done any uh, streams as of late. That could change though, if uh, if the right offer comes. What kind of offer would it need to be? Oh, I don't know. Somebody would have to. Actually, somebody asked me uh, the other day if I was going to stream any of the uh, online bracelet events this year, and mm. uh, it got me—it got me thinking. Uh, well, if I'm not playing in any events on those days, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll hop right in and fire up the stream. Give uh, Give Jesse or Jeff Jeff Platt a run for their money. I blame no, blame. but those, those are great guys, though got to keep those those two bastards on their toes you know yeah those are great guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got a lot of uh a lot of love for jeff and 
I'm for Jesse. Jesse knows what's up. <laughs> So we'll say that's a question for Henry. What would it take for for me to start streaming? Um, I already stream, bro. So I kind of feel pretty upset that you don't know that. Oh, thank you, Gasali. Appreciate that. Oh, how much money would it take for a wait to start streaming? I don't know. I don't like those of you that saw uh, <clears throat> that saw Galfon's most recent tweet. Really good thread, by the way. Um, on reasons to play poker, or ten ways to make your poker career unsuccessful. I think I think you can remove the word poker and just like input anything right um and the same goes for streaming in the sense that like if you're streaming with the idea to make money straight off the bat or you have these expectations that hey i'm going to be making x within you know x amount of time you're just doing it for the wrong reasons and like i think m most of like the biggest streamers today you know you look at like ninja nick marks um Kevin Martin, Ludwig, just to like name a few of the the content creators out there. Like the reason, like the first first reason they got into it is just because they loved gaming with their friends and they just wanted to like stream what they were doing to the world. And then their personality came through and they ended up blowing up into these big, you know, online internet culture celebrities. You don't see many people that approach it purely from like a uh, um, like yeah a money money mindset actually come out on top. and yeah that's my my two cents and it shows right henry it shows in your personality Peep it really like, does yeah 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 i appreciate the kind words guys i'll give you guys a couple more minutes because we've kind of switched subjects so um <laughs> we'll try to rephrase the question again so oh wait grinder asked me how many couples were on the verge so this is there's, there's several layers to this question boys and girls okay how many people how many couples were on the verge of breaking up pre-covid were then forced into quarantining together during lockdown and then managed to survive if you will or overcome the adversity, fix the relationship, and are now still together. $11 ticket. I'm probably going to give whoever gets this right a $22 ticket. No, we'll give, we'll give, we'll give, we'll give an $11 ticket. $11 ticket. Cass saying, except if you're licking microphones, it's also GTO. You're not wrong. Yeah, ASMR is definitely where, where the dollars are at. And, Look, if, if you can put yourself in front of a camera, do a little hit and run, you know, two, three years, just, just make a quick meal, two, three meal, and peace out. Go live on an island somewhere. Um, then, yeah, you know. Is, is all ASMR licking microphones? Or there has to be other times. I mean, honestly, dude, I'm not experienced enough on the subject to give like a qualified opinion on, on what qualifies as ASMR and what doesn't. Um, so yeah, I'm afraid I can't, I can't answer your question. Uh, ASMR help, helps you is in the chat. Maybe you can shed some light on the subject. All right, 10 more seconds, boys and girls. I feel like all the people that are in here guessing have already guessed.
great boss making a great point. It's actually amazing how many marriages improved with COVID, more time together, less running kids around. Some got worse, but lots improved. Yeah, I could see I could see that being the case for, for some people, for a lot of people. Right, just scan around the table, make sure we're not gonna miss it all in. Okay, so OA asked me, how many couples did I think were on the verge of breaking up pre-COVID, but then forced to quarantine together during COVID, then overcame all of that stuff to then come out the other end as a stronger couple? And my answer was zero. And there were quite there were, there were a few close guesses to, to my guess, but it was the wall of John that got it right straight off the bat. He came straight in with the zero. Clearly knows how I think. We're just both pessimists, basically. You know, we just <laughs> we we don't believe in uh, you know whatever it is. So yeah, the wall of John winning an eleven dollar ticket, and you know who else deserves an eleven dollar ticket? Endo Costa with the cheeky check raise in this King of Clubs. Cut off versus Big Blind. Does just give up on the turn. See, board pairing turn card. It'd be very difficult to get Pavel to fold out. Fold a queen. Definitely not be folding a 10. See if Costa. Yeah, king of clubs and blocking hands like ace king, king jack. Not really the hand you want to be bluffing with. And uh, yeah, GG's the wall of John. Congratulations, John. All right. So we've, we've given away, we've given away five tickets. I think um, you were quick with that answer too. No deliberation. That was that was not needed, that one, man. Yeah, that was that, that was, was a none. snap, snap decision right there. Yeah, you know, life can uh, life can be cruel. But no, I just had like horror stories, you know. Yeah. I just I I, I even heard of like you know people that weren't even weren't necessarily struggling would then be forced to quarantine to go and you end up spending more time with someone. And uh, yeah, you realize that, hey, this person is for me. I'll tell you what's not for me though. Are these coolers deep in a tournament, 62 left, 475 locked up plus bounties in. We could potentially have a three way all in here. This is a Ooh. bounty tournament. And Dylan's rejam for 20 bigs on the button is going to be a lot wider than Ace Queen off. Wow. Okay. Fair play. You can just get away from the Ace Queen for 30. Okay. Wow. So be it. Oh. Wow. GG's Alberto. Wow. Just gets the double with the threes. Wow. The threes hold. <laughs> oh man, great bluff, Stan. Here's a question: How many kernels of pop popcorn fit in a Volkswagen <laughs> bug? Bug. That's a that's a great question. I'm gonna lie. It's similar to the golf ball. In a school it bus is. question. This, this is true. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. true. Yeah, we need we need something. We need something a little bit more unique. But I I appreciate the effort. Hmm. I thought of something, but I don't know if it's uh, appropriate. Oh, okay. And it's definitely appropriate. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. My mind goes places. Go on, what have you places. got? All right. Uh, wait, what is this? How many shots would it take for me to make a full court basketball shot? How many shots? Oh. Wow. Clearly, you you haven't seen my uh, my mixtape ASMR. My my uh, my basketball mixtape. 
it's out there somewhere it's a uh, basketball it's, mix hey. yeah it's in it's in black and white because uh i was i was born in the 1900s so <laughs> there clearly, i yes, ask clearly okay all right so Oh no, I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think I I don't nah. you know what? For, forget no, you can't. forget for yeah, no, it's listen. It's it's listen. It's you bad. can't tease us. You can't tease it's us bad. like that. It's bad. No, you can't. I can't. I can't. If I you, can't. I'm, you're I'm, teasing I, me. I'm gonna get cancelled. I'm gonna get cancelled, Henry. I'm I feel like I'm seventeen again. <laughs> I, I have to I think of like, something new. I honestly I feel like I'm eighteen again. It's one of my first times out at a nightclub. That girl that's been dancing with me all night long, you know, the final, the final dance of the night comes on. It's Wonderwall by Oasis. Ooh, you know, good song. Good great song. song. I start singing my heart out. That scares her away. The the twenty five year old quarterback comes along, sweeps her up, puts her in the in the BMW, and I never see her again. That's how badly you're teasing me right now. You know, you've been with me all night, and now you won't. You won't have this final dance with me. Oh my God, I'm I'm on the verge here. I'm on the <laughs> no, verge you, here. You're good, man. If you if you if you think there's a chance yeah. that it will get you cancelled, then you know, obviously, it's it's very bad. It's very bad. I I have I have bad thoughts, chat. I'm sorry. Was we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to blue ball henry on this one it's uh that's right i've been blue balled many times <laughs> right, I'll, I'll i'll think of a new one you're good i'll think of a new one i'll put a little post out on social media the boys know we are live did you um did you custom edit the the graphic for today's show? Uh, no, I did uh, not. Does it look good? It does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, credit goes out to uh, the marketing team. They did a good job with the photo, then. It somehow pulled off. Yeah, right, I just, see, uh, see what, I just see what reused somebody they sent me. You just what? No, I just use whatever they sent me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. So Slim was saying I suck at this game. I think I should stick to poker. Yeah, I know how you feel, mate. I know, I know how you feel. Uh, oh, it's 18 plus here. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, Rathador, dude, I love how you haven't even been chimed out for that comment because the mods don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's brilliant. Same same for AS ASMR helps you. That is a fantastic question. It's a question that we cannot use on this channel though. So GG. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to mention it. No, that's. I, I guess I wasn't going to mention it. So, uh, <laughs> Cast Canada saying if a question doesn't enrage someone on Twitter, is it even worth worth asking? You're not wrong. You know, those are some of my favorite people to enrage. Like people, people that just sit there waiting to find something to be enraged about. You know. I feel like there are healthier ways to live your life, but you know, who am I to, to dish out life advice? Are we talking Great about boss, keyboard yeah. warriors? Yeah, you know, people that just like they see something on Twitter and they just like, no. Yeah, I, you like, I envision. That. Yeah, I envision these guys like you know they they put on their driving gloves and cut out holes for their fingers, right? And they're just like ready to go smashing smashing the keyboards uh support send me a custom made custom made t-shirt all the way from australia yeah uh, this is way back this is pre-covid 
and uh, yeah, he reached out to me. He's like, <laughs> so check this out. He reached out to me. He's like, can I get your address? And I was like, I don't know, man. This, you know, giving out my address to a complete stranger on the internet feels a bit, you know. And he was like, no, dude, trust. It's nothing like that. I just want to send you a T-shirt. So I was like, okay, you know, sure. So I sent him my, my address. I was living in, Malta, uh, living in Malta at the time. And literally like a week later, I get this box. And I'm just like, you know, what's in the box? Do I open the box? You know, I have no idea what's in the box, man. I, I've seen the movie Seven. But yeah, I did eventually open the box and... Uh, yeah, he sent me a, a custom-made T-shirt with, with uh, the words "GTO commentator" on it. Nice. So, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? That's a great scene. Love that movie. That's a great scene. Love that. That's a great movie as well. Very dark movie, but very good. Yeah. I think all three roles, uh, Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, and Morgan Freeman, just absolute world-class performances. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I've seen most of Brad Pitt's films. I think probably not the obscure ones when he wasn't like when he wasn't like a lead role, but I think I've seen mm. pretty much most of his movies where he was like a lead. Yeah, I wonder if I there so. ever was a time where he wasn't a lead role. Because aren't, aren't these like elite actors kind of molded from from like a young age? You know? Yeah. They're like kind of, it's kind of impossible for them to not to not become huge, huge stars. Some great questions coming in. Aston Martini said, how many, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Great question. Thank you for your time. Great bluff saying how many books are in the main library in New York? That's a great question as well. So we're saying how many pubs does 08 think there are in the UK? Uh, the Nana's asking a real trick question saying how delayed is this? Uh, so we're on a 30 minute delay, but the commentary is live and in real time with you boys and girls at home. So we're here keeping you guys company, you guys keeping us company. We appreciate all of you guys keeping us engaged in the chat as always. Uh, Snowball saying Denzel Washington is my favorite actor. Enjoyed every movie. Uh, I have to I have to agree with that. Denzel's definitely my top three actors. I don't know if I have like a you know a numero uno, but he's he's definitely up there. Who's your favorite, Henry? I don't I don't think I, I can name one, but definitely Denzel Washington. I'm a big fan of. Tom Hanks's earlier stuff, like late eighties, early nineties, I just like yeah. But he made like big, yeah, um, like Saving Private Ryan, Forrest yeah. Gump. Oh, okay. Um, okay. When he started winning yeah. awards, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Green Mile, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was a good one too. Green Mile. Yeah. Um, modern day would probably be Chris Platt. Is that, his, that is his name, right? Chris Pratt, sorry. Chris Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, yeah. Yeah, I think he's he's like yeah, he's got it all. He's got the humor, yeah. he's got the seriousness, he's he's pretty cool. He's a bit of a gangster, I like him. I like I I I like actors who uh who start off as comedic actors and then they transform themselves into uh serious actors there's okay. not a whole lot that can that can do that you know uh, make that make that leap no, it's funny you say that because um i was recently recently found out about uncut gems hmm, yeah. by adam sandler have you seen it uh, no i have it. i have it on my queue but you know okay. i have a whole bunch of stuff that i have to get through first yeah I, I've never, i never heard of it, and a couple of people um, were recommending it to me. And apparently, yeah, pretty highly rated movie. Um, and it's, yeah, it's obviously not something. It's not a role that you would, you would expect Adam mm -hmm. Sandler 
to, to be in. Snowball makes a great one here. Jason Bateman in Ozark, yes. Like great show. He's uh And uh, don't forget uh, Brian Cranston, too, in Breaking Bad. He, a great comedic actor, turns in an incredible uh, performance in Breaking Bad. Yeah, that was that was definitely that's one on my list. Uh, the woodpucker would pluck his wood. Okay. Apparently, Adam Sandler has a new movie so about that coming out in June. All right, all right. I heard of that. I haven't seen it. I have. No, I have. I post COVID. If that time even exists, like we feel like we're still in COVID, obviously. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but like since restrictions are lifted and stuff, like the last year or so since I've been out in Thailand, I don't even have a Netflix account anymore. Um, yeah. Stopped, stopped watching movies and started. Uh, Start trying to fill my time in, in different ways. Different yeah. things. As you should. I love I love your your little shares on uh on social media where you just like share your uh background picture or a little short video of where you were. I felt like I was with you. What in Thailand? Again. Yeah. Yeah, Thailand was. Uh... Oh, I'm heading. I'm heading back in, in two weeks. Thailand is is, uh, is the man. Living the life. Dan said, "How many minutes has Samuel Jackson acted on the big screen?" Oh, how many times has? Uh, Samuel L. Jackson cursed <laughs> uh, in overall in all of his movies combined. Snowball says he gets his Netflix free over here fiber account. Yeah, we get ours from our. Uh, uh, mobile phone uh, provider. Yeah, free Netflix. That's a good question. How much rake and tournament fees are paid in total in the history of online poker? Oh, wow. 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 I mean, we're in the billions, you know. That's a very apt uh, question since we're in the middle of an online tournament. <laughs> that got me thinking now. How much rake? It's got to be way up there. Uh, the Narman said, "What both your biggest caches uh, live or online or both? Uh, uh, live is like 40k. Online is 240k. Don't play yeah. live, and I don't play online. Yeah, I'm not much of a tournament player, so." I, I do have one World Series of Poker cash, but that was uh, 17 years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. That was my first World Series. First ever. I, I didn't even want to go at first. A friend of mine. And then uh, after that, you decided that it was all downhill yeah. from there. You yeah, it was all downhill from there. No, I, was, I was perfectly happy playing cash games. 
at my local casino. You know, this was early 2000s, mid 2000s. So, you know, and uh, he, I don't know how he convinced me. He convinces me to go World Series. You know, long story short, he ends up not cashing. I end up cashing in a tournament that I didn't even want to play in. And uh, he was he was upset with me for the duration of the trip because <laughs> he was the one that wanted to go. I didn't want to go. I ended up cashing. I I ended up meeting all sorts of people. You know, at the time, yeah. And he he didn't get to meet anybody, and he was like the big uh, is it? He was like the big poker fan. You, you know what I mean? He like he knew everybody. And you know, I you know, I, I knew some people, but I didn't know everybody. And, mm. you know, I, I got I got I had, for some reason I ended up meeting Johnny Chan. Uh, walking around the Rio hallways, I, I run into Chris Ferguson. Yeah, uh, I run into Evelyn Ng. I don't know if I don't know if, she, if you or Chat remember Evelyn Ng. I can't say uh, I do. No. Um, who else did I meet? Uh, forgot. Uh, yeah, you know, I was, uh, that was that was a great World Series for me. You know, and he wasn't so happy. <laughs> but he he didn't go back. I I just I I I made frequent trips to World Series, but no other caches for my. I was mostly cash games, mostly cash games. Okay, for for someone someone in this show well, i mean there's going to be a few people myself included for someone that has like never played omaha high low before like what is like one or two simple alpha leaks that you could drop to us right now that you see like a lot of people make mistakes because like for me i feel like the obvious mistake that i would make is to fall in love with the high tier hands that I would like in normal PLO, so like Ace, King, Queen, Jack, you know, those types of hands, or like mm -hmm. Jack, 10, 9, 8, double suited, I'd be like, oh, let's go, come on, the boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. half the pot would be shipped somewhere else, and I'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, uh, for uh, anyone who uh, who's been curious, all right, to dabble in the high low streets. Uh, let's see. Playing high hands it isn't as bad as a lot of people make it seem like, right? You just have to recognize that once a low is out, you're not, you know, there's very there's a very small chance you're gonna scoop the whole thing. So you just have to be aware of that and and just play appropriately post you know it's a post flop game you're not really going to win mm. anything pre-flop you know and uh actually um i think the great phil galfon said it best too one time i think that uh especially in tournaments the high only hands have a lot of value especially in the uh the pot limit high low game where uh you can force a lot of hands with a lot of equity low hands with a lot of equity off pots because uh they're not entirely uh, scooping the pot. They're only working one way. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, I believe. Yeah. That does make a lot of sense. The Sol Ferreira get a cheeky little double there. With the ace three. I can't believe we're down to 39 sense. players. I mean, they're dropping like flies, my man. I know. This is, uh, this is pretty crazy. Crazy, not gonna lie. Biggest bounty in the tournament 2500 belongs so 2589 belongs to Johan at our table. No surprise there, sat there with 62 million. Ooh, wow, 62 million. Nice, it's a healthy stack. Healthy stack. I thought I was saying don't play for half pot, play for everything. Always, always a high hand. Yeah, that makes sense, man. 
That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Rata, it, it, particularly if you're playing pot limit, yeah, you don't really want to push with a low only hand. That's a lot. That's a big leak. A lot of uh, players. I, I see I see it all the time. Especially in cash games, I feel like 100 mm. bigs effective. People drawing to the ace deuce, ace three. I mean, I, I've played very, very limited high low cash. The only time I've really played it is when, um, when they've been playing like a mix of PLO four, PLO five, and high low, like like dealer choice or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they got me good there a couple of times, but. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If like if you get dealt a hand like Ace Deuce King Queen. It's a nice starting hand for pot limit high low. Uh, say you call a bet. I mean, you call a raise preflop comes six, seven, eight. So you have not low, ace king high. If there is a uh, a bet and a raise, uh, in in front of you, they like, uh, maybe your ace deuce king queen's not that great, and uh, yeah. you can junk that. You know, there's there's no shame in junking it. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I would definitely be be drawing to the low way too much. I'd be like, well, I just have the nut low. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then end up getting courted. Uh, let's see here. The nah man, grinder, no shot. I am 40. Oh, I'm older than that. But, you know, Wait, I, what? I have a very uh rigorous skincare routine so <laughs> but thank you for the uh, compliment i appreciate it yeah you you are bro you're absolutely glowing mate jesus i took a shower henry right right before we uh we jumped on it's like i i see she see chat i knew i was going to be in the booth with some of the world class oh, right? okay. so we had to up the game you had to take a shower i put deodorant on even though I know you weren't yeah. going to smell me. I put the other, I, yeah. I put cologne, right? So I, I, I came to work, right? I came there to work. There we go. So yeah, this is this is how you got to treat it. You got to be professional. When you're with world-class talent, you got to be, you got to, you know, if, if they're working hard, I, I got to work hard too. So I'm, I'm, I brought the A game today. I showered. I appreciate brushed my, I brushed I appreciate my teeth. It. I put deodorant on it, put cologne. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how we do right. it. I appreciate it, dude. Got to respect the uh, the work ethic, you know. Love that. Uh, always, always. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be embarrassed. I'm not gonna be embarrassed. I'm not gonna, no, looks like if I make a fool, like, yeah. if I make a fool of myself, it's not only uh, the service to me. The service to you. You know. Chat, what do we think? We, we, we keep our weight for, for a few more streams, eh? No, I love that, man. <laughs> love the, uh, I love the mindset. Look at this, by the way. Brenner just flatting. Oh, wow. Kings with the two short snacks in the lines, just praying for a squeeze. Maui just uh, calling too with the sixes. Oh my goodness. Well, unfortunately for Brenner, he uh, has flopped top set. Everyone else has completely whiffed. On a board like this, do you think Brenner is incentivized to maybe hardly bet at all? Yeah, it does slide it on over. There's a card on the turn that would send Maui home prematurely. That's not it.
It's great, yeah. I, I actually really like the check. I know we obviously want to be building the pot with our knighted hands, you know? That's Pokemon. Oh, good. oh there wow. it is. No way did that card just roll off. Like you. There it is. So, this is absolutely insane. So Simon just trying to get a cheeky bluff through, just trying to get the broadways, the ace highs to fold. He's saying, hey, I have more deuces than you guys. Brenner gonna raise now and put him all in. What is Maui gonna do? Oh man. Does Maui ever get away from this, given the way the hands play? King eight deuce on the flop. Brenner can have eights, can have deuces very unlikely right you'd feel like you'd hear from sets oh my word oh here he comes this is chip lead pop boys and girls oh oh my word that oh. is such a sick hand that is the that is just so disgusting wow oh my God. wow and just like that, Brenner's chip leader, boys and girls. Talk about the purest of runouts. GG's Maui. Absolutely unavoidable. Unavoidable spot. Oh, wow. Brenner just... Oh, I love... I love the, the check, check. Letting his opponents catch up. Oh man, that was, I, I thought that was a brilliant, brilliant execution right there. Got the max. Wow. Uh, yeah. Sometimes uh, you just get super lucky. You set the trap free, and the deck and the poker gods are like, you know what? I'm going to reward you for your trickiness. In the form of an insane cooler going your way. Brenner with three times tournament average now. Courtesy of that river. What a grim, grim spot. Oh, wow. GG. Maui. Yeah. GG's indeed. Everyone guaranteed $713 plus bounties. For their efforts so far. Let's see. All to play for here though. 40k up top. Well, 35k, 40k. Around there. What's five? Yeah, what's 5k between friends there, you know? Yeah. Great Bluff is asking if you put pants on. Is that is that is that a question for Henry? For me. Pants? Or is it me? I assume if he's using the word pants, it probably addressing you, right? Oh. Uh, but... I, are, are you are you trying to get a free look at my below parts, Great Bluff? Because uh, uh, I don't, I don't stand up just for anybody. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe before a break, I'll stand up. Oh, my apologies. Great Bluff is a she. I, uh, my apologies. I, I did not know. Well, that's a great bluff right there. Yeah, indeed. Oh, that's...
Oh, I listed everything I did to get ready, but I did not mention pants. Pantaloons. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, normally, uh, I do wear um, some sort of uh, undergarments, uh, especially when I'm working with world-class talent like uh, Henry Kilbane. Um, uh, when I was here last week with Nate, no, I wasn't wearing pants. But with Henry, I, I clearly had to. I clearly had to. So, I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry, by the way, I, I, I did not... I, I clearly assume that you are of the male variety. So, but uh, thank you. I mean, if you, if, you, if you look at the uh, the percentages of the, the demographic of people that have watched it. But you know what they say? To assume is to make an ass of you and me. That's why I try not to assume, you know? And th see, this is why Henry is a world-class talent. Right, at least a thong. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know anyone that owns a thong. Like, any guys that own thongs. Also, and I don't think that... that I... Risk, by the way. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Cheeky double. Go oh, on, away. Right? Oh, no. I oh, no, no. I wasn't going to say anything important. <laughs> I'm, fa I'm pretty sure. I'm fairly huh? sure. Yeah, I'm sure James <laughs> Dempsey owns the thong as well. Yeah. Is that is that something that uh, is that something a a man can be proud to say, just openly? That I have, I wear thongs. Is that, all right, are we are we in that era now that that's easy to say? I'd say so. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. I love the topic that you're leaving us with to dwell over. Oh, it grind. I, I I like how you slipped it in one minute before we head into break. Yeah, so it's something for uh, for Nate and I to discuss for sure. Oh, for sure. And uh, I'm he he loves topics like these. I can imagine, can imagine Simon Beckman getting the double, right on the bubble, and we will be going to a short five minute break, boys and girls. When I come back, oh wait, Grinder is not going to be with us. But I do believe you're going to be with us later on in the week. Oh wait, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Nathan Gamble though just touched down in Vegas is going to be jumping in to call out the action for you guys and girls at home all the way down to a winner see you guys in five peace Because it's not like the rest of the rooms decorated no. in such fashion. Obviously, we're looking at the TV stage here. Phenomenal setup you guys are used to looking at. Well, Anton was giving it the image speech just a couple of hands ago, saying I'm a nit. <laughs> then uh, finds the A6 from the hijack, raises it up. Oh, just a cool. cool. Interesting. Well, maybe the speech got through. You know, it's the most curious. Um, I have to say, Henry, I just did a quick check on uh, Silver McAlewan. Just let it 
couple of caches for uh, just, just a few thousand dollars. So already smashing best live earnings. I don't know um, there's some online presence there, but I'm going to guess, looking at the Hender Mob, that they've won a satellite here maybe for the main event or something and mm. jumped in and played this as well. Or who knows, maybe they played a satellite for this, uh, for this event itself, this 2K. I don't know, but certainly based on the Hender Mob. This is a, a huge spot they find themselves in. Yeah. Why do I think Arthur's not going to win this one? Wow. Ooh. Well, well, well. I mean, Henry, I guess, has played. We're going to check this and let Anton bet because I mean, Anton gets to have all the aces. Well, Henry, he's going to win a lot more chips than we would have won. I'm going to rip this pre. It will be over. <laughs> I wonder, you, you see something like that happen live, Henry, the other players here looking, and now like, right, okay. Yeah, this, man's, this man's peeling from the small with ace jack, so when he does three bet, rip it. Certainly weak opponent, but an opponent that you know plays his strong hands somewhat face up and plays passively in, uh, in a lot of spots. So it's going to be kind of easy to exploit, especially over three streets. And yes, there is a delay, guys. There is a delay, obviously, to protect the integrity of the game. Ah. Oh. Problems everywhere, Henry. Problems everywhere. My laptop's decided not to charge. This is brilliant. Josh saying, wish I had knew about this festival in advance. I'd have been straight over. That sounds like an excuse to me, Josh. Not going to lie. Um, there, there are people that are coming for the festival that haven't even arrived yet. It's only Monday. We're here, here until the 27th. You've got an entire week, mate. Don't have to come tomorrow. No drama. But you could very easily book a flight for Wednesday. Six on the river. Mantas with some showdown now. Ten seven seven five also getting there. He does decide to give this one up and Anton with the two pair. Comes out firing. Little 40% pot. Fantastic looks pain, but self-inflicted pain. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here the final weekend of the Millions Online Festival on Party Poker TV. You can see that through the magic of technology, we've replaced the man who made the legend, Away Grinder, with two-time bracelet winner, soon to be three-time bracelet winner, Mr. Nathan Gamble, who's joined us from Vegas. Nate, how's it going, my man? How's it going, Henry? It's good to be back with you. Man, it's been a while. It's been like six months, dude. Give me two seconds. I'm having no worries, a bit of technical difficulty on my end. Be right back. Sorry. No worries, mate. No worries. I will hold down the fort whilst we wait for Nate to come on back with the chair spinner. Anton Wig with the open. We'll get him back, boys and girls. We'll get him back. 
There he is. The white shirt. Wow, what a flop. Jerry with bottom two. Anton with two overs, gut shot, and the second nut flush draw. Do we have you back, Nate? We do. I, uh, <laughs> right when we started back up, uh, my wife decided to play TikTok, and uh, it's coming through my headphones, so I wasn't hearing a single thing you said. No idea in the world what happened, and it's just blasting these little kid sounds and this music, and it's it's there's a party that is happening, and uh, there's a party happening right here for Anton Wig um, as well. But I was very confused for a minute. There is a big party happening for Anton Wig in the form of more than 50% equity, but currently behind with the two overs, gut shot and flush draw. Feels like too many outs. Not this time. The eight of diamonds rolling off on the river. Nate, firstly, good to have you back, my man. Glad, uh, glad we have you. I, I kind of feel like you're lucky that it was TikTok that came through the headphones, yeah. if you know what I mean. You know that? I've, I've slipped up a couple of times with, with shared Bluetooth speakers and, and headphones. I'm sure people at home can relate to, to said slip ups. At least it was TikTok, you know? It, it would have been uh, weird. Disconcerting, <laughs> shall we say. There we go. There I was literally go. going in like, because first I had to run through, I was checking production side, I was checking your side, I was checking to see if like, because there's like some kids, I was thinking Grinder has kids. Did he just like put the mute off mic and was like, let's go? And uh, forgot to. And so I was checking everything on this side and then I was like, wait, it's on replay. And I was like, right, it's gotta right, be, right, it's gotta right. be my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No other question. So, oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a moment of sheer panic. I'm not even gonna lie. So it's good to be back with you. Uh, you know, we saw Grinder out and it sounded like y'all had a great time with pants and thongs and massive hands right before break. We did, we did it. It, it got a bit weird. Not gonna lie. It, good. But, you know, we, we, we tagged out just in time before before the conversation took us down a, a dark road that we would have been almost impossible to return from. So uh, the, the the tag team, this I like this dynamic, you know, just like switching things up. And, no, it was uh, a lot of fun. We, we played a bit of a lot of things, gave away some tickets, gave away like $50 worth of tickets. And uh, yeah, 08 was, you know, giving us some alpha leaks on first time mistakes that people tend to make when they first start playing uh, Omaha High Low. So I learned something, chat learned something, I feel like we all learned something. Yeah, I was uh, seeing it earlier in chat because I was just getting random numbers popping up from y'all and Grinder saying 8049 and you're like 52. I'm like, what? what is happening? And I, I was like, all right, there's only one possible explanation here. It has to be Laden's thing. So now that I know oh, yeah. the answers, what were some of the questions? Uh, so we had my classic go-to, which was uh, how many planes are currently in the sky at this moment in time. Right. We then did the how many golf balls would fit in an American school bus. Of course. Uh, we went for how many pencils would it require to draw the Colosseum in real size. And then Oof. had a really weird one. Yeah, <laughs> I love how Nate straight away is like. Uh, then we had, um, so the, the, you can probably tell who's, who was asking these questions. Uh, the, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you can't even begin. Like, this is the, best. the last one, the last question oh, wait, asked me, <laughs> before he left was, and it was a sincere question, was that how many people were on the verge of breaking up pre-COVID who were then forced to quarantine together during lockdown, <laughs> then overcame their issues or whatever it was that they had, go the complications they had going on in their marriage and are now together today, they're still together today. And my answer was zero. Because I was like, that, that whole process was so like too long-winded. 
that I've already broken up with the person five times over in my head. But that's like the first date, second date, and the explanation is still going. You're like, I'm out. I'm I'm done. I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah, I like it. Like I like zero. It. But chat came up with some fire questions though. Uh, had some had some really fun ones. Oh wait, Grant is saying was the music that came on in your headphones. <laughs> my buddy doing yeah. jiggle jiggle. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you you yeah. have two parties, man. You should be making uh, uh, TikTok reels like that. Yeah, is that what we need to do? We need to bust them out during the series and just like get tournament buy-ins with puppies. And then there's there's money, there's dogs. I don't know what else you need in this world. Yeah, you know when you're just out on a walk with like Chip, you know, just like get close-ups and shots of like him just like you know walking along and yeah. It's, Download, download Premiere Rush on your app store. Teach yourself how to edit. Just watch like a thirty-minute YouTube tutorial. Boom, you're a content creator. Hey, that easy. I can't even log on to this show for like three seconds without having my headphones taken over and having like children giggling in my ears. You think I can do like video contents and creation? Uh, oh, that, I that. wish. I wish. Dominic so with the go on. Oh no, no, please. We have the, the oh, king say, suited. Yeah, Dominic Rickard opening from under the gun. I assume this is going to be that he has the entire table covered. It's like, hey, I'm gonna get in there for the cheeky early position open with the suited king. I cover both the blinds. I'm gonna get in trouble here. Top pair against Jerry's top pair better kicker, although it did check her on the floor. We saw Mr. Gaffey last week uh, deep into it as well. He was in the final few tables. Didn't make the final table, but he was making another very, very deep run at these. Nice to see him okay. back so soon. And obviously you have Anton Wig right beside him. Another high profile, Leon Stern. So you guys just uh, you guys just flew in, eh? Yeah, yeah. We just uh, came back in today, about two hours before joining y'all. Um, came in from Mexico. So a nice little okay. siesta down there. Dominic's not getting okay. into too much trouble here in the back door spades, causing Jerry a check down. Yeah, it feels like a somewhat passive line from Jerry. I'm not gonna question this play. He's here, final 28. I'm in the commentary booth, you know? You're both at the who's final the, 28, just different ways. Who's, yeah, who's the real winner? So you're down in, you're down in Mexico? Well, not anymore. We were for the last five days, pre-series. Getting a little sun, a little bit of drinks, poolside. Yeah, a little sangria on the beat. Yeah, you know, the, the uh, Mexican water is the locals continuously like to tell us i'm right excuse my potential arrogance or oblivion uh, obliviousness but don't you just have like absolutely everything in america like why like from vegas you can be skiing in mountains that are similar to the Alps and the Pyrenees and some of the best mountain ranges in, in Europe and the rest of the world, you can be, okay, maybe not crystal clear beaches, but still pretty solid beaches. Like in America, Cali, especially Northern Cali, where it's not as polluted. So like, why, why do Americans seem to be so hot on Mexico when it comes to like a vacation destination? I mean, I don't know if I'm the, the prime source to ask on that. It's the very first time I've ever been down there. Oh, uh, you were dragged Mexico. along, yeah? Uh, I mean, I, I think, so I think it's like, America doesn't necessarily do the same, like all-inclusive resorts. You're going to pay way, way, way That's more true. money for it. And That's here true. it's just like, yeah. you know, much cheaper, all-inclusive. And um, I mean, the nice thing is just, literally no worries you're just hakuna matata down there where mm. i had no responsibilities there's a four or five days of absolute pure nothingness 
um, mm. which was, was really nice. But three days in, I was jonesing to get back. I was jonesing to do commentary. I start up the World Series on Wednesday. So I started getting antsy a little bit um, after three, three and a half days down there. I, I can relate, mate. I, I know exactly what you mean. And I'm curious to follow up even though you know this isn't a podcast but like a follow-up question to just be like how do you overcome that antsiness when you are trying to just detach yourself from poker and take a bit of a break especially before a big series you know because i feel like whenever i go on quote unquote vacation and i try and just log off from twitter instagram poker obligations studying you know all the social media stuff that comes with it for a week similar to you you know three days in four days in i'm just like fuck like i've got a content idea let's experiment with it or i need to put this tweet out i just had this great idea whatever it is and it's just it's like no just take a week off just enjoy it you know? well let's let's answer that question shortly as we have an interesting little three-way affair here with the the broadway draw that would be the spiciest ace in the deck um but alongside the the over over pair and the, the ace eight here don't you wish dominic had been in there just flop them all host yeah it's a, a little i cover everyone let's flick it in from the small with the uh the 10 9 okay okay I, I think we see a little lead here from yuri why not yeah definitely because yeah like right. a little two-thirds probe on the turn <clears throat> so heads up affair between Leon and uh, Yuri, I imagine. I see. Yeah, definitely. Gus Dahl. Ask if I was born in the U.S. I am born in the U.S., ladies and gents. Texas-based. That's pretty cool, you know. By the way, we'll we'll jump into that in a minute. Why I, why I think that's cool, but fifteen mil out there. It's a board where feels like Yuri definitely has more 9x, but Leon is obviously going to have infinitely more ace-king. In fact, exclusively more ace-king, like Yuri just never has ace-king, right? Do you think he actually has ace-king without played out? Because it's checked on flop, Yuri leads for 65% pot on turn, and Leon would have to call with ace-king and Anton still behind him. So I don't think Leon really true. has any ace-king there either. Yeah, that's actually a great point. Yeah, whereas Yuri yeah. can still have King Nine that probes turn and then all of the nine X goes, like Jack Nine, Eight Nine, Queen Nine even, Ace Nine. Yeah. And Leon would have to have I'm trying to think of what nines he has in range, a nine ten suited that checks on flop just trying to get spicy. We nine suit it potentially, but I don't think he has many nines. So Eureka got real wicked there, but um, uh, yeah, no. Uh, back to the question, Henry. Sorry, I once in a while I'll pop in on the action and just get oh, a little for sure, interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I before we went over to uh to or down to Mexico, then I told. Tina, I said, hey, like, I'm going to probably check, you know, Twitter and crypto and a couple things for about 10 minutes a day. And that's it. That's essentially all I'm going to do. I suck pretty regimented with that. So it'd be check nice. all the appropriate things just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, and then I just shut down and we go poolside. I didn't take my phone with me. But so, yeah, after three days, I mean, getting antsy, I... I mean, I just start kind of thinking in my head a little bit more. So we're laying poolside and it goes from relaxing and I'm drinking a mojito to I'm thinking in my head and I'm just thinking about ace king versus kings on the button and just how glorious it is. Um, but yeah, it's it's really and truly kind of what it boils down to is I just start thinking more. and I start thinking about like the next three days. I'm like, I, I get to talk with Henry for you know sunday when we get back and then we're gonna do commentary i do this and then okay what about the world series and let me look again at the schedule oh what oh hello spicy didn't even notice you in there dominic 
yeah, incredibly spicy. Almost overly spicy, to be honest with you. I feel like this plays much better as a flat, especially when we cover it feels like a disaster to three bet fold against the short stack, where we get to play a hand most of the time in position against someone that we cover, potentially go bounty hunting post instead. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong, I understand the aggressive line being taken, 26 left, 26 left. Still not that many ICM considerations to come into play, but we want to be pushing people around. I actually thought we may be able to find a way out if we're gathy there with the Ace King um, coming on the heels of this action, but this is why he br wins bracelets every year, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, 40 bigs. And an online 320. Not to do a disservice to anyone in online 320s, but yeah. Gonna be some wild cards in there. No aces are dead yet, so plenty out there left to hit. Oh, you sick, sick pup. Straight away, scanning the rest of the cards to see if there are any aces dead. And although there were none dead, board runs out clean for Yuri. Always a sweat, eh? It's like, it's always gonna be three outs, not two outs. Why can't it be king, queen suited one time? Well, I, I was watching right before break and, and real fast, good game, Mr. Michael Gaffey for a second week in a row on your deep run. But I watched right before break when you and Grinder were here and there was a six on the river, dirty sixes full of deuces, you know, $120 million pot, chip mm. pot. And uh, it, it's funny because I'm watching this and maybe I've played too many mixed games. Maybe I've seen too many things. But after uh, the six is full, raised up on the river and then got jammed on in my head, I'm like, oh, you should be able to fold that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I I agree. You, don't, you just don't really be it. Like, no one's ever jamming ace high flushes there. Um, there should never be any suited boats. King deuce, eight deuce, six deuce don't, are just are never involved in the hand. And the only hands that you are up against are going to be quad deuces and pocket eights are going to be the most likely. Although you could argue that check and flop is not that common, but hey, we saw that he checked top set. So maybe going to mix in some checks with, with deuces and eights as well. I think you're more likely to, to mix in checks with top set rather than deuces and eights because the opener can have nines through queens. Um, so you could kind of cooler yourself by checking and giving them a free card, whereas with kings, you don't need as much protection, right? Well, I, I think we're just seeing some coolers of play right now. As Yuri's, I mean, I get, what is it, we're five-handed, so Yuri's going with the under a gun, Leon's getting spicy, and then Dominic again is like, all right, I, I guess we, uh, I guess we have to see what happens if I raise. But there's some action at these tables. A little blood in the streets, Henry. Yeah, 24 left. It's kind of, it's, I don't know. It's been pretty tame for the last 45 minutes or so. And it's like, okay, Nate's settled in now. He's comfortable in his chair. Let's turn up the heat. Yeah. These boys are out here, five-handed, trying to assert dominance at this feature table. So uh, how long have you been back are you where are you currently located in the world uh, i am in the uk for about four or five days i was out in madrid and didn't make much sense to fly all the way home to thailand um for six days uh it's like a 24-hour trip to then fly back to barcelona for the upcoming millions uh, there on your screens, boys and girls, Pipe Poker Millions, June 2nd until June 12th. We're going to be in Barcelona. And uh, yeah, it just didn't make much sense. And I was like, well, you know what? I haven't seen my family uh, since October, October of last year. So it was like, we'll just hop over. It's a two hour flight from Madrid uh, back up to London. Very nice. Yeah, I've done the the trip from Barcelona over or 
I think I did London to Barcelona, if I remember right. Um, mm. It's it's been a minute, but yeah, not not that far of a trip. Pretty nice. So I'm glad to hear you're going to Barcelona. I've been every stream that we've done, every commentary, I've been raving about that, and just wishes at different time of a year than the World mm. Series. I would be there in a heartbeat. I love Barcelona. It's a beautiful city, and I'm sure this event is going to be absolutely legendary. Yeah, I'm I am really looking forward to it, man. It, it feels like there was a bit of, um, I don't know, we were teased a little bit, you know, the, the carrot was dangled in front of the entire poker community of whether we were back or not. But for the last six, seven months, you know, we've been, uh, yeah, just smashing the, the live, the live event scene. And I feel like I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to say that we're back for good. You never know what could be around the corner especially after the last two years, but it looks like most companies, Pipe Poker included, are, are now pretty confident in announcing locations and schedules ahead of time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we're back and that probably means we, we have you know, quite a few events planned for later on in the year as well. So I'm looking forward to hearing those be announced as well. Yeah, if you happen to need someone to join you in Barcelona or one of these <laughs> other worldwide great exotic destinations, um, I've heard rumor that I travel internationally very well. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, those Barcelona. those those economy seats, mate. They can get a bit tight, you know. Oh, I know. I'm American. They're even tighter for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've been, you, you were the first person that came to mind. And then the reason that James can't join is because James is going to be at the World Series. I was like, oh, it's like, well, that means that Nate can't join either. So, hey, now, I mean, don't, don't even think like that. We're talking <laughs> what, June 2nd through 12th? I mean, come on. Well, just a week, week and a half. Uh, uh, you know, plus the jet lag. You know, not even an issue. I, you, you, oh, it is an issue. You're going to be out of the game until until the 14th, 15th at best. Uh, coming back, yeah. If I if I came back, it usually takes three or four days to like hit it. This is an interesting little spot here for Jerry. Pocket fours, big blind. You think that's a spot he can get spicy on the turn, or just be sufficiently happy to to call it. Oh, it feels like a spot where we just have a very, I, don't, I hate using the word standard in commentary, um, but you'd rather bluff a hand like 8-4, 7-4 suited, right? The hand that doesn't have showdown that you could get spicy with, whereas fours are just still ahead of, you know, the delayed turn stabbing range um, of Anton. So yeah, I don't know. Too I hate using the word standard. But yeah. the word standard is thrown around left and right nowadays. I, um, I don't think there's anything too standard anymore with uh, how things are done and solved and studied. It's like everyone has their own little nuances on it. So They do, but like you, if you look at a lot of spots in a solver, there, there's nothing. It's very rare that something's very clear cut, right? Like it's always mixing. At, even at the, the lowest of frequencies and I think now it's got to a point where everyone's just like if you even if you're delving deep into like an intricate part of the game tree and it's like a 10% frequency in a really uncommon spot people just turn around and be like yeah it's standard like 10% of the time you know <laughs> it's just like where, where do we draw the line but anyways yeah. I, I've watched plenty of Doug Polk over the years, and I just love the, uh, well, you know, you are you can do a couple different things here. And you're like, yeah. yep. you, you could go ahead and fold, but usually we're going to raise, but calling's not so bad, so. Yeah, talking to Doug, didn't he have a runner, his own card room recently? Now at the, uh, Took, uh, fourth the place, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, fourth place for... I think they overshot the guarantee by a little bit. It. So he took fourth place and was able to uh, put the money back in the coffers and keep it running. There we go. 
GG's. Uh, but yeah, just looking at the schedule now for mm -hmm. Barcelona. Same, so we're going to be same. kicking things off with a 1k opener over the first three days. And then day two, the final day, going to be on Sunday the 5th. Uh, then the warm-up, 2200. So it's like a tier system. So yeah, 1100 opener, 2200 warm-up, and the 3k main with a cheeky little 10k high roller flicked in there as well. I am a fan of how they do the scheduling, where it uh, allows someone who kind of runs it up at the start, that 1k or maybe a 2k, to really start advancing through. Because a lot of them will just not really give that thought into their scheduling. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of hodgepodge, but it's like, hey, I won the 1100, I went deep in, let me try the 2200. Did well there, maybe take a crack at the main event for feeling spicy, go for the high roller. You know, it's like, I like the tiered progression throughout. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It it allows for both recreationals and pros to plan how they want to tackle the event a lot more more openly. Because um, like for a recreational who's, you know, going to fire the opener and maybe a couple of satties into the main, you know, you book a hotel for four days, you don't win the satty. You call it GGs, you head on home. But if you do spin it up, like you said, in the 1100, they'd be like, ah, you know, I can extend the room by a couple more days. We can, we can flick in the main events, see, see what's up. Let's see what happens. See what happens. Man, I was, it's... you know, I was retelling uh, my story of Atlantic City recently. And like looking back, that's just how wildly inappropriate. And bad my bankroll management was like i have 5k to my name right right i'm on the i'm halfway around the world from home i've quit my job I told my parents that i'm going on a road trip across america and i'm playing two five in atlantic city paying 400 dollars a night for a suite how did i not go broke like <laughs> please tell me like answer the question like how this ran so pure there's one of those beautiful things in poker and apparently in the poker commentary world as well where there's a recency bias and a survivor bias where most of mm. the professional poker players are here and apparently commentators um should really not be here but we're the lucky few that survive those insane stupid decisions like going to Atlantic city and paying 400 dollars a night um with 5k to our name and like it shouldn't and it doesn't work out for most people but if it didn't we wouldn't yeah. be here so that's why we get to mm. be here yeah i know you've had your fair share of wild stories i'll tell you what this hand's going to be a wild ride though Ooh. as francesco with the easiest rejam of his life small blind versus button has run into the ace 10 of dominic Although Anton would have been calling off with the same hand. Clean run out to Ricard. So we lose Francesco in 24th. A couple more bust outs will be down to the final three tables. Everyone guaranteed $854 for their efforts. And yeah, that's, um, that's a really solid point, actually. And it's true you don't you don't hear you don't hear about the people that didn't make it because you know no one wants to 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 scream out from the rooftops you know oh i'm such an idiot i flew halfway around the world with 10 buy-ins and was spending 10 percent of my role each night on a hotel room because everyone would be like well you're just an absolute moron like why are you surprised that you went broke but when it does work out, I don't know, we kind of, as as a community, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to word it, but... You, you celebrate it with, uh, to a certain extent, in the community. I don't, know if I don't know if celebrating it is the correct word. I feel like, for me, it's more like, Jesus Christ, I was an absolute <laughs> moron. 
Well, but that's like self-reflection versus community reflection because community like sees the people that put their entire bankroll or the majority of their bankroll on the line and they've made it and they're just like they had conviction and they knew and that's why they're able to win so much money and it is celebrated to a certain extent but the self-reflection is my god i'm an idiot <laughs> yeah i mean i was about to say like I, I, I mean, going to survivorship bias, both you and I started playing young uh, for, for mm. most of the poker community, you know, and, but if you, if you think about it, the vast majority of interviews that you hear with professional poker players, um, card players, uh, Julio Rodriguez has a really good one where he, he talks about it and uh, does interviews with tons of professionals. And most of them will say they won their very first time. That, oh, I was, you know, 18, I won my first time. And he's like, well, what if you'd lost? You know, if you'd lost, would you still be in here? And they're like, I, I don't know if I would have continued pursuing it. But, yeah. you know, for me, it's like I lost the first time, but I was so young that it didn't matter. It wasn't losing in, you know, a, a normal sense. Ooh, well, let's look at a little spicy dominate. He's... He's getting after there, Henry. The old King Deuce. Wow, Ooh. that is insanely out of line. All right, so that's um. So we saw the Queen Ten suited, that three bet versus the Ace King earlier, and now we've seen the King Deuce suited. That's uh gone for a four bet. Button versus small blind. So, uh, yeah, Dominic's out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the full bet, by the way. I think it's, uh, it's something we've seen more and more in recent times. It's like the replacement of the Ace Deuce through Ace Five suited type hands. Yeah, Cass saying uh, King Deuce is the new Ace Five. I agree. See a lot more of it, but it's interesting. Eighty effective Ace Queen suit. I feel like. I don't know. Should we? Are we meant to be peeling one? Um, I think Anton has an interesting one on his hands, depending on the bounty size of Marcus. Uh, Twenty players left. I imagine Marcus has a decent bounty. If he has anything halfway decent, it's going to be a call from Anton. If not, mm. uh, I think it's just a very easy fold and preserve preservation of chips. Yeah, this stage of the tournament. Chip's going to be worth infinitely more than bounties. Yeah. What are we thinking? Uh, uh, long term, end game, and all that. Oh, okay. So you can already see this train wreck, Henry, because we have Dominic with the Ace Five suited versus Yuri with the Aces, and what we've seen makes me think this is about to go down. Oh, I like it. If you're willing to take the king deuce, you're willing to take the ace five, right? Yeah, but we're we're eighty effective here, man. Oh, I know. Let you're just ready. Blood. You're just ready. I would love to see Yuri raise and then flat when Dominic four bets, just because of the spiciest level. It's a really small three bet. Which makes sense in position, but I feel like the deeper we are, we want to be going slightly bigger. Oh. This has me buzzing. I love getting to watch from our position, watching on high, just like seeing what's going to happen and just kind of knowing. Uh, oh, this makes me happy. No pressure. Do you think you you feel like Rickard's going to get rewarded for his aggression as well? Oh, what is oh, this okay. horseshit? Ah, oh. for shame. I mean, now we're we're left in those backdoor draws for Rickard. We got the backdoor diamonds, the backdoor wheel, the backdoor Broadway. Does he just? I mean, come on. Make me happy. Oh, God. Henry, what am I watching? 
I don't know, man. But Rickard is still up there in my books with the uh, the previous couple of hands. So right, I, I well, believe I believe he's going to navigate the next spot in the way that you want him to. Well, I bet you twenty bucks we see an all in and a call this. Week. <laughs> How about that one? I I'm going to pass on that. Yeah, that's a, you're a smart man. I, so, uh, I, I appreciate a good sweat. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when this... do you fly out to Barcelona? Uh, flying on the second. Oh, on the second. All right, all right. Yeah, flying on the second. Commentary doesn't start until the fifth, where we are going to cover the 1100 opener final day. So we'll be playing down to a winner. And then, uh, and yeah, then... The main event of warm up starts. So are you staying warm in the hostel? You and like 32 other guys are just going to be getting up in the morning, taking a quick shower in the communes, and then hiking on down to the local? Honestly, dude, put me in the university hostel the yeah. same way that, Je that Jerry is, is in Poker Hospital right now. Carl versus Big Blinds. 25 effective ace queen no says let's run it can't say i blame him just so happens to have run into top of range someone has to go home in 20th you know painful hmm. it's not, not gonna be this time around though um but yeah listen like it's, it's tourist season. We've all been locked up for a couple of years. True. I, I'm a single man. I'm sure there are some single, you know, 21 through 23, 24 year old women who are like, let's go to Barcelona for a week. Let's go and be stupid. We'll stay in a hostel. And you know, we've all seen, we've all seen the shows. We know what happens. Don't don't I, watch I, the movie Hostel while talking about hostels. It's a very different show. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> yeah. sometimes the suitcase gets stuck under the bunk bed. You know, like these things happen, boys and girls. We live it in the real world in 2022. But no, they they, they put me up in a put me up in a in a hotel about 20 minutes, 15 minutes from natural casino because the casino is down in in a small like province of Barcelona called um, Barcelona, it's down yeah. right near the beach. I mean, you, you know, but for the people yeah. that don't know, um, I've never seen the casino. So, so yeah, so we'll be uh, we'll be be walking to work, which is ideal. Uh, you get out, you get your, your vitamin D, get some steps in, get some cardio in before before being stuck in in a casino. For, for eight nine hours of commentary um but yeah i don't know who's going to be there i'm gonna have to put a post out and see see who's going to be in town because i'm looking for uh looking for a beach running partner someone to to join me in the am Come someone to chase you or for you to chase <laughs> no so it's someone <laughs> to keep me accountable mate not not to uh <laughs> no, not to chase me. Save, save for the chasing for another time. Uh, <laughs> poker bras in the chest, and I'll see you in Barca, Mr. Kilbane. I would not be your beach running partner, though. <laughs> Great Bluff saying, is this a dating show now? Question mark. It is not. It is not. But whenever you put Nate and I together in front of a microphone and the camera, it can get, uh, can get a bit weird. I mean, to be fair, we've uh, had microphones and cameras, and the cameras don't work. We just talk for hours on end, so we we don't worry about true. such things anymore. This is true. Talking of that, we need to uh, we need to do another podcast, mate. Round is this round two? Round three? I don't even know anymore. I'm in, obviously. Round yeah, round two. I have some busy days ahead with the World Series on the horizon, but uh, there's a oh, lot yeah, of people well, clamoring for some different stuff. I have to do a lot of writing between now and 
Wednesday. So I'll be doing commentary and my writing and try to balance it all out, but we don't worry about such things. Oh yeah, it won't, it won't be after until after uh, uh, the series for sure. So well, I until you and I get back from Barcelona. Until me and you get back from Barcelona. Yeah. Chasing people on the beach. Mate, you make you feel bad, man. <laughs> you never should. I need to give you a recommendation, though, for a great rooftop bar out there. I think I've shown you video before, but it's uh, on top of a museum, and it's overlooking the harbor, and it just has a, the mountain in the background with, like, a really nice music going off to the side. Uh, depending on what time it is, sometimes it's live, sometimes it's, you know, DJ over there, but it's just really good. And you got the sparkling champagne. It just, I mean, it's just beautiful overlooking the harbor with the yachts in the background. That's one of my favorite places in the world. So if you don't go there and take a random Argentinian woman with you, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah. All right. Alright. No pressure. No pressure. So, 19th left. So, 1077. Some bounties up there. So, this is a little bit larger than ones uh, I've done for the past couple weeks. I think there's 15,000 for first. $162 buy-in. So, what are we? Double that about three, 350 Yeah. three Yeah. 320 buy-in. And uh, at the back end of the series, it's main event weekend. It makes sense that, you know, we're playing for some some decent money. Decent chunk of change, I thought. Yeah, because that first place is always deceptive, too. Everyone says it's only, you know, 19.5. It's like, no, no, no. It's 19.5 plus bounties. And those bounties are significant. As for a large part of the, uh, the prize pool. Yeah, especially in these smaller size fields, you typically have a first place bounty that is similar to the first place price, if not bigger. Whereas in some of the uh, yeah, the larger the larger fields, the bounty typically be, seems to be between fifty to seventy five percent of first place. Trying to Don't think, ask me. Um why that works that way i assume it's because you're losing a lot of the bounty prize pool early on not early on but like it's more diluted is the word right. that i'm looking for yeah makes sense I, if i remember correctly the last couple of weeks it's been about 14 fifteen thousand for for first with that 160 dollar buy-in and ends up about twenty five thousand. uh okay. is what yeah. It comes out to so about ten thousand for first place bounties. Nice. For those ones. Yeah, seeing more and more of these these bounty tournaments now being introduced to live poker as well, especially the yeah. mystery bounty. That I actually feel like the mystery bounty was a live thing before it was an online thing. It was first so introduced like, by Win. They, yeah, they did, the um, yeah. Right after yeah. the pandemic, like right after everything reopened for pandemic time, I think. Literally. Yeah. They, uh, they start that up. Yeah. That was a ballsy move by them as well. Fair play. I mean, everyone loves it. You watch any of the social media coverage. Um, you know, you got people out there ripping. It's always a happy vibe in the room the mm -hmm. world series is going to have it this year as it's a thousand dollar buy-in and i think it's five hundred dollars up to a million dollars wow for a thousand dollar buy-in i mean yeah surely surely that is gonna smash every expectation that, that we have going into this I, I mean i'll put it to you this way i'm playing in it I, I don't play No Limit Hold'em, but like, mm. I mean, how do you not take a stab where it's like, I make day two, I can yeah. pull out a single ticket and all right, I, I've won more than yeah. I can win in any mixed tournament I've ever played in my life. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I think, I think that kind of innovation in poker is what's going to continue to keep the game growing, right? Like we saw the introduction of PKOs, what five, six years ago. I want to say like 2016, 2017. Um, and now, yeah, with this, this new, I, I, I think, um, I think especially given how much more focused the content creation seems to be around live poker compared to online. Whereas, you know, back in the heyday, 09, 2010, they were giving out online sponsorships left, right and center with the, uh, the full tilt poker promotions and sponsorships. Um, I think we're going to see more innovation, you know, from, from live casinos yeah. at live events to, to start introducing these, these new, these new ways to, you know, when there's so much choice out there, Nate, you know, how do you convince someone that has got 5k to burn to fly to your stop? What is going to make the difference outside of location and the obvious, you know, quality of hotel, food and venue. And yeah, the, these guys, they're on it. And, uh, and obviously the winner have, have been one of the best card rooms in the world for a long time now. I'm not surprised to see them come up with that one. I mean, they've been running some extremely high-end events out there, and I know the team behind the scenes for them, uh, you know, with the, the, the crew that runs it, um, Ryan is the poker room manager, Andy's second charge is ops, um, Ray is their tournament director, and they've just been, I mean, they've really just been crushing it, you know, they've got a lot of innovation and everyone that comes out there just always says you know it's it's well ran it's probably the best run tournament um series in vegas year after year so it's yeah. nice to see their innovation it's nice to see them gain the the recognition that they deserve um i mean you know we're looking at also right now the party poker online millions and they say let's do everything as a pko this time Let, let's change it up and i'm with you where i think yeah, you know, whether it's live or online, there has to be that continued, you know, what attracts people, what makes it interesting, mm. how do we kind of prevent people from solving every single situation? Instead, let's let's get back to just playing poker. Um, and real fast, this is insanely stacked table from what we've seen uh, at the other one. This is yeah, down to the final Ooh. two tables, kind of out of nowhere. It seems. And yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Wow, we're going to go four ways to a flop. So we're going to miss. Impossible for Michael to make a set. But yeah, it makes sense that the party approached it this way, in my opinion. Like, Rob Rob Young has very openly spoken uh, publicly on, you know, Twitter, poker forums, interviews, podcasts, whatever sources have been available to him that he will always cater to, to the recreationals in the industry. And he's always been a huge advocate for that. So to see him kind of put on a series or apply to put on a series where it's going to be more attractive to, to a lot of recs than it would be to, to pros, it makes sense. Yeah, I've never had the opportunity to talk with Rob, maybe one or two small Twitter interactions here and there, but he seems to be one of the people that's always asking questions, that's always poking and prodding and, and just kind of saying, why are things how they are? Do people like it how they are? Can we change and innovate? And seems to truly care about it. Um, you don't see a lot of operators doing that. I, I, when I say a lot, I really can't think of any other mainstream operators uh, that aren't catering to the high stakes community. Um, yeah. And the, the thing, that. the thing with yeah. him as well, not not to not to blow his own trumpet for him, but like he he genuinely wears his heart on his sleeve, and sometimes he gets it wrong, and he'll be the first to admit that. But like <laughs> just to give you an idea, we're at the restaurant. It's like day two of the Triton Series Madrid, and this guy is so it's me and James Dempsey having breakfast. Rob's having coffee, and he's like dealing with emails and stuff, or whatever. And this guy ends up starting to like talk with Rob. And Rob's already fired two bullets in the 30k short deck. 
this guy's already fired one. And they start talking, it turns out this guy's like a short deck professional. And Rob's like, can I buy some of your action? <laughs> and the guy turns around and goes, yeah, sure. And Rob's like, how much of the action? I say it was a 20k, I apologize. It's like, how much action do you want to buy? I want me to buy it. And the guy was like, well, I'll take 5k of my own action. So Rob was like, okay, so I'll take 15k of it, yeah? He's like, yeah, he's like, I'll tell you what, let's go to the reg desk. I'll buy you in for 20k and then you transfer me 5k. <laughs> so, so like we're, we're literally listening to like this, literally me and James just sat there, like knowing that we've got commentary coming up. And then Rob goes on to come third for like, you know, 300k or something ridiculous like that on his third bullet. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's like a big believer in karma. We were like joking with him afterwards, you know, butterfly effect, blah, blah, blah. Had you not bought that guy in, you wouldn't have come third for 300 odd K or whatever it was that he cashed for. And uh, talking of butterfly effect, maybe not butterfly effect in this hand, but very standard open on the button and a very... Well, actually, these these Jack 8, Jack 9 spots have been... Uh, I've been looking at some of these, like, it's not as clear cut, but versus button, obviously. It's uh, plays fine, but versus early position, actually, found that you meant to be like folding like jack Ooh. eight. Oh wow. Henry. <laughs> okay. Feels like you blocked the hand that you'd want to get to fold by three betting on the flop and Dominic with the flop trips. This is how we get to a final table. A few clubs dead at wow ace on the turn. Runs out clean. Because of the huge double now covers everyone at the table bar Simon. But has position on Simon as well. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Nate? That, that feels like we have the hand that sure, when we get called, we still, most for the most part, have decent equity. But at the same time, I feel like we're blocking the hands that we'd want Dominic to be check raising with, right? Right. I mean, from my perspective, it doesn't even look like a jack. It, but so uh, from Michael's perspective with the nut flush draw just jamming there, I think even then you're going to get all of the flush draws that you cover. So all those king high flush draws, queen high flush draws that check raise you, you're going to get them to fold. So you're folding out all of your opponent's worst hands and then you're getting called by all of his jacks. So, mm. I, I mean, from my perspective, that's kind of the opposite of what you want to do with your, your, your hand range. You instead want to get called by all the hands that you dominate and want to get better hands to fold. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, maybe he was just saying, let's let's run it. Let the cards fall where they may. Uh, all right. Well, action is thick and fast. 14 left, 1,334 locked up plus bounties. And uh, yeah, still a long old way to go. I feel like they've been dropping like flies for the better part of an hour, hour and a half. Well, this table alone has many stacks over 100 big blinds. So I think we have a long way to go, narrowing it down from 14 to that final table, Henry. I believe so, my man. And when we come back from break in just five minutes time, Nathan Gamble and myself will be calling the action all the way down to the final table here in event number 65. See you guys shortly. friends or family in the upcoming main event that aren't on the feature table that you want to sweat yeah um <clears throat> updates of course will follow along with the stream here so you won't uh, 
You won't inadvertently give yourself any spoilers, guys, so you can safely check that site, especially uh, if you want to see another table. Although, like I say, we're not far from a farm table, so you need not panic. Macaulay popping it up. Mantis, Ace Queen. Going for the three bet. <laughs> As I just said there, I mean, this is a, this is a scary one. You release queen to three, but this man who's just flat ace jack from the small. Yeah, three bet fold. Entirely possible. Seems unlikely though. Actually, no. three bet fold seems fine. Ah, uh, just more excuses, Josh. Come on, guys. We've been we've been telling you about minions in North Cyprus that's for true. weeks. Yeah, that, that's that's actually a great point. And there's plenty of time to still get here. Uh, play these fantastic events in some fantastic setting. Oh, we're reaching. Oh, looks like falling chips, Henry. Off to the flop we go. Well, a nice high board. GGS for the Frenchman. SPR less than one. Yeah, this one far from run though, ace 10 of hearts, plenty of potential, even up against ace queen. Queen jack 4 1 heart, gut shot for Makalu with backdoor hearts. Mantis though, with, well, top, top Henry. It's nice when you uh, you 3 bet ace queen off, you get called, you got, as you say, yeah. S pro of 1, and you do flop top, top. Better that you can hope for. You just go like. Really, yeah, like really small, like B20% or something. B25. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, it's, it's nice to see that kind of stuff, Henry. We're seeing the, the shaking hands, the, the nerves. The adrenaline is pumping through his body. And Ooh. the check call from Maglu now <laughs> sees him turn from that flush drop. May he do something here? Is he? Potentially going for the stop and go. 2.2 and 3.9, or does he just have to try and get these 10 to show down? Still beats. It's only a nonsense, Henry. But how much nonsense does our opponent have? And there we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, check, checking and facing an all in is a different measure, but yeah. he may have hoped to have seen a check back. It was not a reasonable scenario. It's like ace five of diamonds. Or whatever. Like right. you, you never get there, by the way, in this spot. Yeah, it's getting a huge price. Fold down, maybe see more cards. Yeah, Mantas is trying to look as calm as possible. I, I mean, I guess this is like the hand that he doesn't want to see. It's just like hoping he's up against like King Queen or Ace Jack. Right. <laughs> like, I, I think ace, yeah. I think it would be more more of a sweat if you get showed the Ace Ten of Hearts here. Yeah. yeah it's a Queen would be cool. Maybe a hand like yeah, King Jack suited here. Tanking it up. Yeah, certainly wouldn't be happy to see Ace Ten of Hearts if called. Would rather take the pot now, I would imagine. Playing pretty much correct chip odds. One of the, the face masks got to help a little bit, Henry. If you're feeling a bit nervous, you know there. For for how for how long was the battle going? Here we go. Maclou does fold. For how long was the battle going? We. Arguing against face coverings, arguing against scarves. There was a huge debate uh, spilled into early 2020, and now here we go. You guys have all got to wear face coverings. Yes. Who would have thought it? Someone give Vogel sign a call. <laughs> Welcome back to Party Poker TV, ladies and gentlemen. Henry Kilbane alongside Nathan Gamble calling the action for you guys here in the online KO series event number 65 we are deep into the seven max weekend up down to the final two tables to be precise playing for the better part of 40,000 USD Nate how's your break my man you go you go for a little a little walk see what, what how does what does a break look like in the, the life of Nathan Gamble the five minute break Oh, the five minute it goes fast as you are uh, well accustomed to. You just kind of reach my head over the stairwell, 
holler down to a wife, have a nice conversation about how she took over my headphones and, you know, <laughs> you know an, an awkward stop to uh, commentary today and chat on that for a bit and then refill the coffee mug and get back to it. There we go, my man. I feel like for years, I just kept making the same old mistakes when it came to the five minute breaks. Like I'd be, I'd be hungry or I'd have no time to prepare coffee or tea. And now, you know, I'll go shopping and I'll look for like these small snacks that I can just absolutely devour, but are going to keep me really, you know, full. So like today I went and just picked up these like little packs of like different types of nuts, dried fruits, dried apricot, uh, these like little salad bowls and stuff, you know, it takes five minutes and you're good to go. Yeah, I literally like go downstairs before we start. I bring up all the water. I mean, I think I have six or seven waters up here. <laughs> I know we're in this for, I mean, you're in this for five or six hours. You got to stay hydrated. We're talking most of the time. So you got to yeah. lubricate your, your vocal cords. So I literally bring up all the water. I make sure everything's comfy. If I really need something at the next break, I'm going to be like, you know, text the wife and be like, hey, could you grab me a coffee or something? You know, it's, it's, you learn over time. I've had uh, quite a few streams, primarily by your side, to perfect this. We've made mistakes. We've made mistakes. Oh, yeah. We learn from them. I mean, for the most part, during like the Galfon challenge, it would just be like, Nate, I can't take it. Can you come <laughs> with me for 15 minutes whilst I step out the booth and grab some food or something, you know? But well, there was definitely a couple of days where we had no idea how long it was going to last. And we're like, all right, exactly. Like the three hour call it quits because someone's absolutely broke? Or is it going yeah. to be 92 hours because they have money and they're raring to go? Yeah. Yeah. Talking of the Galfon challenge, by the way, Charles Corner, mate, take a bow. I mean, just loses a mil to Galfon then. Just doesn't stay down long, you know, does he? He's just been on absolute tear in the poker world the last 18 months, pretty much since since the match concluded. I feel like he's won absolutely everything. Bracelet, WPT trophy, Poker Go series events. Like he's been absolutely killing him out of fair play. Uh, yeah, I think it's been almost exactly since that heads up match ended that he has just been blowing out the water. Mm. Made the final two tables, I think, on World Series May event. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to chances, victories in a second as we have an interesting situation developing here off of 40 big blinds. Yeah, really. Grim spot to three bet folder had the strongest nines, although it does feel like you're never inducing like sevens, sixes, and eights. It does get it in. Both flush draws live. No nines dead. Ooh, no, not like this. Not like this, dealer. How about that, boys and girls? Nine of clubs on the flop to send Dennis to the rail in 12th. I mean, I'm sure you've had. Are made. Yeah, I'm sure. I say, I'm sure you've had your fair share of brutal bust outs deep in tournaments for high equity spots, but that one hurts, you know. The old four to one advantage going in and getting two out of. I think the one that sticks with me to this day for an online tournament was, I mean, it's a very simple Queens versus Ace King at the final table of the full tilt $750,000 guarantee. The, the nuance to it, the little subtlety though, was we were first and second in chips. I mean, we had the rest of the table far covered. Whoever won it had something like 50% of the chips in play. And yeah, yeah I bust in seventh for 16,000-ish. First place is over 180,000. And I was still in college at that point. I mean, I was first year of college, I want to say. So it sticks with me to this day, even though it's only, you know, it's ace king versus queens, you know, not that big a deal. And it isn't as far as equity, but as far as trajectories of life, my, my life would definitely be uh, 
just a little bit different you know yeah yeah definitely especially having like the liquid and and whatnot kind of like early on in her career but at the same time you know because it could have been the the adversity and the swings and the ups and downs that got you to where you are today whereas if you had like that big score maybe you just become a complete douchebag by a lambo and you know you're busto inside three years so absolutely i uh, mean to be to be absolutely fair with you I probably wouldn't have continued in college. Uh, you know, now yeah. I, you know, I graduated, I got a degree, which then led me to be in the military. And then, yeah, I met my wife and, you know, so it's like butterfly effect. So yes, yeah. who knows? Um, yeah, exactly. Can I, can I give you a couple stats on Mr. Corneth? Just looking at this because this yeah, is a scene. Okay. When was, was the Galifon challenge? Like when did he finish that? Uh, we now. wrapped that up beginning of 2021, so bang on okay. like a year and a half ago. All right, that that was kind of what was in my head. So, uh, chance before that, I mean, he had some success in the previous year. He won a Poker Masters. He took second at a WSOP online event, but you know didn't really do much. I mean, we're talking 100 places, 200, 300. It was just really eh, stagnant, and then. In June of last year, first place at an MSPT for 400,000. First place at Win Classic for 350,000. Uh, some 10th places here and there. First place at a World Series. He won another bracelet, I think his third bracelet. Then he has uh, 16th in the World Series of Poker main event. Then he has two first places back to back at the Poker Do Go Tour. Um, you know, several seconds and first, seconds and first. He has a third place at WPT followed up by his next being this last one, first place yeah. at the WPT. I mean, yeah. Uh, since that wrapped up, he's up well over two million dollars easily, two two and a half million dollars since the Galphon Challenge draft. It's man's unstoppable on the tournament scene um, when he gets down to it. Hundred percent, man. You talk of. Um talk of like mindset and the, and the elite mindset needed to to thrive at the top in poker it's, it's very clear why uh, people like chance do as well as they do because the guy's clearly got a gorilla mindset to just like especially a match that was as publicly displayed as that you know where you you battle for the better part of four months you play close to 25k hands throw in the towel lose seven figs to just bounce back off the the back of that it's uh it's impressive stuff you just dropped a little bit of alpha in the chat for those who picked up on it henry gorilla mindset which i believe was on the podcast between you and mr galifon if i'm not mistaken the book uh y'all were talking about uh having a gorilla mindset in poker oh, yeah. on yeah. one of the podcasts yeah, I think it, I mean, it could have been either of my, my guests, to be fair with you. That's fair. Um, but yeah, uh, Gorilla Mindset was uh, a book by um, Mike. I'm going to have to Google, I think it's Mike Cernovich. Google's allowed here. Yeah, Mike Cernovich who is someone that was a book that I read pretty early on. And then, yeah, I mean, it just, it just, it's just applies to so many of the people in poker, that, that gorilla mindset, especially the elite. Or mo well, yeah, exclusively, exclusively the elite and a lot of the, the young up and coming players seem to have figured a lot of that stuff out pretty early on in their careers as well. I honestly think there are, I think there are better, I think there are better books out there on the subject, personally. Um, yeah, I think there are better books out there on the subject, but it's still, it's still solid. 
that's fair enough. I don't read a whole lot of those type of uh, books in general. Yeah. But... That's the thing with these like self-help and like mindset type books is that there's just so much. It's like, how do you filter out the noise? Um, and, and now for the better part of like the last six months, most of the books that I've been reading come highly recommended from people like Naval Ravikant and some some of like the great thinkers within the poker community who I'll just hit up and I'll be like, hey man, uh, what are you reading at the moment? Like I'll, I'll message Galphon and just be like, hey Phil, are you reading anything at the moment? And then I'll just like basically just mimic or copy anything that they're reading. That's fair. That's, I, I think that's a good way of doing it. Um, a lot of the way I filter out noise in most communities is very simply recognize that I only have a limited amount of time to dedicate to so many endeavors in life. And so I'll just look at who the smartest people I either personally know or I can identify with in that particular community. I just kind of mm. attach myself to you know, having those conversations with them, following them on Twitter, you know, watching their videos, something along those lines where it's like, they're some of the smartest minds I know in the industry, let them do the research and then, you know, kind of just free up my time within that capacity. If it's something I want to, to do more on and look more in depth into, I can, but let them kind of guide me towards the right resources. Mm. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear you say that. That's, that's a bit of a life alpha as well. It's something I, I caught myself doing um, in Madrid at the Triton series was I realized that for the entire 12 days I was there, I hardly spoke a word, man. I was just listening and just like yeah. soaking shit up. Like, like me, Mike Haxton, Timothy Adams, uh, Jeremy Asmus, you know, some other crushes at a table. I didn't say a single word, mate, other than like, how's your day going, guys? But outside of that, whenever they were talking poker, whenever they were talking life, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and try and soak up as much of this shit as possible because I never know when, you know, this opportunity is going to present itself again to, to be around these types of people. Yeah, so I, I respect that approach, mate. That makes a lot of sense. And it's also pretty humbling as well when, yeah. when you can identify that fact where you're just like, hey, maybe this is a spot for me to just learn a thing or two. You don't always have to be, you know, the loudest, the yeah, you know, the, the person that's like comes across as the most intelligent or whatever it is. Sometimes you can just just admit that you're not the, the brightest bulb in the room and you're okay with that when you're around a bunch of brushes. Yeah, I think it oh okay. We'll get back to this life alpha, thinking about um, those situations in life. But fun, fun spot here. Ace Queen limping, trying to set the trap. And Yuri um, here with the baby deuce. All this. Uh, I mean, it's it's like Lonis wants to get value down the road from a queen. But at some point, maybe he realizes my hand that continues at certain stages is... is Deuce, he blocks it. Not flush draw. It's a uh, has potential. Never mind. It's, it's just going to be blood. Yeah, Fifteen million out there. I want his first check raise call, deciding to just pop control on the turn. Aware of what Nathan just alluded to, that you know a lot of the hands that are going to continue are going to be either weaker queen x or wow. <laughs> weaker queen x and we just have no bro no, I, I like the to... lead here because if yuri has a queen he would be forced to hold oh, that's a beautiful 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 hold from yuri what the fuck what just happened in this entire hand savage that I would love to do a breakdown of that hand. On get get the gentleman you were just talking about a second ago. Get Ike in here. Get Jeremy Osmus uh, and that. Oh, wow. I I don't know about that fold on the river for 
the 10 million. It's like what? What hands? Check raise flop. Check call turn. And lead river. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Right. Uh, um, Yuri, give yourself a pat on the back, mate. I hope he's watching the stream because that's one of those ones where you just kind of clip it and you send it in the group chat and you're like, boys, don't mess with me for the next week or so, you know. He like loses, he's and, and he should feel amazing about losing there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we're going to get into some interesting spots here with Igor being so short. I mean, Anton's just going to be ripping on him a whole bunch from the small blind if it gets bolted around. You know, this is a clear-cut contender for that. Um, but I think we have some potential to see some interesting hands develop on the final table bubble, Henry. Yeah, for sure. I, I want to see, I mean, most of these, these chaps, I assume have done their due diligence in the form of shark scope pendant mob, this being a real name tournament. You can kind of make assumptions based off of that information. Uh, not ironclad information, obviously, but when you are playing for 40k in these big series where there are a ton of, you know, satellites that people can qualify for these larger online buy-ins for, you know, very small amounts of money, you can uh, you can start leaning on that, on that inexperience and money pressure, and you can kind of figure out who's going to be playing more money scared and who's going to be taking uh, the correct approach to these bubbles. Yeah, it's an interesting one too. We see some dynamics here where Igor has a jack seven, should probably be shoving that. However, he has the bounty, so he knows he's getting called almost 100% of the time. And it, it really kind of, you can wait for a slightly better spot because you know you're always getting called when you're this short. I, I like these more than the plain Jane vanilla no limit hold'em tournaments personally, because you get into this kind of dicey dynamics of um, understanding. It's it's a little bit more than just regular studyable ICM and and card mechanics. Do you ever scroll through Twitter and just realize? how much of an absolute pleb you are compared to some of these big <laughs> brains out there. I I'm just... Ike? <laughs> I, I mean, when we're talking poker players, Ike and yeah. Mike McDonald are the two that will come on occasionally on my, my timeline and yeah. just really make me stop and say, well, okay, I don't understand much in this world. Yeah, I'm just... Just, you know, Elon Musk, Lex Fridman, just having a conversation about the uh, the heat death of the universe. And, you know, when thinking about deep time, what is more astounding is to think about how much time is ahead, you know. It's like, okay, boys, yeah, it's just casual conversation between two friends, right? Uh, open forum, we need to just have a conversation. I feel like that's not happening in my world now. Nah. <laughs> Let, let's get I mean, together I, when you're in Vegas, I'm in Barcelona, yeah, it. wherever it is, and talk about the depths of time continuum. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lex is just like, oh yeah, you know, heat death of the universe is just another engineering problem. Sure. Why not? I definitely have those thoughts from time to time from the perspective of you know, there, there's stuff wrong in this world and mm. it clearly needs fixing, whether you look at, you know, a food crisis, a global warming, a, you know, whatever it is, whatever you believe a crisis is that's affecting the world, there's a multitude of them. And at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but there's also much smarter people that are working on those fields. So we'll pass that 
over to them and, and let them handle it. Mm. And I think that's the, the correct approach. As long as you're mindful yeah, as to what you provide to society and the value that you're bringing and what you can do. Um, I was listening to a podcast recently, uh, the diaries of a CEO by Stephen Barlow, and he was talking exactly about that. You know, it's like, if you consume yourself with worrying about uh, you know, oil pollution, sea pollution, global warming, you know, all you're going to do is get depressed and worry yourself too much because, you know, you can't control any of that unless that's like your area of expertise. But as long as you're being mindful, you know, when you are throwing out the trash and you're watching your water and electric consumption and all of those things, you're doing your part. And then you're doing things in other ways to provide society. I think that's that's the best best way to approach it. I, I from, tend to from a mental, yeah. mental health point of view. Anyway. Um, real fast, this is an interesting hand. Yuri limped in and Anton raised. So Anton has the betting lead here on an ace king high flop, which definitely should be favoring his range. Yuri. Um, just going to raise up on flop. So I think that's going to shut down a lot of um, the depth of this hand. And it does. Um, so I've read before, and I kind of tend to agree with this philosophy on it, is that the best thing that you can do for a contribution to society is be a happy person, is like find true mm. happiness within who you are uh, as that will provide more value to the universe, to the people, to, to earth um, than almost anything else you can do because, you know, the vast majority of worldwide problems are not going to be resolved by the 99 percentile. It's going to be resolved by the, um, you know, one or two people that are specialized in those fields. So, mm. you know, most people's contribution is, oh, I'm working in an office and I'm manufacturing something. It's like, okay, cool, you're contributing through that job, but where are you contributing? So the real contribution comes in play from providing happiness, which falls then into other people being happy and finding more fulfillment within themselves, um, which I feel like for us personally as poker players is a significant thing. I mean, we kind of our role within the society at this point is providing entertainment and providing happiness for other people. And we'll get back to that in a second with this fun little tens, king, queen, ace, nine, happiness triangle. Yeah, so interestingly, Oscar not doing the jamming when Igor reopened the action, which has kind of looked like, looked like what he was going to do by giving Igor a step if you will and you're already just picking up on that and saying hey pal if you're not going to take it i'm going to take it and well sends this man to the showers in the form of a rivet flush then there were 10. yeah and i really like that note you you hear a lot of people uh a lot of like some of the you know, greatest minds in the world but when it does come to you know, the final moments, most of them, uh, the advice that they, they leave, leave the world with is, you know, just try and be kinder. It's, it's literally that simple, right? Like, just try and be a kinder human. It's one of the fundamental reasons that you and I both clicked from uh, the onset of doing commentary was I just put out there, I said, hey, I'm interested in doing streaming, any advice? And you were one of the people that reached out and just gave me lots of unsolicited advice. Um, you know, you've done lots of commentary and then it just started a repertoire with us of, you know, trying to make sure at any given time, we're always, you know, there if the other one needed help. Uh, and yeah, you know, there's no tit for tat. There's no point system. It's just a very genuine uh, appreciation for one another and genuine appreciation to try to make sure the other one has all the resources and is able to do as well as possible. And so I think mm. that's kind of a basis of our relationship that you know, has carried over um, through the beginning stages into whatever hell hole we find ourselves in now. <laughs> whatever hell. <laughs>
Yeah. No, you're not wrong. No, it's, uh, yeah. Especially though for us, I mean, we play poker for a living, we commentate poker for a living. Uh, so to me, it's like we're within the entertainment industry of life. And, you know, whether that's providing people at the table joy, because they should, the vast majority of people that play poker should be doing it for fun. So in whatever context it is, uh, I think that that's our main give back to this world is ensuring people are happy. Yeah. The small amount of time we have with them. It's definitely a very positive way to look at it in terms of what you can bring to the table from an entertainment point of view as well. Putting smiles on people's face and whatnot. We got four players at this table, by the way, which leads me to believe that we're on the... Okay, all right. <laughs> Stand corrected. Two yeah, tables of five. Um, I think this is a, a really fun one to watch. I don't know what's happening at the other table. I know it's much more stacked over there. But I just appreciate this one from the fact that we have Anton Wig. He's a name player. He, he's in there time after time after time. And he's a short stack, so it probably won't be too exciting, but we'll see him make a lot more folds than most people would and, and kind of get a idea of exactly how you're supposed to play on this stack depth at the stage of the tournament. Anas with the flat in position. Not intense suited. Action flop. I say action flop, they're still insanely deep here. Well, wow, the checking through on the flop also coming out with a close to bot size bet with his open ender. Not going to fold out top pair and now kind of finds himself up the creek without a paddle. Just for the old, what's this? 20% yes. on the river? Yeah? Yeah. I, I guess he's just trying to fold out like ace three, ace four, uh, which you could argue don't call for that size in the turn, even though they do turn a gun shot. I was going to argue that. But yeah, I guess just trying to fold out some of the flush draws that have us dominated by some of the broadways and ace x of spades. With the maybe yeah. 10 jacks, queen tens, queen jack type of holdings that had overcards, gut shots. Um, is this just going to be a snap fist pump from Anton into the middle off of 20 days? <laughs> I feel like it, especially against Uranus, going to be opening insanely wide, given the, the dynamic here. Um, just so happens to be running into top of range. A ten-handed play. Ten-handed divided by two tables. I'll do it. Sixty-nine Plus. million. Wait, six nine. Oh man, six nine four hundred. Oh, 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 what, what is going on with this run out? King high flop, ace on the ace of clubs on the turn, giving Anton the the resuck resuck opportunity. Did not work. You had us up to over two hundred million, which I believe is good for over twenty percent of the chips in play. It says just shy of one billion out there. All right. it, it tripped me up the first couple times uh, when I was doing the commentary for the final table because I wanted to look at it and be like, he has 200,000, he has 52,000. And I'm like, no, no, he has 200 million. He has a quarter of a billion chips. He, yeah, it, it took a second to, to rationalize Guilty. in my head. Guilty. Um, have you heard of Aldous Huxley, by the way? Alex Hutsey, no. Aldous. Al Aldous Huxley. 
Let's see. Not off the top of my head. Oh. Pops up very quickly. So, before having his wife inject him with 500, uh, 400 mic micrograms of LSD on his deathbed, Huxley hmm. said, it's a bit embarrassing to have been concerned with the human problem all one's life and find at the end that one has no more to offer by way of advice than try to be a little kinder. It was like a, wow. a banger. I'll send you. I'll send you his, uh, his interview in full from 1958, just to give you an idea of how ahead of his time this guy was. I mean, if he's having his wife inject 300 micro doses of LSD, however, it seems like he. I mean, if you're already on your deathbed and you're there in the hospital and you're just like, well, I have not too much longer. I feel like that's a fun way to uh, see the world on out. Yeah. Uh, real, real fast. I neglected him earlier except to say hello in chat, but cooking it. Welcome on in. Thanks for joining us. Myself and Mr. Kilbane are always happy to see you. Our long term followers from the Galfon Challenge till now. It's been a while. It's been a minute since we, uh, we started out. Eight, three offsuit. So nine players left right now, Henry. Ninth is taking home 2,195 plus those bounties. So we're actually getting to a point where there's uh, real pay jumps to consider for some of these players, especially if they got in on one of the satellites that Party Poker has running all the time. I mean, you could be in this for a penny and now, you know, just the payout is going to be additional seven, eight hundred dollars between ninth and eighth much less the bounties on top of it. So when you're looking at the fact that you could be in here for a penny on, on a satellite, we're starting to get into some real uh, dynamics for, for some of these players. Yeah, it's one of the things that I've always really enjoyed about doing commentary for these online party poker series has just been the stories that we all enjoy hearing, regardless of whether you know, you're a top elite pro or you're recreational that only dabbles occasionally it's that you know rags to riches uh type of story where we just have so many people qualify into these larger buy-in events for as nate was alluding to you know sub one dollar and uh yeah you get the occasional unicorn grind it out i I definitely wish I personally was slightly older or had been around, um, you know, during the, the poker boom when we had this stuff available to us in America. I could have taken, you know, played a satellite and got into, you know, the party poker event out in Barcelona, an EPT, whatever it was, wherever it was offered. I, I think that would have been such a cool thing to do in your early 20s. Like, hey, mom, I'm not actually going to go back to school this year uh, i'm going to be hanging at barcelona and playing the party pokers barcelona million event like load it two euro into my account and here we go yeah yeah there's there's loads of ways man i think one of one of the biggest things that i feel like i've learned and which i wish i'd learned a lot earlier was to be more aggressive with that kind of shot taking. I feel like the opportunities were there to try and satellite into bigger events, but it was like, no, there's no point doing that because if you do qualify, you're going to be up against a bunch of crushes. You're better off sticking to your $5.50 sit and goes that you kind of feel like you have an edge over whatever it was. Um, but then like listening to like Galfond and whatnot and hearing back to the way they approached it, they just seemed to approach it from a very different, different way, right? Like, they were just like, well, I want to be up there with those guys. The only way I'm going to get up there with those guys is by playing against them and shot taking against them. So it's better do it now than later. You know, there's, there's no point in waiting for the perfect time when, you know, the perfect time may never present itself. I feel like I'm ready. I'm just going to jump in and see what happens. I think it took a lot of their game to the next level and just really increase their skill set 
when, okay, I'm playing this hundred dollar events, whatever it is at my local casino. And now I've won my way into a $5,000 event. Uh, you know, they have the skills that were rougher and unpolished, but they're clearly still there being developed. Mm. And now they're playing against at that time, the world's elite and honing it even more, even faster. It's yeah. I think that really is what helped draw them up to the next level quicker. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I mean, one of my my uh, favorite stories is like Galfon saying the first time he ever played 300, 600, the only person playing at the time that he had decided that he was ready to play was Phil Ivey. And he sits down in third hand against Phil Ivey playing the biggest game of his life. He gets set on the set for an entire stack, you know, and just gets smacked back down to 10, 20 where he belongs. So Ivey's just like, Sit down, Galfon. You're not ready yet, kid. You know? <laughs> but you, like, we laugh at it, you know, we laugh at it now, and obviously it is something that we can take, take joy out of, but there's so many lessons in that as well. You know, it's like the tenacity and the stuff that you learn from taking those shots at an earlier age prepare you for the bigger challenges ahead later on in life. Someone, uh, Galfon talked a lot about that. Uh, Negranu is another one that's talked extensively about that and you know taking those shots and while it may reduce your uh win rate in the short term because you're going to hit more variants moving up long term is going to open your ceilings wider and allow you to to move up faster and to move up at all which yeah will increase those win rates uh over time yeah yeah i mean it just sounds like life in general right you, you stay in your little bubble and your comfort zone then uh, how, how are you ever going to really see what you're capable of if you're always running away from the growth areas of life yeah absolutely and real fast interesting one here from Lonus checking this you know, very naked ace two three but doogie flop and uh does go for a delayed C bet. Yuri's gonna pick up a nice size pot here unless Lonus really goes all out. But what do you think about this one from Yuri? Just kind of playing pot control, doesn't want to let the big sack bully him on the bubble instead playing it safe. Yeah, I mean, bang on the river opens up the door to be put in the absolute blender obviously but still feel like we need to be trying to get some value there from top pair it's very decent kicker especially blind versus blind um, but i can always always side with the more cautious approach that people take on these final table bubbles yeah i don't i don't hate the the check back for those reasons um yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting to look at growth perspectives in the world. It, everything that you do, I know, uh, as we just went down to Mexico, we did an all-inclusive resort. And, you know, it's nice. It's relaxing. I can see why people do it. But I also overheard couples saying that they're already planning for next year. And this is their 10th time coming to the same resort and how they yeah. maybe want to go off to a different one. And just... You know, it's like Tina and I are like, yeah, maybe we do a resort like this once every, you know, three, five years of, you know, that we travel. But the rest of the time, we want that nitty gritty experience. We want to go off to Madrid. We want to, you know, just fly into to Scotland and go backpacking the mountain. You know, not, okay, everything's covered. We don't have to think. We don't have to plan anything. It's like, no, no, no. We want to experience the culture. We want to go talk with people. We want to hang out in a pub and, you know, go and, and get lost amongst the sheep of Scotland. Experience what the, the actual people and the culture has to offer versus, mm. you know, a resort. It's everything's brought to you and here's your food and here's your drinks. And, you know, it's nice. It's relaxing, but it's not actually seeing a country in any stretch of imagination. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I learned that one the hard way myself as well. 
yeah, visiting like loads of places because of poker and then after leaving you know people would be like oh so how was your trip and you quickly realize that well i spent 95 percent of the time in the casino so i can't yeah. actually tell you you know what barcelona was like or what madrid was like or but yeah there's something that i've really been been changing uh recently it's really tight hold from Oscar, by the way. How yeah. small. Yeah, I was more expecting a, a jam from Oscar and uh, yeah, a call off from Michael there. Um, yeah, very tight hold. Did you happen to get out this time around in Madrid, see a little bit more of the city than the casino? I know you were locked up doing commentary for quite some time, and you obviously had access to... Um, yeah, really good commentators, amazing poker players. So you had access to a lot of uh, knowledge that maybe you don't want to step away from in that specific instance. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest with you, that, that that's exactly what this trip was. It was like, hey, let's get some face time in, you know, let's actually be around just in case uh, an opportunity to have a 30 minute conversation, a 20 minute conversation arises. Um, but yeah, for, I mean, I was, I was out running, um, a few evenings after, you know, I stood in the booth and I, I'm running like anywhere between five and eight kilometers. So you get a pretty yeah. decent distance from like the hotel, discover some pretty cool parks, um, in and around central Madrid, but unfortunately I didn't get to do any museums, which is, uh. I know, I feel like I need to start like setting this like list of one museum per location when I'm uh, when I'm there. When I, when I like I travel to these places. Yeah. We um when we went to Barcelona um this last time around, there's me and Tina, and we walked around the city all day. We you know saw all these sights and sounds just on our own. We spent six hours walking and we had a walking tour set up for that night that we forgot about and we literally were like oh should we skip it should we bother going we we went on it and it was completely transformative we actually walked 95 percent of the exact same areas that we'd walked earlier in the day but we got the history of it we got the why we got mm. what happened and you know it went from us walking past these spots and being like oh look at that cafe and the cool that's a nice little shop maybe we should buy some chocolate too you know, 170 years ago when there was the Revolutionary War of Spain and this was happening and that's what those pockmarks on, on the building was where they shot the, you know, revolutionaries and you're just like, like, it, it opens your eyes so much. Um, yeah. So I think some sort of museum walking tour, something with someone from the area is uh, very impactful. That's actually a great show. I never thought of of doing that. that that actually sounds like my cup of tea as well uh oh. we found real fast a very interesting hand as lonis float it the flop picks up the flusher on the turn gets there on the river and oscar has an ace of diamonds to boot and oscar with ace high Ace of Diamonds, I mean, it feels like a... Yeah, I mean, he folded, but... I feel, I mean, we saw the Ace Deuce of Diamonds being folded in the small blind earlier. I think Oscar is definitely trying to make it. We're down to eight players real fast. Mm -hmm. So we are on that precipice. Yeah, I agree. I definitely feel like he's passed on a couple of spots. Double saying if you're looking to get lost amongst sheep, New Zealand is the place for you. Honestly, man, the reason I'm deliberately putting off New Zealand and Australia is because I have a feeling that it could be a place I'd want to settle down in. In terms of just culture, English-speaking country, uh, 
just like environment in terms of you know beaches and hikes and mountains and just from what I've heard, New Zealand especially um, packs a lot of punch in terms of best place to one of one of the best places to live in the world. And yeah, I'm, I'm still not ready to settle down yet. And I'm, I'm kind of worried that if, if I find if I go to a place like that where I'm just like, whoa, okay, that I'll uh, <laughs> I'll do something stupid and like move to New Zealand or some shit. New Zealand does have one of the three cities I've considered moving to outside the United States. So mm. I mean, we, we spent a week or so in New Zealand, week or two in New Zealand. Yeah, it's it's definitely you're in jeopardy of wanting to move there um, if it fits you know, your lifestyle, what you're after, and what you desire. It's beautiful country uh, all the way through and through. Yeah, yeah, I've also also heard that's the case. What's the best best cities? I feel like this is a flop. Lowness will be putting some pressure on. No, just gets away. Okay. Uh, Great Bluff is saying they take poker trips and non-poker trips, and you know, have to be clear with the family up front to know which is which and how to designate and spend that time. And I, I'd say it's definitely fair. Um, we're going to have an all-in that call here, by the way. Um, I've I've talked with my wife about that before, and you know, when Aussie Millions was happening, hopefully it comes back. You know, we've talked about next time she goes with me. Um, and I was like, well, probably I go for a week and a half by myself and you show up for the last three days of poker. And then we do another week or so of, uh, you know, kind of us time and traveling together because I wouldn't want her to be stuck in the, the casino the entire time as it'd be quite boring. Yeah, of course. And here we go. Gonna be a chop, decent amount of time. Well, okay then, boys and girls, maybe not this time round. The row suck, re suck, in the form of the eight of hearts on the turn, and I believe we have ourselves a final table. As we have it, what, we were at two tables of four? Right, so now we have the final seven, so it should be combining uh, after this hand plays out, would be my yeah. guess. That would be, I think, once the button gets to Michael, then we'll have our final table set. I see, yeah, I see, then and then and a hum. Apologize for a name butchering. Ask me why we haven't joined up for a combined final table. We had eight players, it's a seven-handed weekender, so we were waiting for seven for the final table, which with that elimination will be down to the final seven. So it should be just a hand or two and we will be there. Johannes really loving play from the final three tables down to the final table just away. Do you think nice those numbers in the bottom left were off Henry and we were at nine previously and now we're at eight on the bubble? Uh, no, I think once the, the button is moved to, to Michael that the rest of the table will join. It's just the way the um, the way that the software software works. Okay. As far as I'm aware. But you could be right. Yeah, maybe we are down to final right now. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with all the uh, different online softwares and how they combine for the final table. So we'll see shortly if it was all a ruse. Yeah, actually, just um, looking at the real time lobby now, Oscar, Oscar was out in night. Okay. So do a point. Yes, yeah, you, you bang on, Mr. Gamble. Uh, I'm making uh, up as we go along. Aren't we all? 
Mate, I don't know what to trust when it comes to these lists, though, because the first list that I've opened says that the best place to live to live in in the world is London, and I just immediately closed down the tab. <laughs> I've reported the page for, for propaganda and misinformation. That's I mean, fair. that's like saying that's like saying New York is the best place in the world to live. I've looked at some of those lists before of like the top cities in the United States and it's exasperating to, to look at some of them. Yeah. It's that same top spot in the world. I look at I'm like, just a hard no, just absolutely not. Um, this is a spot I would have liked for Yuri to actually bomb the turn with his mega draw and, and really go for like, you know, 1.2, 1.5 pot on the turn. I know there's a, the consideration if you get check raise jammed on, then uh, you have to give up the, the hand and it's a tremendous amount of equity. But uh, I was talking about that with Tyler, who will be joining us at the final table uh, last week. And he was saying that it really puts a lot of people into a spot where they're forced to fold and the vast majority of jams are their sets. Um, so you kind of know exactly where you're at and you get to take down a lot more pots. Yeah, especially against the small blind range, right? Yeah, absolutely. I see Tyler in the chat said, hey guys, I'm going to join for the final table. Jokes on you, Tyler. <laughs> we just got you to come here to be an extra viewer on the channel by telling you that you'd be joining the comment there. For those of y'all in the chat other than Tyler wondering who Tyler is, it's uh, Mr. Tyler Patterson who's been here for the last few streams on commentary. If Tyler's wondering who Tyler is, then it's a whole different issue of life. Uh, one of y'all out there. Spicy. Stop. What's up? Spicy tank down, by the way. What if it's a five of clubs, Henry? Yeah, I mean, you just want to get to this final table sooner rather than later, man. Asking for five clubs. I just want to witness it. That's all I'm after. Um, ben Hamann saying that South Auckland is not that dangerous. I disagree. I think New Zealand is incredibly dangerous for Americans because it's really, really, really hard to start driving on the wrong side of the road when you get down there. I almost drove off a couple cliffs. So once you get past that, first day or two don't drive off a cliff it's nice and safe but that part takes some getting used to appreciate that the man saying i've never caught a live stream before i was tuning in at weird times from putting my baby to sleep this has been a real chill love because this has been real chill and love the commentary i appreciate you joining us so uh, what i can only assume could be very stressful time trying to be able to sleep. I assume you have the stream open because of both mine and Nathan's dulcet phones that just help aid the putting the baby to sleep process in the form of, well, very dull voices. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I had a kid, I think it'd fall asleep on the, the drop of a hat. No, I think if if I had a kid, I'd just open up Run It Once and just play, put all the Phil Galfon's videos on a playlist. Kind of, uh, yeah, have it, have it playing over, have it playing over like a, a speaker or whatnot. I've um, been writing a review for one of the online um, sites about Phil Galfon's latest training course where he takes you know, through hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of material about PLO. And 
I, I, I'm a big fan of Phil. Yeah, you know, I, I consider him a bit of a mentor, a small bit of a friend. Yeah, you know, I know him a little bit more than most people. And I can honestly say I can only sit there for one, one and a half hours at, at a time. Uh, because I literally will just start kind of zoning out on his his oh so soothing voice, which is, "Hey guys, Phil Galfond here," and on this particular spot, um, it was a seven eight nine all hearts. It's just very, you know, it's. I think he has a great voice. I think he's very good teaching, but man, watching so much footage is a it's a daunting task, Henry. Aaron is, yeah, it can be, especially poker theory in general. Like, yeah. it's uh, it can be a grind to try and consume in video format. So, oh wow, I, the, these dealers today, man, they've not shied away from giving us actual flops. Let's be honest. You know, I appreciate that. <laughs> Defending the ten five, playing a flush draw against Yuri's. Pocket aces with that ace of diamonds for dessert should it be needed as backup. I wonder if I don't see if it gets to like probe turn here. I was wondering how to has... probe turn, but I think it's a very clear check raise if he doesn't probe the turn. If we go up to somewhere in the 30 to 40 million range. Yeah, literally, I was thinking 3x like 36. So this is an interesting spot uh, where I think Yuri could potentially derive value from top pair hands, but we've seen Yuri shy away from that in the past against Lonis, but does, you know, does go for it here. Interesting to see what he picks and chooses to go for value uh, in, in spots against Lonis. It would have been a very, very difficult position if he had gone for 30 or 40 million check raise on the turn and a jam on the river um, if Yuri had called. It would have been really putting Yuri into a blender. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I've been trying to put people into put people into a blender recently. I want to I want to share a hand history from, with you from the other night. As uh, I don't know, man. I I was I was in that sim myself, but I just felt like I could put someone in the blender, and they they didn't allow me to. So, haven't played live poker in God knows how long. You know, I've been out in Thailand for for a decent amount of time. Open queen 10 offsuit from the hijack. Okay. I don't normally do hand histories, boys and girls, but Nate's here, so it's a red tree. <laughs> I played two, two, 250 big blinds effective against uh, small blind and big blind. It's one, two, aren't any pros in the game. So open hijack queen 10 to eight pounds. Small blind calls, big blind calls, comes King Jack 10. King Jack 10. Actually, we could see some blood here, mate. So, yeah, I, I could see Yuri opening up in Michael jamming that ace jack. So, it really depends on like Michael's knockout uh, and the bounty uh, as to how this hand goes down from Yuri's perspective. Yeah, you, you I, mean, I wouldn't blame. Call. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't blame either. Either player. Michael, obviously, absolutely fine. Want to take this spot? A lot of ICM pressure. Eight left. Yuri, going to be performing well against you know the ace deuces through five of the world, flipping against sixes through eights, and sometimes Michael's going to have some king queen, king jack, queen jack suited Broadway type hands in there as well. Yuri says run it. Just for the final table bubble, boys and girls. Michael in great shape. The 
double up. But, oh, no. Oh. I mean, call the police in the form of the Trip Nines. And there we have it. Nathan Gamble. The final table has been set, my man. And it's going to be the American takeover in the form of Nathan Gamble and Tyler Patterson calling the action for you boys and girls. When we get back from break, I'm going to be piecing out. It is event number 65 of the Millions Online KO series. And we'll be back in five, playing down to a winner. See you guys later. See you everyone soon. Bulgaria, very well known regular in that part of the world. Mm. The Bulgarians are rife. But wow, here we go then. Henry, 100, 200, and a big blind anti. Haven't said that for a while. I know, right? There <laughs> we go. So obviously, the the stakes big when you're playing short-handed with that big blind anti. You see, uh, it's the haves and the have-nots. Uh, Muster here, two kings and one of the bigger stacks, 40 bigs. With a few of these guys knocking around a lot shorter than that. As you'd expect, Henry, I guess we're approaching the final table. Uh, I guess play last night must have stopped up, and I see him a real consideration at this point, even though, look at that, Henry. First stream of the week, and I'm omitting ICM's consideration. There we go. And yeah, as we saw, the chip counts, a couple of shorties in there, especially with all that stalling last night. Yeah. I'm talking to defend the eights. Pretty, I mean, Bit unfortunate for Staffov. Right. Uh, Anton, one of the only other big stacks at the table. Shorter stack would have just uh, re jammed these two eights. Yeah, certainly would have done. Mm, but, well, Anton perhaps heading towards a little trouble. And he does that back door diamonds. And there are, of course, some straight guards that could come. Love this from a Staffov range check on the 6 5 trait. He knows what's up. <laughs> Anton with the turn probe for one third. Very not going to go anywhere. Oh. Alright boys, see a river. I mean, it's crazy how big this pot is compared to like the average stack of the tournament. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> right. Shallow stuff. See what sizing Mustafov goes for here. Going to be targeting, you know, 5x or 3x. Anton shouldn't have too many Jack X that probe turn, unless it's specifically like, you know, Jack X or diamonds. Big bet. Yeah, isn't those are the uh, the hundred K coins, the orange? 1.3 slid in there. Anton may be a bit sus here. Checked flop. So he shouldn't have too many 6x. Or jack x, and I mean, he's reaching for calling chips, James. Yeah, I think, like you said, the uh, this has been slowed so well by most of it. He's surely going to get paid off. So he's going to check back on the flop, I guess. Henry did some, what, jack x with diamonds that. It's like a natural hand to be worried about, but there we go. Good way to start the week for anyone. And here we have Muster defending the 9 6 from the big blind. I really love these big blind antis. Run gets in, and then Ace 8 5 flop. He does pick up a gut shot draw. Nana with the King Queen, Queen of Hearts. And, and he is going to see that for a little over a blind. Must uh, going nowhere with that gut shot. 
Here we go, Henry. Here we go. If you're ever going to barrel a second time, this is the one. We pick up a gut shot. We pick up that flush draw. Bit small on the flop. Can't really go hard after these kind of hands. And of course, the AX, the 5X. Oh, oh, he's going for the going for the read, Henry. The eyes look up. Oh, it's going oh I've long, missed this. Mate. I've missed all this. this is, are we, we're getting the angles out. First stream. I love it. I love it. Bet does get the fold. <laughs> Love to see it. Hey, everyone, welcome on back to the Party Poker Millions Online series. My name's Nathan Gamble, joined by Tyler Patterson. How you doing, Tyler? Good, man. Good to be here. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. How's the action so far? It's been uh, fast and furious. Uh, you know, we just saw Henry walk away, leave it with a couple Americans. So we're going to see if we can take it on home for the home team now. All right. We're at the final seven, and here we are with those ship counts. Yuri up top with a quarter of a billion ships. You know I love to say it, Tyler. Second up is Mr. Simon Beckman, 187 million. Lonis, he is uh, leading the charge at the table that we were watching earlier, 173 million. Dominic, 116. Brenner, 99 million. Jerry, 78 million. And Simon Linger, down there at the bottom with 78 million. So six and se seventh are tied right now, 78 million a piece. And this is what they're playing for, ladies and gentlemen. First player out at the final table is gonna take home $3,061 plus those bounties. Those bounties are very important uh, as they are representative of half of the prize pool in effect. Sixth place, 4378, fifth, 5758. Fourth, 8,653. And then if you hit the podium spot, just over 13,000. Second place, gain 19,500. And first, it's not a mistake, it's 19,500 as well. However, those bounties are representative at that stage of about a ten to $20,000 pay difference between it. And for the first time, Tyler, as you know, we're seeing the bounties right now at the final table. And... The big one that stands out to me is our chip leader, Yuri, with over 6,300 on yeah, the wow. bounties. It's nice joining when we already have the bounty payouts listed. There's no uh, no guessing games which is going through that goes those guys' heads. Well, it's also nice if you have the nut straight versus top pair uh, against a shorter <laughs> stack. That is also nice. And... Bada boom, bada bing, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final table. Uh, unless he can catch some runner runner, <laughs> Simon is going to be our seventh place finisher. It's the second biggest see. bounty out there, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, Brenner just hitting it out of the park here. Nine on the turn, king on the river. Tyler, oh, what did my you bring goodness. To us? No. What just happened? Wow, welcome to the game, guys. I, um, well then, Simon, whatever Simon does from this point forward, it, it's all gravy. It, it, nothing else matters at this point. Wow, that was wild. Um, that's, I mean, as you pointed out as well, Simon was saying there were 3,200, the second largest bounty at this final table. So Brenner was, you know, in great shape to take over the chip lead or, or be right in there. To, to pick up an extra 3,000, move up the whole wow. table in prize. I mean, that was probably 10K plus in equity Brenner just lost there in real cash money. Wow. That was well, pretty welcome intense. on in. <laughs> yeah, I just put the jinx on him by showing up, I guess. It was funny. I mean, it was he was so far behind. I was surprised you even mentioned the fact that they're you said besides some runner runner thing happening i mean that was barely even worth mentioning and it happened it, i mean shouldn't see a call off here from simon don't imagine so we just uh it, it reminds me back to the hand of the fifty thousand dollar event 
at the World Series um, with Brian Yaki and Josh Arie from oh yeah three four years ago. Um, where is the Pat number two induced to seven triple draw going up against I think three four five or four five six and um, Nick Shulman was commentating and he off he was like oh it'd have to come perfect perfect with this card and then this card and that's exactly what unfolded and it was you know a sub one percent of one percent for those events to to happen and they happen it it uh the runner runners get there yeah i mean this one was oh. five outs to four outs right well the nine opened up the other board pairs at least okay that's true you're right but so it's more than that it's pretty minimal yeah and i mean what great dynamic already though because brenner is now seen here uh with just dust and a two thousand dollar bounty on his head so yeah what is the big blind right now three million so oh, five see, big so he's blinds. got five big blinds wow I mean, the next pay jump wasn't even as big as that bounty. That's really, really <laughs> painful. <laughs> uh, well, that bounty for representative of more than seventh place in general. Right. I mean, it's wicked. Blown is here turning a jackeye flush. It's the top pair of Simon. I like that bet sizing. Kind of keeps on a lot of these middling pair, maybe allows some funkiness from Simon. Wow. That card's going to cost Simon a little bit, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine Lonus is going for a pretty big sizing here. Yeah, he does, which is uh, going to allow Simon to at least avoid the check raise on River, right? Yeah, definitely. It's it's only color fold. I doubt he finds a fold, but well, he found a running nine kings. So anything's possible at this point. <laughs> and with that, Lonus has taken over the chip lead. So yeah. And I don't think this was that case in that situation because. That was a tough run out for Simon, but sometimes you have to avoid happy tilt. You know, you can win that huge pot. And usually we think of tilt as everyone being angry about some pot that you lost, but Simon just won that insane pot. So he may lose focus a little bit and not have to grind over tough decisions on the river. Cause it's just whatever. It's a small bet compared to how much he just run one and he got so lucky to do so. I'm not saying that's the case. Cause that was a cooler, but that, that, does come up and it's something to be aware of when you're when you're on happy tilt yourself yeah that, that's uh that's definitely a good point you kind of hit that miracle outs they come you, you are already walking out the door and now you sit back down and not only are you still in the tournament but you doubled up and you have all these chips and the real tournament you're you're stacking them on up you're pulling them in and Someone raises you, look at you're like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's let's go for it. Let's, uh, yeah. let's put some chips back to work. Yeah. Happy well, uh, like you said, you, you feel like you're free rolling, you know? I mean, you're mm -hmm. not. You're in a new situation with you're presented with a lot of big money decisions. So it is, you still got to still gotta grind out in those spots. I, I would say it's something I'm still uh, susceptible to, even in today's Me world. Too. There's a little happy tilt. Especially in a cash game when you're allowed to talk trash to each other and all that <laughs> kind of stuff, you know? Is there any player in particular that you'd like to find yourself heads up against? And I mean, it could be a $100 tournament, it can be, you know, World Series event, it could be a party poker, but just someone that you want particularly to be up against, whether it's for trash talking and vindictive <laughs> reasons or like your best friends and you think it'd be a great time or I mean, that's a tough one. I don't know. I guess, you know, I've only played a couple hands in my life with Phil Ivey and the, it shouldn't, I shouldn't be intimidated. I, I'm also a professional poker player. I make good decisions for a living, but 
there's just something about it. You know what I mean? So maybe, maybe Phil Ivy or someone else who just has that insane gravitas about him, you know? Okay. I mean, Helmuth because of his antics would be fun also, but <laughs> I wouldn't have the same vibe. Like Chidwick or Foxen or any of those heroes that oh. just also have this like demeanor about them that's really tough to deal with. You just really, really want the the pain and the suffering there. I I just want to get you know I want to see myself make good decisions in those spots even even though it's uh, you know there's some outside factors going on. Okay. So I get so that with. Know- uh, I've never been heads up in a tournament with him, but Negranu obviously has that total gravitas. You know what I mean? He has the star power, or whatever, but he's, he makes the feeling so light at the table that, I mean, he feels like a friend, you know? So it's it's easy to, with him and his Fondiari and those kind of guys, it's easy to just have some banter and it you don't feel that vibe. But man, the stare down guys, that's, that's who I'd like to be heads up with in a big event is one of the stare down guys. I, I could see that. But I'd want to crack them. I'd want, like not from a perspective of the card sense. I'd want to, I'd, I'd want to get Ivy to just not be able to hold the face and, and actually crack a smile. And yeah, I, I'd, if I got heads up with one of them, I think I'd definitely have to just try my absolute damnedest to break through that stare. Yeah, I get that. I would want to lighten the mood too, but I just. Yeah, I don't know. Those guys are intimidating, and they they shouldn't be. It's just poker, right? But they are. Right. Um, Fedor uh, was playing one of the, I believe, there's a Triton events recently, and he, you know, he goes from all the happy, affable, and then he picks up a hand and it goes, whoosh, complete stone face killer, <laughs> and one of the uh, Asian high rollers started like, you know, talking at him, and he finally he actually got him to. To crack a smile mid hand, and then you know the other guy folded, and he he started going on, and they started talking back and forth, and he actually saw Fedor like kind of try to put on. He's like, oh, once I you know once you make me crack, I, I find it so hard to go back into it. We have some serious action going here. Yeah, Fedor is another one for sure. Yeah, I think this is going to be a full tier from Yuri, especially from yeah, it's not. Jerry with a minimal bounty at the table. 750 is the lowest one. It's an interesting little thing of like, if Jerry's willing to put his tournament on the line with Brenner sitting directly to his right, where he has the best position, has a $2,000 bounty, and that payout jump then uh you know it adds a little more gravitas to shove <laughs> definitely uh, the word of the day yeah it's a fun one <laughs> i mean that also plays in it yuri could also be three betting a lot lighter because of that he could right. be putting jerry into the blender as uh you and henry were saying earlier And I think that's a consideration for Dominic with this fold on all the levels we just talked about. You know, I still cover Sprinter. There's the pay jump looming. You know, 10 7 of diamonds is probably a hand he should be opening this particular formation. But because of that pressure, he's kind of you know, handcuffed a little bit. Yeah, he might get three bet light by Yuri or Simon more often because of it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think for me personally, I'd go at the opposite end of the spectrum and I would have to, I think probably go with Brandon Shaq Harris would be my number one, um, choice for a heads up match because I could truly legitimately, honestly be happy no matter who won it, uh, first and foremost. And also just, I think it'd be a lot of fun to you know, banter back and forth, have shenanigans at the final table between us. So, yeah, not from the stare down, test myself perspective, but yeah, I'd enjoy to have it with uh, VSH. Yeah, he's a close friend of yours too, right? I've, uh, yeah, I don't have a ton of interaction with him except for online, but it's, he, he seems great. He, he definitely is. 
You're already getting after it here. Just. Which is interesting. Jerry's under a gun. He's raising his 9 8 suit, it, hoping to clear some people and get through, maybe get that bounty of Brinner on the line. And Yuri's just playing sheriff. Yeah, I mean, it's a great spot for Yuri. Oh, yeah. That's a great spot for Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> it is now uh, and as we look around at those folded cards not only is it a great you know flop for jerry taking 9-8 suit versus 9-8 suited and, and free rolling it um but also there are no dead clubs out there so it enhances this free roll more than he realizes there we go The stack sizes dictate that Yuri could put so much pressure on him now. He should bet something that would look committing. Well, he gave up. I think that's pretty wise. I'm shocked that Yuri gave up there. I guess he does have enough showdown value to give up. And I, I think I'm going to go for a little bit different sizing for Jerry. It's one of those spots where there's Nothing wrong with it. It may be completely correct uh, from a theoretical perspective. But I, once again, I think we talked about this last time we did the stream a, a week ago or so. I am a fan of that kind of enticing bet in that spot. The pot 60 million. I'm going to bet 20% pot. I'm trying to try to bait Yuri into making a play uh, that he really shouldn't um, versus that 80% pot. I have a hand, I want to get value from it perspective. It's more of a, all right, let's 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 try to get him to apply the pressure. In this case, you might've even gotten the added benefit of the hero call for the tiny bet too. Zero yeah. did have a pair of nines. Looks like Brenner has a nice shot at getting back into this as he'll be up against Lonus and his lone five. As an out, maybe some hearts, maybe a straight draw, but. Unless Jerry just really, really gets after it now. <laughs> uh, Great Bluff asking who would be considered the underdog at this table? You know, we don't have a lot of information on these players as of right now uh, outside their stack sizes, so. I think from a stack size perspective, Brenner is now the underdog in the tournament, but he flops the set. Lonus goes runner, runner on the flush, but thankfully there for Brenner, <laughs> he boats up on the river with that nine of hearts. So Lonus may have thought he got him for just a second, but boat seven swollen nines for Brenner. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't personally have a name recognition with uh, the, the seven players in front of us. I don't know if anyone sticks out to you, Tyler. I think I recognize a few names, but uh, I wouldn't know at all. So I'm just going to run a quick uh, pendant mob on them. And I mean, for those of you in chat, that's what I recommend you do if you find yourself deep in a tournament whether it's live or online you know we're, the world series is about to to start and for me personally anytime i'm going to into a day two a day three a final table anything of that nature where we've had pause and now we see who are at our table the night before the morning of i always pull up pinned and mob and I just sit there and plug every single person's name into it and see hey do they have any results where are those results in are they in, you know, let's say we're playing Omaha Eight or better. Do they have results in that particular game or do they just have tournament reserve results overall? Um, that's something that you can easily do as you progress throughout a tournament and you have more information on uh, names, at least, of the players around you. Like Snowball did with me. Sorry it disappointed you so. I hope you looked up Nathan Gamble poker and not Nathan Gamble. It'll take you to a American actor for Dolphin Tales. 
Different point in my life, Tyler. There's been some other actors that have transitioned into poker, I think. Jennifer Tilly, for one. Yeah. Definitely. She, so. win, she won the women's event a bunch of years ago, I think. A bunch of years Played ago. Played High Roller Cash. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm working on putting together a bracelet display at Resorts World, and she offered her bracelet alongside a couple others she's acquired over the years uh, for the display. So, wow, definitely. that's really cool. Yeah. She she loved the idea. It's just like let me know as soon as it's up and running. And I'll get them to you. Are you allowed to divulge any of the other bracelets that may be on your way? Ooh, let's see. So she, for her personally, this Jennifer Tilly's, she had won Max Pescatore's, uh, one of his in a relief for Italy. I forget uh, what exactly the auction was for for Italy. Um, wow. And so she has his and is going to donate it. She also acquired another one whose name I'm missing off the top of my head. Um, John Manette, Angry John, has um, inquired as well. Ben Lamb um, has said he wants to contribute. Um, there's a handful of others I don't remember offhand. When I put it out there, a lot of people said the classic, oh, like, I don't have one yet, but after next year, I'll happily donate. <laughs> I'm like, okay, guys. But it's been the works for a while now. I've been working through um, with the poker room management alongside their design team. So once we get finalized and we have the display under works uh, from a fabrication perspective, then I'll reach back out to those people and to you know, a larger amount of the poker community and, and build upon it. That's cool. I love the idea. I will not be donating my single bracelet nor <laughs> the next one that I have to give to, you know, my mom and then my wife and then whatever else. So yeah, you guys can have it at like, you know, my 12th or 13th maybe. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Whenever I pass Helmuth, then you can have that one. How about that? Once we pass Helmuth. All right. His <laughs> next 19, I think, are dedicated to someone else. <laughs> No, that's, that's definitely fair. I, I kind of expect them more from people in that four to five range than I do from someone in the one to three club. Uh, from, yeah, exactly what you said. You keep one, your parents got one, your wife, your brother, your sister got one, whoever it is, but yeah. Are you playing many events this year? Uh, I do, but I play all the the small to medium buy-in events with thousands of players. So I do expect to win another one sometime in my lifetime. And then maybe if some big scores happen, then I'll play the big mixed events that only have two or 300 people in them. But for now, I'm a pretty big underdog to win a bracelet. That's fair. I would say you're still a favorite over most people that play those events. So you're not an underdog your favorite title okay i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I play a lot of events so i think i'll win another one sometime in my life but i'm not playing 70 events that have you know 150 people in them right guilty as charged <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to belittle those bracelets that's not that's not the point i just uh as good as I think I am, I'm still not a favorite to win one each year. Uh, I'll go on record and say, because I've played all types of events throughout the years, and even though they're smaller fields, I mean, the, the fields are incredibly difficult, and they're just yeah. extremely knowledgeable opponents. Um, it, it never seems to get really softer at any point of, of the tournament. It just seems to always be top level of competition even though it's a small field yeah that makes sense and in the no limit events sometimes because 
there are a fair amount of freeze outs. You can get to the final two tables and still have most of the field not being very good. So, so that's yeah. true. There is there is an edge advantage in that. Looks like Yuri is giving up on the pocket threes after getting a call from Lonus here on the flaw. Yeah, it does check over. I expect Lonus to just check back here with a decent amount of showdown value. Yeah, board's a little not so great to get value from third pair. No. Um, yeah, the I probably play three no limit hold'em events a year, and they're just random. I get bored and want to play a tournament. Uh, this year will be the the mystery bounty can't say no <laughs> well, mystery bounties are fun so there's a there's a pretty big one at the win but there's also a huge one at the world series this year yeah i mean it's it's a hard one because the win is such beautifully ran tournaments but there's a million dollar bounty up top at the world series i happen to just you know click the finger poke the right one draw the card <laughs> to hogwarts and off we go right Seven. Uh, looking ahead, call from six eight of spades. Everything else goes away. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never played one of those giant field, no limit fields at the the series outside the main event, like the Colossus or the Million Maker or any of those. It seems it, they're daunting with just how many players are in them. They are. I absolutely live for them. So. <laughs> <laughs> There but yeah, the, the the whole lines and 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 breaks being crowded and not being able to re-register if you bust or whatever else those things they're frustrating. But and if you happen to get if you happen to get a hold of some chips in those, um, there's a lot of chips to be had. You can get to a billion chip mark. <laughs> yeah, well, you do get to play against some players that you can literally fold queens and kings to pre-flop and you know or or vice versa you can call off with top pair happily so i mean there's there's a lot of value to be had in those tournaments where you just can't get that many big blinds in ahead in or that far ahead in in, in most fields right but then again it's also a turbo so you do end up playing mostly 15 to 30 big blinds which I feel is also advantageous for professionals. I mean, you, you kind of have looked into those situations more than most recreational players. Yeah, it's true. You definitely still have the edge in those situations. They're just, <clears throat> the edges are a little bit smaller. Yeah. A walk for Brenner. I'm, I'm rooting for this comeback. 28 million. So we're still in the, what, eight big blind range here? Uh, this one has potential to just get weird from the lineup of hands, depending on raises, potential three bets. I, I mean, it could literally be... Oh. Yeah. How do you feel about sevens under a gun? I feel like that's a little too strong to just fold it off on 40 big blinds. I agree. But you are going to get three bet by Yuri a lot, and it happens to be. I mean, we didn't know his hand, but Yuri's been pretty active pre flop. Don't know if Lonus gets out of line much, but Runner's bounties over there looming. I would definitely open the sevens. I mean, sixes are sitting there as well with 25 big blinds. So this is one of those hands that had a lot of potential unless Yuri uh, just really wants to get after it. Um. Hmm. So also the, the last hand where Brenner got a walk with nine big blinds, uh, if it had folded to me in Simon's shoes with Yuri having the $2,000 Browning, I would literally put my chips in without looking. Right. And offhand, I couldn't have even told you what their cards were. And I, I'm with you. I don't think it matters. It would have just been, all right, fold them to me in the small blind. Let's go. Um, 
because... you still have a, a high fold equity on top of the bounty equity mm -hmm. if you do get called. You're, you're going to get a fold most of the time, and probably against you know, Brenner's calling range, you still have easily 35% equity you know, with random. So, yeah, it, it definitely seems like that was a, a mistake on Simon's side. I mean, all around, it's it's really surprising Yuri doesn't open. It's surprising Lonus doesn't open. It's surprising Beckman doesn't shove. Um, right. I feel like they're not adjusting to the bounty values correctly yet, but maybe maybe they were in other times and they just missed on that one. Yeah, and this is the first time, and we're at the final table now. This is the first time we've seen the bounties. Uh, before that, you know, we really weren't able to know who was getting after it appropriately and who was you know paying attention or not so i do enjoy that aspect of the final table for us watching yeah. on high so i mean this is a spot looking ahead uh for simon with the ace jack I think it's a s one where he could flat and then shove all in if Dominic raises, or he could just apply maximum pressure and just shove all in himself. And I think that's just one of those frequency plays. But Simon will choose. He's choosing all these uh, baby aces to raise with last couple of hands. We have two Simons here now. I don't know. That's it's coming from a pretty early spot. I don't know if we want to pile it in if we're Simon Langer. Feels yeah, like I it's a little too big. I think we got to just flat. Doesn't choose either option. Goes with a. This is fine bet. too. You can three bet and just reevaluate. You don't necessarily have to have a plan for what you're doing if you get four bet, but. I guess we have to fold if we get four of that. Okay, so I think we definitely have a clear hand here for Brenner to get back in the tournament. And we'll get action from Jerry, who he just absolutely decimates. <laughs> I mean, he may not. Jerry has three people to act behind him, and he has a stack where he has to put it all in if Brenner puts it in. I mean, but we're seeing here, Jerry has 750 in bounties right now. There's 2,000 on the line with Brenner. It's a hard one to pass up. Yeah, I think he should, but I think a lot of people would pass it up because of the three people behind him. But I'm with you. I think he should put it in. We sit here with bated breath, Jerry. What will you do? <laughs> I, I mean, we see the payouts there um, from Nightbot. You, you alluded to it earlier. Seventh is three thousand. Six is forty three hundred. So that two thousand dollar bounty is more than the page up between seventh and six. Jerry does make the call. Almost sixty million in the middle. Ace high flop, not a lot of potential there as Brenner finds a clean run out for another double up. I mean, after Mr. Langer took him down with the runner runner, Brenner's uh, made a nice little comeback on a very workable stack once again. Was that 17 big blinds? Yes, sir. Last time we worked together, you picked out the particular player that won the event. So, oh yeah, a, a beer, if I'm not mistaken, at the series. <laughs> yeah, 
you're gonna have to have the best of it this time. So let's. Uh, you can pick the first one, and I'll pick. I don't know the the next dogs or whatever. Um, I mean, there's two Simons at play. I think I gotta take Beckman. That's that's my play here. I'm gonna take Simon Beckman to to win it all. Okay, I'll take the other Simons and see he's all in happy tilt. He's gonna get lucky at least one more time. See, that was my fear. I, I didn't want to take the happy tilter. <laughs> nice flop here for Dominic. So what's your first uh very first event of the summer? Are you gonna play the the hundred K? <laughs> no sir. So I'm out of I'm out of town right now, but I do get back uh tomorrow night and Okay. I'm going to jump in Wednesday morning. There's a 2,500 no limit. It's freeze out too, so that's nice. Okay. Just straight then, old fashioned freeze out. And as soon as I bust that, then there's four days of that 500 crazy welcome uh, homecoming events that, that I was alluding to earlier, having providing a lot of edge. Right. They, they do have a high percentage of rake, but I think that we overcome that with a lot of the field. Five hundred dollar, five million dollar guaranteed prize pool. Yeah, that's it's guaranteeing a lot of players out there. Right. So hopefully, I don't have the option to play that very many times because I'm in the twenty five hundred for too long. Right. That's that's the start. Those two those two events. How about you? When's uh when's your start? Um, it looks like actually the same day as you. You have June first at eleven. Mine's June first at three. I'll be cracking up at the dealer's choice. So, Fun. starting off strong. A final table that semi-final table, whatever you want to call it. Took seventh on that last year. Very nice. I got a lot of unofficial final tables I'm like a there's lot one of table them? uh each, over the last few years seventh so this one was seventh because it's a six hand of final table i've had an eighth um which was i think we were playing that tournament seven handed so that was an unofficial <clears> one i took 10th on the plo8 the year after i won it but it's a nine handed <laughs> final table wow so, like I, I literally like have I think it's three or four unofficial final table and but it's weird because some of them count and some of them don't as <laughs> official final tables. So I don't know how it's counted. I'm like there's one table it counts. My friend circle refers to that as the Garfinkel table because <laughs> one of our close friends, Steve Garfinkel, got tenth in the main event. And so he did play 10 handed at the last table, but does not have a main event final table. Oh, what year was that? Jerry Yang won. So I think 2007. Okay. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's right. That, that sounds, yeah, that sounds right. Jerry Yang. <laughs> that was a. Uh... I remember that one specifically. I was 2007 um, because as the very first year the World Series went to um, like pay per view where you could watch the entire final table on whatever it was, ESPN or whatnot. Yeah. And 2007, I was 18. My dad was like, oh, we should do this. I was like, yeah, I love poker. And you don't realize it it was like 20 hours straight of <laughs> yeah the final table is excruciating <laughs> yeah i watched every minute of it um we yep. weirdly and it was maybe a little bit by design because he's a history professor at a college so he didn't really want too much publicity but they didn't introduce him on the broadcast until he busted out 10th <laughs> like you know they're talking about um whoever jerry yang and uh kenny tran and a bunch of people leading up to the final table got a whole bunch of airtime, and he got 10th and didn't even didn't even get introduced till he's busting out 
And this is our 10th place. What was your name? Oh, oh all right. He's gone. Well, we're at the final <laughs> table now. That was all Jerry Yang's year. There was just didn't seem to matter what he did. He could do no wrong. There was an insane hand where Jerry Yang and Lee Watkinson's wife on the rail were Have a prayer both off. battling for who Jesus chose to win the, win the pot. <laughs> Which was <laughs> a wild agree. thing to see. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're both saying they're praying. And I, I think they did a really good job of uh, capturing that moment. Oh, man. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> the, with both of them mic'd up, it was, yeah, it was really amazing. Uh, interesting potential here. Simon's going to open, obviously, with Ace King off. And Jerry with the magical ace five. So, at the very least, we're taking a flop in Jerry's position. Does the side on the flop. And top pair first to the bottom pair here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I remember that hand. I mean, I, I think the very first large hand of that entire tournament was uh, Jerry Yang took pocket jacks up against pocket queens and just they saw a flop. I think it may have been Lee Watkinson bet and Jerry just like happily rips all in and uh, Jerry uh, and Lee Watkinson just went to a tank for mm -hmm. a long, long time and eventually folded the, the queens to the jacks and from that point forward it seemed Jerry could do no wrong. I'm not positive, but in my head I think it was Lee Childs that folded the queens. Okay. I'll go with it. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. It actually might have been Watkinson. One of one of the Lees definitely folded that in that spot. Forgot that there was uh, multiple Lees there at that one. But now, I don't know. I'm questioning it because I remember, I kind of think it was a professional. I don't think Lee Childs was a professional. So now maybe it was Watkinson. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm losing it. There's, let's see. Um, no, it looks like, yeah. It looks like you're right that it was Lee Childs that had the, the queens. And the queens. Yep. It's amazing how fast you can even find stuff on Google. You're just like, yeah, oh, nice let work. me just randomly look up Jerry Yang information from 2007. <laughs> Fortunately for Jerry, he's local the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> he has Sorry, that was not again. a fair joke. <laughs> <laughs> he's been seen again in the poker world. Yeah. Uh, all right, ace four of hearts under a gun versus the king ten of hearts from Brenner. Brenner's hand looks really, really strong here on the button flatting. This is a play a lot of people are going to make uh, kind of exclusively with yeah, really high pairs, queens, kings, aces. So it looks really strong for Brenner to flat on the button. Maybe he's taking advantage of that population tendency against Dominic. Mm -hmm. That was great. Fantastic. What well, well played hand too to bet the flop. I'm definitely liking what we're seeing out of Brinner. Um outside of, you know, running like shit. He's playing very well. <laughs> Lona's picking up a monster, but it doesn't look like he's gonna get too much action. And Lonus hasn't been, you know, too active at the final table, but leading up to this, uh, I think we saw, you know, quite a bit of aggression. So it's interesting to see what happens when we go from four to five hander play. You're at the final table bubble. You can apply all that pressure. And now, okay, we're at a full table again. There's seven players. I have the chip lead, but he's back off the gas.
Feels like Yuri may have slowed down a bit after losing a pot or two also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Yuri was up over two, well, let's see, 200 million. It seems a lot of those chips are just slowly going to Lonis and Simon. They're the two that have benefited the most at the final table so far. Bringers obviously short stack. Both Jerry and Dominic can't seem to really get anything going. Uh, so they're just slowly bleeding off chips, waiting for a spot against Brenner. And that's one of the fun things about tournament poker is with all the ICM and, and the pressure is everyone's sitting here with eyes on Brenner, but you know, Jerry and Dominic have to be cognizant of that and not allow their stacks to bleed so far down their kind of handicapped and unable to make moves to win the table um, themselves. And I think this is a little example of that. Dominic can't just give a walk here. He's got to fight for some chips. He does run into it, though. Here he raises and wins the pot easy. Yep. Zakelin46 asking what the tournament buy-in is. It was a $320 buy-in. <clears throat> So half of that goes into the primary prize pool, which is what you see uh, that they're playing for. And the other half goes into bounties. So first and second place are right around 19,500, but it's going to come down to those bounties that they're playing for on the side at that point. And that's gonna be about a, a 15, $20,000 addition to that 19.5. So for a $320 buy-in, we got about 35, 40,000 for first place. Not too shabby. So you said you're currently out of Vegas. Where are you at right now? Uh, in Seattle, just visiting some okay. family before, uh, nice. before I hunker down. Very nice. Just got back from Matt Savage's uh, four-day golf tournament in Arizona, and uh, it's a little, little horse, little uh, had a little too much drinking in the sun, and it was a great, great time golfing with a hundred of Matt's closest friends and <laughs> customers, I guess. <laughs> I've don't play golf. I think I talk with Matt once or twice in my life. I'm in group chats uh, with him and there's more golf pictures that come through from Matt than any other human I've ever been uh, interacted with. Yeah, he loves it. It's amazing he hasn't gotten any better over the 20 years. He's been <laughs> I feel like if you're putting them together, you should kind of try to get better at least. Not saying he isn't trying, but <laughs> he loves golf gambling. In ten of spades. So we do have potential here from Brenner. Yeah, you know, saying on seventeen big blinds, first position. You can see him taking the time trying to figure out what he wants to do with it. Okay, does open up with a raise. We have Lonus kind of standing in the weeds. Ace nine diamond, small blind. It's it's nice from a perspective. He's a big stack, but you know you're not loving Ace nine suited here after an under gun raise from a short stack that's been playing patiently. It's not fist pump anything. Nah, but the presence of the big bounty, he should probably just be piling in that spot. There's still. Even though it looks like there's not much fold equity because he's raising under the gun, there's always some. Yeah. All right. Simon peeling with the, the other queen 10 here as well. Makes sense. So, uh, nice flop for Brinner in reality, um, as neither of these two players have much to continue on with. 
So just kind of depends on how he navigates the waters on if he'll be able to take this down. Who is turning the nine while well, both these players turn the same double gut shot? Really awkward stack size here for Brenner. Probably just call and play fit or fold. Well, he just lays it down, which is fine too. It's such a big part of your stack. Well, Lonus will defend against it with that ace nine. Justifiably so. And the deuce, obviously, doesn't rate to change anything. 10 is a nice blocker. It's kind of bad that it's a heart since it blocks your opponent from calling with hearts. Well, Could have fired a jam there, but just didn't decided not to. Gave it up. Yeah, and it was going up against the chip leader of the final table, which has been an overwhelming force so far as we see Lonus saying there are 350 million in chips. 350, yeah, 350 million chips. Um, and we're still seven-handed. We had the opportunity right at the beginning for a little bloodshed, but we're still in it, ladies and gentlemen. Seven players remain at event number 65's final table. And join us after a break to see who is going to take it down next. Cheers, everyone. the other day just uh, head on down and jump in cash games have been insane back now with the jacks in the hijack mm. 18 baits and a dream <laughs> 18 baits a dream and a couple of hooks not a bad spot at all oh boy mm. oh dear oh boy Maybe trouble ahead for Artur Martyrosian. Baklau gonna have some raised folds off of 18 big blinds. And Ace 10. Kind of a nice hand unblocking those raised folds. Ooh. King Queen, King Jack. Gets away, Henry. Will Anton get away? likely to defend although some reverse and implied odds to be up against stronger jack x stronger diamonds so short though anyway, i guess uh yeah the price is just too good to turn down and well set once more hands on this time quickly checks it over Michael, uh, a little upset, Henry. See the A-side board. Hey, how's the impetus? Up against the small and the big, does the side continue? Now we see some four Hollywood. Oh, he's going for the race. No slow playing. Some of that, 1.4 he says. Jacks going into the muck, I guess, fortunately for the Frenchman. It's an ace high board rather than a 8 5 deuce. Mm. <laughs> and that's uh, unsteel from the chat saying, wasn't Arthur grinding online earlier? Wouldn't surprise me. Mm, you know, just make it to day three of this 2K with a quarter of a million up top, and wow. Well, 
It doesn't start till one o'clock in the afternoon. Got to fill the morning somehow. Why not play a little bit of a uh, cash online? Taking his time over this. Maybe Henry, you know, thinking, well, what's he check raising me with Ace 8 5? He got big ace, so we have to find out pre flop. It's, has he waited towards the flush draw, of course? McAloo's holding the Jack of Hearts, kind of a bad card you'd think to have if you're wanting your opponent to be in there chip raising with flush draws. Does eventually give it up. I think probably always was Henry, but this stage of a tournament, you're going uh, to you're gonna make sure you take a little moment. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking at me. Obviously, we're getting uh, some requests about Yaron Gilbert, but it looks like he is actually the tournament chip leader out on the other table with 50 million in chips. And it looks like he may have busted someone. Yeah, looks like he's um Wow, yeah, he doubled up, Henry. Looks like a bizarre. Uh, oh, okay. He doubled up for four mil. Uh, limp called it off with ace ten against queen nine. Fell behind on the nine high flop, but turned an ace and riveted ten for good measure to get the double up. Uh, looks like he. Welcome on back in, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nathan Gamble, alongside Tyler Patterson. And we're here for the Party Pokers Million Online PKO event number 65. Seven players left, and we're playing down to that winner. Welcome on back, Tyler. Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> it's been fun so far. We got a, It got started off with crazy action, but uh, Simon Longer's hand... Ran out crazy against Brenner's, and uh, everybody's still here. Yeah, and it looks like we had a double up for Brenner yet again through the hands of Simon Beckman, as Brenner is no longer the short stack, and oddly enough, is in second place uh, with 24 big blinds. Lonus is there leading the charge, 70 big blinds, and then it drops off precipitously to... Brenner. So, really a change up of the orders here as everyone's getting shorter and shorter. Yeah, it's kind of a phenomenon that happens if uh, if nobody busts for a while, the blinds eat you up. So, the average has really dropped. Yeah. Uh, my wife doesn't play poker at all, doesn't really you know, know what's going on. She roots me on. She's happy I, I, I'm successful at it. But she's always like, How much longer? I'm like, Yeah, no one's busted out in a while. So, I expect it to be stagnant for a bit, and then I just expect it to really ramp up, and we're going to see a lot of bust outs one after another in, in short order. Um. So, for those of y'all that are still wanting to play some of these events, I have the schedule pulled up online right now. And uh, we have the mini main event, day 1E. That's happening tomorrow. That's a $109 buy-in, half a million dollar guarantee. Let's see. On uh, tomorrow as well, we also have the real main event. The maximum main event, if you will. And that is going to be... A thousand dollar with a million dollar guarantee. So, a couple chances left to get onto these final tables. As we see Jerry with a hand that's easily shovable here, with the queen three of clubs taking a flop against the pocket queens of Dominic, has that gut shot straight draw, has the flush draw, and the chips are in the middle here with Dominic leading the way against Jerry. Pocket Queens versus the flush draw. 
seems reasonable play by both parties. Absolutely, yeah. We love the check raise all in from Jerry with only queen high. Well, well, we may love it, but Dominic loves it even more as he holds up against those clubs and the gut shot. And Jerry Odin is our seventh place finisher. Good game, sir. As Dominic picks up that bounty. But yeah, I, I think that uh that check raise there is just absolutely textbook material. Great spot for him to do it, but not the results he was looking for. But he did get three thousand dollars and he obviously didn't have much in bounties, only having seven hundred and fifty as a prize for busting him, but uh three thousand's not shabby for a uh three hundred and twenty dollar buy in. Absolutely. Now the minimum they're playing for now for sixth place would be 4,378 plus any bounties they've collected. And also that nice little pickup from Dominic moves them into a solid second place. Lonis is still leading the charge, 70 big blinds. Dominic here with 40 big blinds and Bringer back there um, with about 26 big blinds. So we still have those short stacks in play simon especially with a very very healthy bounty just about 3200 got to remember to say the last name with two simons on the final table so yeah simon longer with the uh healthy bounty simon beckman has a not so the cheapest bounty. bounty available still which is still pretty healthy compared to the prize pool yeah absolutely i i tend to just focus on the simon langer and somehow Beckman's just Beckman. Uh, all right, so asking how the bounties work. They get half of what their bounties are showing. If I'm not mistaken, um, what I want to say happens is you would acquire that amount, the 2020, and then the other half gets added too. So if you knocked out Brenner, for instance, 2020 would get add it to your bank account and then the other 2020 would be added onto your bounty does that sound right tyler um i think that it is you you definitely get the full amount shown but i think right. half of that is added to your bounty okay half of it's added Okay, so you, yeah, I know for a fact you get the full amount. So if, if you bust one of those players, you don't get some sort of uh, weird mathematical calculation and get $19.22 on a $1,000 bounty. You, you get the thirteen sixty nine or whatever it happens to be. But, okay, so, and then half gets added to yours. Sounds about right. Also, I appreciate being called Stephen Adams, and that's what's going on here. He's a beautiful man, so thank you very much. <laughs> Gonna have to look up Steve Adams now. What are we talking? Uh, talking NBA, Steve Adams? I think so, but I'm not sure because they are all in Europe, so they might be making fun of uh, me with somebody that I don't know. No, I, I think we can safely, securely call go with Steve Adams playing for the Grizzlies 6'11 265 pounds do you, do you stack up to those numbers <laughs> no I do not <laughs> <coughs> sorry excuse me <laughs> may, I may get to that weight at some point in my life but I will not ever be <laughs> six foot eleven <laughs> The not the the not so happy oh not 265 pounds yeah i see oh steven adams the basketball player is a kiwi and it's another uh all these new zealanders really love this stream late at night it's not late at well, night for them and yeah you know, that's probably why i think that's why i i imagine uh, in my head there's only one uh oh real fast fun little one here Three million, six million. Yuri jamming it all in from a small blind. Fifteen big blinds. Lone is going to happily call this off here with the Ace King off suit. And Yuri is going to need some love on the flop to catch on. That up. is a cooler, cooler for Yuri. I think that that jam is perfectly acceptable. 
Well, cooler for Yuri, it turns into a gold mine for Yuri, and cooler for Lonis, drilling the jack of spades on the turn. And uh, there we go. We, we now have a more even final table once again, as Lonis just really gets hammered down there. Just bring in the cold decks for him today. Um, yeah. But, I mean, we, we definitely have potential right now to, to see some action go down. Yuri's going to have the ace-eight eight on the button. Simon sitting there behind, ace-ten suited. Simon only has 13 big blinds. Definitely had a little bit of a change up here on the bounties. Not exactly sure what occurred. So maybe well, someone some in, info. Someone in the chat mentioned that they actually had the bounties displayed incorrectly before. I think maybe we have them correct now. Okay. So long as the players know exactly what they're playing for. Hey, Poker Sing in the chat, will you let us know if they match up in the client now? Yeah, I would love to be able to make sure that we're providing everyone with the best, and most correct up for information. I don't want to lead anything astray. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me personally, Tyler, uh, I'm ignorant of sports. It's not my cup of tea. So I would have to go more with an actor for you on your you know, your, your uh, twin. And there's only one actor that I, I imagine uh, you get all the time, right? Um, it's it's too embarrassing for me to say myself, so you're going to have to say it. We're, we're going to have to go with Jason Moma, yes. Mr. Aquaman himself. Yes, nice work. <laughs> um, man, I wish I could display something on the screen for you right now, but I, uh, wow, we got some action going on here. Well, we have King Simon 4 Raising offsuit Predator versus King 6 offsuit. How could we not have action? <laughs> Let me get back to the story in just a second as this hand plays out, because it's interesting when two guys have the same, basically the same holding. And Simon takes it down with a raise and seed bet. That's nice. So I was in uh, Montreal and uh, out a night drinking and fell and busted my face open. Cool. And uh, I had to go get stitches and all this. And I had this, this just, it just, it was a crazy look, but I had a scar exactly through my right eyebrow. So looked even more like Jason Momoa at the time because it looked just like his character in Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> I have a side-by-side -side picture. So this happens and then the next day I have my biggest broadcasting gig I've ever had only because <laughs> I'm going into the booth with Mike Sexton. It's like the legend of broadcasting. So I go into the booth with Mike Sexton and he has to see me all bandaged up with my eyes swollen and I have to he just keeps a total straight face the whole time while I'm doing commentary with him. He doesn't want to say anything. And then right when the break comes along, he kind of flips out. <laughs> so anyway, it was embarrassing being in that situation in front of one of my idols. But at the same time, we have Simon Langer folding ace queen here. Yeah, there's potential there for Simon on Simon train wreck and Langer just... I definitely step to the side. But uh, I mean, that's really cool that you you had the opportunity to get in there with Mike Sexton, looking like Aquaman, looking like Game of Thrones, <laughs> and uh, yeah, good on you. It was embarrassing, but luckily I had played golf with him in the past, so we, we I had known him a little bit before, so it wasn't it wasn't the first time meeting him at least. He handled it like yep. such a pro, of course. We uh, we had a hockey game on when we were playing over at Resorts World uh, a 
couple weeks ago. And one of the broadcasters, you know, it's hockey, everyone's out there, everyone's getting rough and tumble. And one of the the broadcasters looks like he was on the rink the entire time. I mean, his <laughs> the entire side of his face was bashed in. I mean, there's just bandages and his hair's blown out on one side. And so so we had to look it up. We're like, what what happened? But apparently he had taken a really, really nasty spill on a mountain bike, you know, uh, I think a week before. It was just absolutely still, you know, beat up from it. But he just, you know, carried on. He's like, yep, here we are doing the broadcast. <laughs> That's great. Hockey players, you, I mean, you wear any injury like a badge of honor, right? Yeah. He, he looked like he didn't belong up in the booth. He definitely looked like he had been out. <laughs> on the rink for a while. Uh, it, there's golf questions in the chat. <laughs> I don't understand a single word. There's some bogeys, <laughs> there's some DP world, some 18th places, but all I know is that's a losing ticket. So I'm going to let you answer the golf questions in life. Yeah, that's a tough beat on the losing ticket. Uh, my handicap is about six right now. 6.1, actually. Uh-oh, we got Simon Beckman running into it. Hunter is going to take his rightful place as a chip leader. That's what you think. Simon is just offering a <laughs> handicap here to Brenner. Needs that uh, ace, some diamonds. <laughs> Maybe uh, the slot machine three sevens to come home. Beautiful turn card oh, providing the flush draw and the wheel draw and the five of diamonds coming home on the river. Good game, Brenner, as Simon Beckman is now our chip leader, uh, taking home a very healthy bounty. And, and we also received word not that long ago, Tyler, that those bounties are the true bounties now. They have been updated and verified by our production team so sorry for your confusion earlier but uh, uh good game mr brennan h coming in sixth place as simon beckman does the deed and takes first place in the chip counts yeah the non man i had uh Zalatoris in the uh pga championship which um wasn't nearly as bad a beat as you suffered there, but it was another close one in a final. I thought I was given a gift when Mito Pereira shanked it off. I don't remember if it was 18. I think it was 18. Sorry for all the golf talk, Nathan, but, you know, if they're asking in, in the chat, you got to give them what they want. Give the people what they want. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, I, I know a couple of our guys play golf, watch golf. One of our uh, regulars is from Chile and uh, there's conversation about the first Latin American player to have won the PGA but then he shanked it and <laughs> there was a lot of uh, <clears throat> not so they weren't happy about that let's just put it lightly poor guy seemed like a big deal yeah well it was a pretty big deal it was uh yeah, he didn't have an easy win, but he had an easy path to at least the playoff. And he, he was a young guy. He choked. But he gave a really nice interview afterwards. A lot of guys wouldn't have even given an interview. He, You know, it's like punting off chips with two or three left in a tournament and then immediately getting a microphone stuck in your face asking how you feel about it. Pretty tough to have class in that spot, but he did. So that was cool. Yeah. Jeff Platt always gets that job over poker go and I feel bad for him. I know Jeff, we're friendly, we say hi, we talk for a bit every every summer. And uh, I feel bad for that particular job of like, hey, you just bust it, you're on the bubble, you got, you know, everyone else is guaranteed half a million and you get nothing. I'm going to talk with you now. I'm like, oh, that's that's uncomfortable. Yeah, and it as a poker player, I mean, we're not under the lights all the time and we're not, we don't have media training or agents or anything. So when they stick a mic in your face after just losing a lot of money, I mean, you didn't lose a lot of money. You did make a lot of money, which also makes you look further like a jerk if you don't answer the questions well. So it's a, it's a tough spot. Yeah. 
interesting river here. Simon may try for a smidge of value with the three fives. Um, but does wisely just check it on back and Lonus will pick up with the babiest of baby flushes. Uh, I, yeah, it definitely takes a lot of conversation with someone that doesn't play poker where they're like, oh, what place did you finish? You're like, oh, I finished in like seventh for a dealer's choice last year. And they're like, oh, that's amazing. How much money did it pay? And you're like, 7,000. They're like, oh, that's so much money. That's awesome. You're like, yeah, but <laughs> first place. So six people more and you, know, you make almost 100,000. Like, yeah, but you made seven. You're like, no, no. But like, yeah, at last 300 people, you make this much. You have last seven more people, six more people, whole different story. And they're like, oh, well, I guess, but congratulations, Trey. Damn it. Not getting through. <laughs> poker is a weird one. Yeah, it's tough. Just keep a poker face through the interview, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of my closest friends is uh, Matt Affleck, who yep. famously on the World Series took a took a beat against Jonathan DeHommel to, to not win. He ended up getting 15th for 500,000 ish in the main event, but Jonathan DeHommel went on to win for 8 million. And the the beat was really rough with aces on the turn. And so then Affleck sort well. of famously sort of stormed out. He threw a water bottle and uh, kind of teared up a little bit, but. Um, so he did get some ribbing for it, but he actually came back and did interviews afterwards. It was all class, sat and watched the main event for a long time. And he actually really, really handled it well, but he gets a lot of grief for the 10 seconds where he met, you know, he handled it like a normal human. I, I remember that very, very well. And I mean, I think they followed him into the hallways after he threw the water bottle and he's leaning over a trash can just kind of sobbing and almost half puking it's like as you said it's a very normal reaction from it's he won half a million and there's eight million up top and yet whatever it was the, the would have had the massive chip lead on it and uh but yeah that's my understanding he went back in there and kind of shook everyone's hands congratulated everyone afterwards he just sucked it up and uh very very respectful move yeah he handled it well in the end yeah i've played with him a, a handful of times uh really really nice guy he loves learning the mixed games now he's not a mixed game expert yet but and so i think he's not i think he's only playing hold in this world series but i think he'll be he'll be diving in in the future he really likes learning yeah I, i've played with him in our 8160 game a handful of times and there you go he definitely seems to enjoy it. So, again, as we keep consolidating these stacks, we're down to five. You know, the blinds keep ticking higher and higher. Uh, the chip leader has, what is it, 50, 50 big blinds. Simon Langer, your choice to win it, Tyler, <laughs> uh, is saying there's a short stack with, yeah little 13 14 big blinds so uh 406 mt is asking matt's from the seattle area correct yeah i've just replied in the chat there um yeah we were roommates in the seattle area actually we lived together for a year and we traveled to a lot of poker stops very cool um, real fast, I think we have potential on massive conflict here. Simon Langer with the pocket fours. Dominic here with the ace ten suit. Lunas waiting in the big blind with ace king suited. Uh, unless Dominic can find some fold that would probably be highly inappropriate, we're going to see a three way uh, train wreck. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that's great. This is a good play from Dominic. Um, I know he's running into the ace king here, so it looks bad, but you want to isolate for the bounties, and that, that hand definitely is ahead of Langer's range. It, is there room here? I, I know when you watch the higher stakes Triton events, poker go, you'll see someone in Simon's shoes shove almost all in, and then they can find the fold. And instead, he calls it off here. It's actually in pretty good shape. 
with the pocket fours. Lonis finding a king on the flop. Simon finding a four on the turn for a triple up. Uh, as Lonis takes out Dominic, takes a bounty, wins a little bit of side chips there. And Simon finds a triple up to, to avoid the death knoll. Um, all right, then. So I, I was going to say, you'll see it on the high stakes scene. You shove almost all in 80, 90% of your chips. So if that exact confrontation happens where it's, yeah, uh, two large stacks go to war behind you, you can fold it and try to get the ladder. But Simon puts the call in. What I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that specific type of dynamic that unfolds? Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense, especially in a bounty when you don't cover anybody. Because if you ladder while not... Ca if, if you cover people and you ladder, it means one thing because you weren't going to get any more big bounties anyway. But if you don't cover anybody, laddering means a ton. It might it mean as much as getting someone else's bounty. So there's a weird... There's weird math where you're folding with too much equity in that hand. But mm -hmm. ICM, you're gaining a whole bunch of equity on the ladder. And as another point in the bounty being super short you end up getting isolated against bad hands and you your equity uh is actually higher uh, your icm is even higher and the bounty has a short stack so with him sticking in the vast majority of his chips there do you think it's more appropriate for him to find a fold or for him to go for the gusto because it sounds to me like maybe a fold was the way to go it you have to put in the correct amount. That was too much. So okay. if he he had, what do you have, like 12 big blinds or something total? Sounds he made right. it like 10 to go. I mean, you want to make it way, I mean, just open to seven big blinds and fold for the last five or open to six and fold. Well, as we're debating the theory behind it, Simon Langer tripled up four players left and, and Simon Langer is now just slightly ahead of Simon Beckman for second place. So that was uh, kind of that bloody train wreck that we've been seeing here waiting on. Also, I don't think that fours is the correct hand to do that with um, because you could end up against two non pairs. So the only hands to really do it with are weak aces, maybe weak kings that you feel like you have to be committed if you're that short in the first place. Okay. Because you have to sense. be dominated, otherwise it's it's a terrible mistake to fold the fours if you're up against two hands that are not pairs. It makes a lot of sense. Well, Simon versus Simon here as the former Simon has a turn, a pair of aces, while well, Mr. Simon Langer. A and this is the same Simon Langer as earlier that went runner, runner versus the flop straight. Now Simon Langer was able to find a two outer on the turn. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to run peer, if you're going to run hot in a tournament at the final table is really where you want to do it. Nothing wrong with that. All right, kings, eights, king nine suited, jack nine suited, off suit, I apologize. There we go, ladies and gents. So 406 MT asking if Tyler played in Pendleton. Sounds like a tournament series out there. Three of those Pindy bracelets. <laughs> Sorry about that, I had to kill some background noise. No worries. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the Pendleton Roundup was really special up in uh, the Northwest, and it was at a place where you could play poker at 18. But in Seattle, you had to be 21. So a lot of people from the Seattle area who were interested in poker, like Affleck and me, uh, we would go out to the Pendleton Roundup to play when we were between 18 and 21. And amazingly, all the people from uh, 
Turning Stone in Northeast New York somehow found it. So all those poker legends were there when they were 18 to 21. Very nice. Wow, look at this action uh, I missed. Sorry. <laughs> so loan is open for a min raise and Simon flat it on the button with pocket eights. Flops top set. Now we got the third heart on the turn to complicate matters. So Lone is just proceeding with a check call line here. Uh, I mean, nothing really scary for, for Simon. There's a four liner to a straight, but Lone shouldn't have a lot of tens in hand unless it's maybe pocket tens. So I think Simon can go for a little value, but does check it on back. Um, yeah, so 18 to 21 club was all at uh, Pendleton. Between the yeah, it was the smallest events. casino. I mean, it started, it was, I think the main event was 1,000, and they'd get like one other 500, but it was mostly 200s. Okay. So and they were. it wasn't huge, but they would get, you know, at the height of it, they would get 1,000 players for some of them. Oh, dang. All right, yeah, those are some uh, pretty, pretty big events then. It was just, it was insane that those kids from the Northeast ended up making it. I don't know, I'm trying to remember some of the names, but they're all the very close friends of the the Charters and the, uh, Greg Merson and, um, oh man, I don't even remember their names now. Struggling, but all those crews, all those guys up there that came from Turning Stone, I think Sean Deeb came from Turning Stone too somehow. All these guys come from yeah, that sounds Central right. New York. And yeah, there was a huge crew of them that went out a couple years in a row. I was a, uh, I was down in Texas in those years, and our crews were all going up into Windstar was our 18 uh, casino at the Indian Reservation. So a lot of people had come from Dallas and Houston. So there's a lot of 18 year old, 19 year old kids that would turn up there and try to. Yeah, make a name for themselves and there's been a few people that have come out from that era uh, obviously i've made a few bracelets um cord garcia won the initial colossus event um, and had some other success in a tournament arena dj alexander won his first bracelet last year has been around on the scene for a while um I'm trying to remember there's been a few, you know, but 18, 18, 19 year old kids that start playing at those as soon as we all were able to. So, same type of affair. I love the the poker travel scene. It's great. We always talk about the World Series being like summer camp, but really any one of these stops, if you go, you know, year in and year out, it ends up kind of being like that where you know some dealers, you know some staff, you know some other players traveling in. So it's all. I don't know, just all these trips are fantastic. And I think even if a bunch of you guys are over in Europe who are watching, the, you can't make it over for the World Series. I think Party Poker Millions Europe's coming up in June also. Yeah, we were talking about that with Henry earlier on. It's going to be June 2nd to, I believe, June 13th, if I'm not mistaken, in Barcelona. And Henry said he's going to be going out there uh, to do commentary for it and it'll start commentary on June 5th will be a first one we pulled up the schedule earlier and it looks like a tiered system starts with a 1k then 2k and then the main event and a couple 10ks but it really gives people the chance to get out there and uh, start off for a relatively small amount and try to build up and build their way into future tournaments so definitely yeah, set up you're not there for the World Series and being in Barcelona. I, I wouldn't even say it's second place. I, I'd probably prefer to be in Barcelona and miss the series for a week. That, that'd be way more up my alley. Yeah, I've never made it to Barcelona. I've heard a lot of great things. So I was planning on going during the during the shutdown years. I'll go. I'll go again sometime here. Well, I'll go for the first time sometime here near future not this one but one that isn't in june <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fair enough 
I would, uh, I would pretty happily go. I mean, I, on a June second, that's what three day. I can make it out there. <laughs> All right, he's committed, guys. I just heard it. You heard it here yeah. first. Nathan Gamble's going to Barcelona. Tell Henry. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would happily go. That's how much I love Barcelona. Nice little pop for my boy Simon with the seven deuce. You mean Simon oh, over Simon? Simon? Simon Langer, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, they didn't work out for him last time, but Lonus is picking up some pretty premium hands here. Kings, just an orbit ago. Now we got the Queens. Yeah. That's how you maintain a pretty solid first place. He did a good job not losing his whole stack with the Kings. I mean, you can decide you don't want to see a scary turn card and just check raise and get it in on the flop and he didn't do that so he got kind of got saved by a scary turn in river but at least he didn't go broke yeah not only did he not go broke but i mean maintain chip lead over the tournament only one over that 300 million mark and they're I mean, they're pretty bunched up though in all fairness between uh, Lonus and the other Simons. Yuri's out there in the back of the pack. Blinds just went up three and a half, seven million. So Yuri's out there with 15 big blinds. Uh, but the rest is pretty bunched up, Tyler. Yeah, they sure are. And they got 40 ish. They're not, uh, they're not in shove mode. I get to see some, we get to see some action for this, uh, four handed game. Yeah, give the people what they want. So, right. step away for just a second from our table, just so you can see these beautiful faces. <laughs> be right they really just wanted action. to see. You said give the people what they want. That's what they wanted to see. That's true. They know. We, uh, we are working on a delay of the final table, so sometimes we have to skip over their breaks. And a little production here and there to, to make sure that we try to get this to you as smoothly as possible. OA Grinder, one of our fellow commentators out there, was in the booth earlier today alongside Mr. Henry Kilbane, saying he wants more close-ups. Well... Everyone come on down to World Series of Poker, and you can see us. Tyler in the No Limit Events, me in anything other than No Limit Events. <laughs> I like to dabble in the mixed games just for fun, so when they have a, uh, like they have the satellites to the 10Ks, because I won't play any of the 10K mixed events, but when they have the 500 or $1,000 satellites to them, I love playing those. So I'll play a, you know, a, a 1K deuce to seven triple draw satellite, not really knowing what I'm doing at all. <laughs> I mean, that's not completely fair. I know a little bit. I just definitely not an expert and would be a dog in the field. Uh, there was uh, a couple players in the 10K deuce to seven last year that were I would say you were a clear, definitive favorite over without <laughs> ever having played a hand with you of that game. I, I believe you. I mean, there's some people who play poker just for fun. They're not really trying to win, you know? They were... In, uh, in, in almost every variant. I believe they were having fun. So... Obviously a beautiful turn card here for Yuri, uh, as he now has the nut straight. Lonus is just blasting off 50% of the pot. And it'll be interesting to see. Okay, Yuri just goes for it, tries to get all in on the turn. Obviously nothing for Lonus to continue with it, just ace five. So I'm not in love with the, uh, the second barrel from Lonus there, just no no card that's relevant at all i guess yeah there's just a, it, it's just a bluff that seems too hopeful because 
when nine ten jack are on the board, you don't your opponent doesn't need much to continue. They're gonna have a pair and a gut shot always. Sometimes a pair and an open ender, sometimes two pairs. It's a pretty ambitious bluff. It, it's really interesting when you say that because it brings me back into watching some of Phil Galifon stuff and he'll talk through a spot of what he should theoretically do, what he would actually do as a player and then how it interact. And then he'll pull up spots from his heads up match and he'll be like, okay, this is what I should do. And then, he, you know, he'll, he'll bluff when he's not supposed to. And he's just like, I hate that play. I had zero equity. That was, you know, very clearly <laughs> a check. Um, so I, I butchered that hand when I actually played it. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting to see what a lot of people should do from his perspective with those zero equity hands. Uh, exactly what you're talking about. There's nothing he can catch to really give him an edge. Um, and real fast, we, we got beautiful flop here for Lonus, trip deuces versus the, the Jack Nine of Yuri from the small blind. And this at least is a nice spot for him coming off of that hand a minute ago where he got caught blasting the turn. Now potentially he's going to get more value than he would derive before. Sixty percent pot on the river, and I mean, depending on if Yuri's been paying attention, he does find the fold. Very nice fold there. Gets away from it. That is a nice fold win with only <clears throat> only the flush draw getting there. Not really much else out there. You have to give your credit, your opponent credit to value bet hands that are not just flushes, which he did. He had three deuces, but there, if your opponent is only value betting flushes and full houses, then you probably shouldn't fold the Jack nine there. Yeah, that makes sense. It's because that, that 60% pot is just not going to be top pair with a little bit better kicker very often. So he is pretty polarized. Yeah, if you can say he's going to be betting those uh, those deuces, maybe find the fold. But yeah, I don't think a jack ten is going to be going for that size. And if you can take that out of his range, then um, makes a lot of sense. So good fold for Yuri. Preserves the stack. Couple new faces out there in chat. Happy, how you doing? Chess dude guy, bring on the beers, it looks like. Welcome on in, everyone. <laughs> Potential here with some suited kings. One a little bit better than the other. But I imagine, oh. What, what would you say there, as you're the short stack uh, with Yuri's you know, 25 big blinds, king three suited, four handed. To me, uh, without doing any studying on No Limit Hold'em, just inherently I think I'm going to look at that hand and it's going to be raised for me. Um, am I playing a little bit too loose in that spot? No, I, I think it is uh, I think it is raised. But I actually think that uh, intuitively people don't see that in four handed, especially because you're under the gun while it's well four handed. People just look at King three and, and let it go without really thinking it through. But uh, four handed King three King three suited is pretty strong hand actually, and it blocks things that are going to be just three betting you or getting all in. So and I think it's definitely, definitely an open. Could have changed the dynamics of this hand as we see Simon flopping the nut straight versus other Simon with the King half flush. <laughs> Beckman Langer here. Um, yeah, it, it just inherently seemed like King 3 offsuit, clear fold. King 3 suit, it has way, way too much value to uh, to fold under the gun. Wow, tough spot for Simon Beckman here. Not getting a good price, but 
having such a good hand you don't want to fold. Lots of times that'll induce me to bluff when I know I'm not trying right to to make a call to draw for whatever I'm drawing at, it'll induce me to bluff shove instead. <laughs> This is, I mean, basically a pot size bet on the river. And Simon Beckman is unable to find it. Finding a queen of spades on the river makes a call and sends up our monster quarter billion chip pot to Simon <laughs> Langer. Quarter billion is like your catchphrase. I mean, we only have so <laughs> many chips in play. I feel like a quarter billion is a way to go. That's pretty great. Yeah, that's a tough spot for Beckman. He may have been able to find a fold on the turn or the river, but really tough, close decision. And credit to Langer for betting the right size to get that much value. He did get max extraction, as Pappy notes in the chat. Oh, yeah, it's... um. I think for me, it's a fold on the turn from the perspective of for Simon Beckman after Langer goes so large because Langer's going with 85, 90% pot on turn. He can have the nine eights and nine sevens. He can already have a full house and you can just be drawing completely dead. Um, so if I wasn't raising the flop, I don't really like drawing there at an uncapped range uh, for the big blind. So, yeah. And then he follows up again with 98% pot on the river. So you've already called, and now it's like, well, what are you beating? I mean, 10 7 is going to check back. You know, 10 8 is going to check back. They're not going to turn a blocker play. Uh, it, it's a difficult spot, but I think there was some opportunities to find the fold along the way. I think you're absolutely right. So, but you know, now we have Simer, Simon Linger with 400 million as a chip leader, Lonus in second place. Just over 300 million. And then Yuri and Beckman trailing behind. Not quite tied for last place, but essentially. With uh, that 15 to 20 big blind range. Uh, 406 MT out there in the chat talking about. Uh, gain some full tilt money to a guy, gain the cash for it, and then that guy ended up being Chase Bianca, who won a WSOP raise a year or two, uh, a year or two later, and also just came off ninth place at the World Series of Poker main event this past main event. He used to be place, uh, maybe eighth. Sounds right. I think. Uh, he was a regular in our cash game in the Seattle area for a while. Okay. He was really young then. I think he moved away. I can't remember when, but all that time ago. But I played a, thousands of hands with him in cash in the Seattle area. He's uh, he's done pretty damn well for himself. Yeah, he there's a lot of guys. Player. There's a lot of guys that made the main event final table from your neck of the woods. Wow, that's true. That's very encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, man. Well, Kenny Tran, Lee Markle, Lee Watkinson. Real fast here. We see another Simon on Simon concentration with Beckman. Having now a dead gut shot alongside a jack high flush draw versus Linger's nine high made flush. And Simon Rivering a little bit of showdown value here. 
Obviously, Langer is going to go for probably the full spectrum. Probably all of it. Okay. Doesn't go for the lot, but asks for the majority of Beckman's chips. Wow. Oh, um... <clears throat> Simon Langer just really understands what's going on with Simon Beckman. They have a kinship. He understands exactly how much to that from him. That was... Yeah, that was a difficult one. He may understand, but I feel like he's abusing the situation. Just... <laughs> feel, feel bad. It's like a redhead stepchild situation. <laughs> yeah, Beckman should have got away from that one for sure. Maybe there's some tilt coming from a past few hands and... Just not the happy tilt we talked about earlier either. Here's a 20 big blind happy tilt shove. Uh, I'm a pretty big fan of this <clears throat> shove because Yuri is going to be in a world of hurt with Beckman sitting there so short stacked. So I think Klinger can shove almost any two cards, but happens to have a, a decent one if called. Yeah, that's definitely true. And Yuri has a big bounty too. That's definitely a correct shove i was just joking about the happy tilt yeah unless it was happy tilt <laughs> All right. All oh wait grinder says simon needs to take a quick walk around his kitchen well he may get that opportunity here in a second pocket seventh eight five suited eight five suited not a bad place to be. It is a fantastic place to be, actually. Okay. As good as you could hope for. Simon needs this pocket sevens to hold up. And a pretty beautiful flop here for him. Doesn't realize it, probably hates that flop, but in actuality, we can see that the eight fives are not doing so well. He may be walking around the kitchen as we speak. Most glorious turn card he could imagine without ever knowing it. Queen <laughs> of Clubs, leaving Yuri and Lonis drawing at the two remaining eights to chop it up and take out Simon. Not to be. Yeah, Simon may already be pacing his kitchen thinking he's done and dusted. Yeah, I think we've, uh, you've mentioned three or four friends of yours that have made the final nine, final ten. Uh, you had the guy on the, the final ten that you had it named after. You had uh, Matt Affleck that took 15th place. Uh, all of the Lees you mentioned earlier. Kenny Tran. So, uh, another beautiful spot here for Simon after that triple up as Yuri with pocket tens on the button. Lonus with ace five off could get a little spicy, and then Simon's waiting in the weeds with pocket queens. Okay, Lonus has no opportunity for spice. <laughs> Beckman in a great spot after those sevens. Now up against tens. Here we go. Off to the uh, races with Simon Leagues ahead. 80-20. Beautiful flop. Great turn and a very solid river for Mr. Beckman. As he finds another double. So a triple and then double. And Simon Beckman is right back in this. As Yuri is not only the short stack, Tyler, but also the short stack with the massive bounty on us at 30 Two hundred sixty-six dollars for whoever can end his misery. And yeah, they can happen fast in these uh, these bounty events. It wasn't really bounties that that made it happen this time. It was just the big hands. But lots of times the bounties uh, will induce some crazy isolation with some you know silly hands with very little equity and that can really cause big swings fast yeah 
There's a couple of confrontations that we saw, specifically the pocket fours of Simon Linger earlier, alongside Ace-10 Sudev, the next player, and the Ace-King Sudev, Lonis. Uh, that was a collision course that really occurred from that. Brimp555, five, five, five. we are four-handed. We have been four-handed for a little bit now. Um, it's been very beneficial for Simon Langer. You see they're seeing the small blind with half a billion in chips. Uh, and right a now... Nice stuff from back then. Yeah, quite nice, Ace-10. Happy tilt? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's not that easy when someone opens in front of you and you're covered in two spots, but... It was definitely the correct play. So, expect a open here from Langer with the ace five. Yeah, I mean, Yuri's seeing here just now with a sub five big blind stack just getting shorter and shorter with every passing orbit. So Yuri should be shoving here because he will get isolated by either Lonus or Simon if he does, because he opens up the betting again for Simon. So you would you get heads up with uh, your hand isn't very good, but you get to play heads up with almost two and a half times your money in the pot. Makes some sense. But there is. There is an outside chance he can ladder still, so I guess there is there's some reason not to do that. But you're looking for a spot to get isolated on with dead money in the pot when you're short in the bounty. We'll definitely be taking a flop here as it's another Simon versus Simon hand, King Seven Hearts versus the Pocket Fives. Yeah, I, I mean, you're already saying here he wants to take advantage of people trying to take advantage of his bounty, wants to find a way to... Oh, okay, not a flop. I apologize. Simon Beckman is just jamming it all in here. Um, not sure I'm in love with that uh, as Yuri's sitting so short. Yeah, the, the ICM implications of laddering once from Yuri there should outweigh the value of the pocket fives yeah these pkos really change dynamics more than i think some people realize So Lonus really hasn't done a whole lot as of lately, but still maintaining a pretty solid second place. Over 30 big blinds, about 35 big blinds. So sometimes that's the way to do it. Just sit back, let everyone else knock each other out, you know, wait for your spots. And uh, it seems Simon Beckman wants to be in every single pot with Linger right now. Nice spot for Beckman, just limping and jamming over the top of him. Um, Langer, with his ability to extract money from Simon, probably should have just taken a flop there rather than raising it up. <laughs> yeah, just just wait for the stone nuts and just <laughs> figure it out, looked into his soul and said, okay, I know how much to bet, we're good. Good to see you back out in Chatland Grinder. Appreciate you joining us, even though we kicked you out of the commentary booth. So you're not too mad at us. <laughs> so, I mean, this is one of those spots. It's like you have such a bad hand and you can use your bounty to induce, you know, a little bit of coverage later down the road. So some people will just kind of be done with it, but it's good to have some patience here from Yuri's perspective. So 
So Simon Langer uh, was almost out here in seventh place at the beginning of this final table, hand number one. Got all in the top pair versus a mage straight from, I believe it was a Brennan H, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a hot minute now. But went yeah. runner, runner for a full house and uh, making the most of it. Great bluff, asking for able to flip it into big blinds for a minute. Uh, not able to do that. We're, we're just going to have to do some math for you if you'd like. Yuri, two big blinds. That one was complicated. <laughs> but blinds I like, right now. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Mil. No, I was just going to say blinds are four, four and eight million at the minute. So It was a nice play from Simon here to open to two and a half X rather than two because if you... If Yuri were to put it in, Lonus would be getting such a cheap price. So he made it a little bit bigger. I think Lonus would still find the call for only two and a half big blinds. I think maybe Simon should have made it a little bit even bigger than that, but he did adjust because of that. That's definitely fair. And nice check back from Simon. Uh, as Lonus is calling pre-flop rates to have an ace in his hand. After the turn, pairs the eight. I mean, he can't be an ace. He can't be an eight. And there's not much else continuing on this flop. So nice give up from Simon, recognizing that he won't get too many faults after that turn card. Yeah, I agree with that. You're getting a little bit more love out in the chat for your doppelganger. <laughs> My abs don't look exactly the same as Jason Momoa's. The rest of my body, of course, does. <laughs> you just need to get the tattoos, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this has potential to be a, a pretty spicy one. As Simon has a double gutter. Lonus has, you know, mid pair alongside some backdoor opportunities. Uh, so... Really some fun turn cards here to play with. Lonus does find a call. And when Lonus calls pre-flop, we expect it not so much to be a 6-5 suited type of hands, but more queen-10 suited, maybe. Um, kind of that upper middle range. So it's starting to look like Simon Langer is a bomber when it comes to bet sizing all the time, not just to extract value from Simon Beckman. But it worked very well against Beckman. And it may have helped get a fold here too. Double gutter, but he went with an 80% pot bet on the turn, which is massive. We're asking for tats. We're asking for photoshops. We're asking you to hold up the trident. Of <laughs> it's the gone people. too far. Ladies and gentlemen, bring it back on. We're at the Party Poker Millions online event with myself and Jason Lemo, uh, Tyler Patterson, <laughs> wherever he is. I'd say it's a, it's not a bad one to, to have a comparison to. No, I'll take it as a compliment for sure. Another fun one here. Simon with the top side of the open-ended against Simon Beckman with the two pair in the flop, eights and sevens. And we have a Simon in the chat. Simon in the chat. I hope you are either one of the other Simons that's playing at this table or you're here for your Simon brethren. Uh, because there's no other reason you should be here, Simon LA Snaps. Okay, Beckman makes a call on the turn with his eights and sevens after Linger bombed it for 80% pot. And now Linger has to decide what he wishes to do. And for what we've seen, I expect a bomb. <laughs> nope. 
All right. He wisely checks that one back. There just wasn't anything you can get your opponent off of. We've already seen Simon Beckman make a couple of pretty big calls with one pair against Simon Langer. That's he true. wasn't folding a full house and may not have folded in a tie there. Yeah, that's a good point. We have seen those hero calls many times already, so... Wise, wise give up. Yuri here with uh, not much behind his big blind. 5.9 million, less than one big blind. So the Simons are circling the water. Six, seven, eight, all clubs. Top pair for Simon Langer, mid pair for Yuri, mid pair for Simon Beckman. Short stack does put in. And Beckman here with a interesting spot. So he doesn't want to get raised out. Instead does a raising himself. And I don't imagine with top pair and the gut shot that lane is going anywhere it does find the call this really puts beckman into an awkward spot now uh is this six seven eight all club board i mean Langer can be laying in wait with a, a variety of holdings from the small blind so doesn't want to get too carried away chasing that bounty Yeah, as chat says, by Yuri, good game, Yuri. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a, a path forward. And there's not. As Simon Linger hits the trip eights on the river, knocking out Yuri in fourth place. And we have three players remaining with Simon Linger as our clear runaway chip leader with about half a billion in chips. And for myself and Tyler Patterson, we will be seeing you shortly after the break. Cheers, everyone. Henry, the man that Phil have said his name more than anyone. Maybe him and Rock Costisa are the names I've said the most over the last year and a half. That's Phil, though, isn't it? Including uh, you know, my brother's name, my mum's name, the dog's name. You know, it's all. It's been Arthur and Rock. Here they go. Uh, Arthur limping in with Queen Six of Diamonds, Henry from the hijack. Spicy. Limping in off 15. Watch and learn, kids. The thing is, James, if I did that. Everyone's screaming <laughs> at their screens. And what yep. is this fish doing? But when Artel does it, everyone runs to their computer, checks the solvers, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you meant to do that every now and then. Well, good to see the see who we're pulling. Everyone has a little bit. Artel, a top pair, is going to bet. And check two. Chan. Overcard. Gut shot, but with 1.5 million chips. Well, there we go. It is going to stick around. And most of all, with the uh, the bottom end open ender, Henry. But for Ninja K, this may seem very attractive. Wow. Yeah, yeah you know, turn a 10 and you don't really know where you're at. Right. Especially against the short stacks, the SPR is going to be so low. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a bad turn card for Chan. The nuts. Wow. <laughs> Very tiny. Really quick as well, Henry. Artel's 
dug himself a hole. Mm. Did he find the ladder? Climb on out of it. Not yet. He'll stick around for at least one. Fortunately for him, doesn't improve. Yeah, look at that, just a mini left. Turn off IK chips, the only ones left in Chan's stack. Chan goes for half a milli. Henry just desperate to get paid here. And I mean, if he's up against a ten, it's going in anyway, right? So he's just trying to get some value from two pair. Right. And I suppose the kind of range of hands Alto limps with here, um, we'd expect to have the two pair if they've got something, right? You're not. I guess we're not expecting to see queen six of diamonds, but Chan might expect to see some of those connected cards in the middle that have stuck around on the turn. So this does make a lot of sense in that sense. And I guess that's why Arthur probably folds this one, Henry. I mean, uh, what do you think Arthur's thought process is here, though, right? He's tanking. I just, I mean, I'm trying to think of what plus we could be up against here. On. <laughs> I can't. The King nine. Wow. I'm thinking, wow. Let's call it off. Oh, huge turn around for Chan, a near double up. Starting the hand so short. Arthur leaving himself well below 10 bigs. Reminds me of that scene from The Matrix where he's like, see, he is human. Come on back in, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the mute there. No harm, no foul, as we're at the Party Poker Millions online event. My name is Nathan Gamble, alongside Tyler Patterson, as we watch our three finalists play down to a winner. We have Simon Langer here with the vast majority of chips in play, 60% left. There's one billion chips in play. And it's going to be Simon Langer, Simon Beckman, and Lonis here for the finale. I hate to say it, Nathan, but uh, you owe me one beer now. And looks like my Simon might be beating your Simon again in this one. Well, I mean, we might be on the two beers. Don't get so cocky. We still have <laughs> Simon one, Simon two. They're first and second in chips. There's always, I mean, look, look how, come on, come on. Yeah, Simon Beckman, Beckman is tough. after it. He is tough. Plus there's Lonus's $2,000 bounty looming. Absolutely. That they may have to clash over. And, you know, currently we got four... Four million, eight million in the blinds, which means Lonus is sitting here with a sub 10 bank blind stack. Uh, you see the next event that will be played is gonna be streamed tomorrow, Monday the 30th. We're gonna be back here and uh, going to be bringing you day two of the main event. It's a $1,000 buy-in. Day two of the main event. I'll be there. Henry Kilbane will be there. 
and uh, we'll get back to that shortly as we now have an all-in concentration between the two short stack, Beckman and Lonis. And uh, we'll see if it's a Simon on Simon affair after this hand, or if Lonis can find the double up. <clears throat> Anything but safe flop there for Lonis as Simon Beckman finds the top two pair, aces and sixes on the flop. Good game, Lonis A. Good game in third place as we have Simon Beckman take on si Simon Linger for the all in confrontation. Simon Lonis did a good job. He didn't have a lot of cards and he uh, took it easy kind of on the final table. He wasn't hunting a lot of bounties, but uh, he preserved his stack down to third at least. Absolutely. And still got in, you know, on, on the right side of a coin flip, if you will. Good game, sir. Hey, what Simon a... in the chat, which Simon are you rooting for? <laughs> right? There's those payouts for those of you curious right now. Our last man out, Lonis, took 13,000 plus those bounties that were accrued, and we will see at the end exactly how much that counted for as we have the final totality uh, but for now it's simon beckman and simon linger they're both gonna get 19,500, but they're going to have those bounties as well it's going to count for pretty hefty difference between first and second place usually about fifteen thousand. nice semi bluff here from beckman feel like we can't even uh can't even say simon anymore there's just nothing but simon's left yeah just just langer and beckman i'll take simon to win it actually tyler yeah he already did yeah well now i just get simon <laughs> should have let you have them both <laughs> I just know if we keep doing this, the beers are flowing this summer. We gotta wait for a final table for yeah. Get the victory, get the bracelet, make it count. Yeah, we gotta take it seriously for a while. Can't be out drinking beer every night. I'm typically more on the uh, straight and narrow when it comes to World Series. To me, it's the time of the year. Make the money. I take it pretty seriously. Get the sleep. That's good. I've been up and down on that hole. Been on both ends of the spectrum, taking it very, very seriously, and been an animal. Which side won you the bracelet? Yeah, I didn't really want to mention that because that was the animal year. It was like, the, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whoa, we got a call from Langer there on the end. Yeah, a, a massive nice value just... from Beckman. This is like watching uh, twins go to war. <laughs> like, they know exactly how much the other one's willing to bet. They know how much the other one's willing to call. <laughs> Let there be blood. Yeah, the, the bracelet year was the only year I'd ever been to EDC, and it actually the tournament started the day after EDC, so oh. it was more of an animal than I usually am. I'm usually, you know, toe the line between having fun and taking it really seriously. But yeah, that year it was crazy, and it happened to work out. We, uh, we just came back from Mexico today. Uh, I got back into Las Vegas um, two hours before we started the stream. And we left for Mexico at like midnight on, on Monday. And it was all the EDC people were heading home. Yeah. And it was the calmest, <laughs> most chill flight I've ever seen leaving <laughs> Vegas. Everyone was just like at the airport, just completely dead from the weekend 
I, it was <laughs> it's probably my happiest flight into or out of Las Vegas. <laughs> That's very funny. It's not really my my music or my scene, but I'm too old for it. But it's just a crazy spectacle. It is a fun thing to see once in your life. Uh, I've never been, but I'd like to go at least one time. Uh, Gastald, Mars, in the chat. Seen you out there a couple times. Appreciate you being here. Do you think it's possible to end an all-in situation this deep? Uh, I mean, Simon Linger right now has 47 big blinds. They're, they're pretty comparable. And at 40, they'll be in the 45, 50 big blind range. Uh, absolutely. I mean, if you get you know, a couple decent pairs pre-flop, if you get some, you know, pairs and, uh, you know, Broadways, Ace Kings, Ace Queens, Ace Jacks, um, definitely some all-in situations that can arise pre-flop. You know, most people don't play as cautiously as Mr. Phil Helmuth in the Heads Up Arena, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty easy for players to, to get in some, some stacks Heads Up. And these two, uh, Simon Langer uh, uh, bets close to the size of the pot a lot. He bets more than 50% of the pot almost every time he bets, whether it's bluffing or not. And Simon Beckman has shown the propensity to be all in pre-flop. So you could see a three bet shove out of Beckman, even though he's 40 plus big blinds deep. Yeah, that wouldn't even remotely surprise me. It definitely seems like Beckman is uh, much more willing to go with the aggression pre-flop and Linger goes with it post-flop. Simon yeah, LA true. Snaps is rooting it on, so we got three Simons out there. <laughs> See, I was just thinking from a perspective, Tyler, of an all-in pre-flop confrontation. I didn't even go down the, the rabbit holes of on the flop, turns, river. I mean, that's that's too easy to get all in. <laughs> oh, right. That is probably what Marcy meant. Um, yeah, they can definitely get in an all-in situation, even if it's just a three-bet. Usually 50 big blinds deep, it, it should take a four-bet to get all-in pre-flop, but not always. Some players are just going to three-bet all-in with all the hands that they think are good but don't want to play like maybe ace nine or king jack or whatever yeah i mean simon beckman was showing a propensity of limping the small blind and jamming all in over the top of linger when we were four-handed so if that was in his repertoire then i imagine it's still in play now all right so Simon L.A. Snaps is saying he's Simon Langer, by the way. So, you know what? I don't have any reason why not to believe you. So, congratulations, Simon Langer, on making it this far into heads-up play. And for your sake, we're hoping you take it down. For my sake, we're going to Beckman because Tyler has to buy me a beer. <laughs> I don't know. I'm suspect if it's true or not. It Who is would on ever a 30 lie minute in delay, poker? so he could know. Who would lie in poker, though? Wait, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Or Who's on Twitch queen? chat. They wouldn't lie on Twitch yeah. chat either. And Twitch chat plus poker? Definitely no liars. So, all right, Simon Beckman gets three bet pre flop. Goes to flop with the 10 5 suit. It seems a little bit of adventurous to me. You can't be folding a lot in heads up, but you do have to choose your battles appropriately. And if your opponent isn't three betting recklessly, then 10 5 suited is not one of the hands that you have to defend with. You do have to widen it up if they start three betting like crazy. Yeah, it really comes down to that of how much they're three betting. But uh, we really haven't seen any three bets uh, other than that one so far. It's been pretty minimal and keeping it pretty kosher.
Now this is one of those hands that if someone's going too wide on their three betting, maybe they'll incorporate the, you know, king small. But Simon's kind of playing it pretty, pretty normal so far. Langer. <laughs> Good save. Well, I mean, how many people enter this tournament and then you're telling me at days in we have a Simon versus a Simon? Come on. How's that happen? At least it's easy, they're easy-ish names to pronounce. I don't know if it's Langer or Longer. I did watch Bernard Longer in the senior PGA Championship today. He's like 70 years old and still in the top 10, which is amazing. But uh, right. so it could be could be Langer, could be Longer, but it's not. We're not getting too far out. Beckman, I feel, is a a pretty easy one here. Hey, Simon L.A. Snaps, if you could tell us how to pronounce your last name, we'd appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> and Gasol was uh, asking earlier about can they get it all in. These are the type of situations that can arise right now with, uh, if someone's inexperienced in heads-up play, um, you know, where they get all in with ace-4 pre-flop even. You know? So... Beckman, Absolutely, this was bets. a candidate. Mm -hmm. Beckman three bets pre-flop and then checks over the 7-9 jack board. How, how do you feel about a three bet and then giving the, the control over to you, your opponent? Um, I, I don't love it very often without uh, a decent amount of showdown value, but... I think that you do have to have some check give ups and this is probably one you don't have any suit you don't have anything relevant to the board and that board just doesn't miss very many hands so i actually don't mind this one and a healthy 162 million chip pot heading to simon linger's way Yeah, I don't, um, in all of poker, I am trying to think if I know another um, top-level professional poker player named Nathan. I know one or two players out there named Nathan, so don't really think it's possible for me to get heads up in any major tournament I play with another Nathan. What about on the Tyler front, say... There's a couple. I think there's. I don't know them personally, but there's a Tyler Smith and a Tyler Cornell. I think Cornell, and yeah. Tyler Kinney. I think not to be so, confused with the the Sean's he, out there. He's his younger brother. Oh, is he really? I, I think Tyler Kinney is Bryn's younger brother. Yeah, I'm not positive about that, but um, yeah, there's a few Tylers. Yeah, there, there's definitely more Tylers than Nathans. They're all younger than me. I was named Tyler early for some reason. And then when I was a teenager, all of a sudden there was a million toddlers at Tyler. Well, it's because of you. Right, right. That's not where I was going with it. But yeah, <laughs> yes, that is probably the case. <laughs> their their parents looked around or like, who's the most badass kid we know? That guy, what's his name? Tyler. Cool. Boom. Yeah. That's how it works. Logic. <laughs> obviously the most common name in poker is phil at the highest levels uh I, I feel like that's probably just a generational thing if we're actually being honest with ourselves kind of like the tylers there's a wave of tylers there's a wave of joshes and phils and you know yeah. they just happen to be badass at poker yeah i think phil gordon and phil helmuth are probably about Pretty close to the same age. Ivy's mm -hmm. a little younger, and then um, Galfond's, Galfond's a little younger than younger. him. Galfond is, um, he's not that much older than me. Like, he's still mid 30s, like 35, I think, 36, maybe. Yeah, I think he's right in between your age and my age. Which always hurts me deeply <laughs> at the core when I know someone like that who's just such a badass in poker has achieved so much on that. I'm like, man, if I was a little older and then I'm like, Oh, he's like two years older than shit. 
kind of takes away that argument. This has some potential for fireworks here as Langer flops the baby flush draw, seven high flush draw against Simon Beckman with the, uh, the triplets. Order sizing here. We've seen uh, Langer make some pretty solid uh, give ups where he kind of realizes that Beckman isn't going to give up, and uh, so he'll he'll maybe fire two barrels as a bluff. If he doesn't catch that spade, there's a decent chance he'll, he'll find a, a give up, as he has a propensity to do. So, but we'll see here as he fires a chunky little 35% pot. <laughs> it might not work now. Um. Unless he goes over his scissors and cuts Beckman's internet cord, I don't think he's going <laughs> to win this hand. It was a good give up from Langer. It's just very difficult to get someone off of anything that had any value when the board triples up or double pairs. Just... That's when the hero capes come out. Yeah. And I, I mean, with that pot, they are tied right now with 497 million for Beckman, 493 million for Linger. So uh, this is just back to a dead even match. And as Kokana Whiskey says in chat, good luck, Simon. <laughs> You're saying they don't have my picture in Hinden Ma. That's okay. I'm not overly worried about it. If people want to know what I look like, they can come here to the Party Poker Millions. <laughs> what else do you need? Is this your only running commentary gig these days? Uh, yeah, I just I kind of do stuff sporadically here and there. I did the Galpon Challenge for a while. And then... That was a big one. That was a lot of hours you put in. <laughs> A six months worth. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. I, I forget exactly. But yeah, it just is six months worth of commentary. It is a lot of hours. Um, and then I just do it whenever it pops up. I mean, I, I would happily do it all day, every day if they let me, but it's. Oh, Beckman here. Going with a, a cheeky little bet with the, the eight. <laughs> And Langer finding a call against all the missed straight draws, but that can be some nice value. Yeah, no, I would I would happily do this uh, as much as possible. I did commentary for one event last WSOP, the ten thousand dollar limit. So, I mean, that was that was exciting for me. I would love to jump in the commentary booth as often as possible, but for time being, this is the one and only affair. I got to do one at the World Series a few years ago that was it was actually Potlum in Omaha. It was one of like the the, the PLO Colossus, the five hundred dollar one that had a zillion oh, yeah. dollars. Yeah. And I had two friends at the final table, so it was fun to <laughs> do commentary for that. And I am kind of an expert in PLO. I'm not I'm not a legend or anything, but I'm kind of an expert in PLO. But that tournament then ends. And the next one is the ten K Raz final table. And they don't have anybody in the booth. So I stick around not knowing anything about Raz. Like, I'm doing the commentary just as a complete novice. And then uh, Matt Grapenthien comes in, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he is a fabulous expert in Raz. So it was really fun to see. And uh, Rhett Porter was at the final table, and he's another Seattle guy. So it was kind of a fun dynamic because I got to see Rhett making great Raz decisions and Matt Grapenthien then explaining them to me and then being a commentator as a novice is kind of fun too that was a new angle I, I've played with Grapes uh, once or twice fun guy definitely very well versed on the stuck games so a little potential here 
five seven suited versus uh, some ace king. So obviously, Beckman will raise up pre flop. Yeah, uh, it sounds like you had the WSP, WPT. So you've had some nice commentary gigs. So yeah, far. I've had a few just here and there, little ones here and there. I don't have anything running except for actually now with party poker. It's kind of regular. But I really enjoy it too, just like you. I like it when they come up. Uh, good flop here for Linger as he picks up the straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Uh, pretty easy barrel off from Beckman on the flop. Uh, inconsequential four spades on the turn. Could see it Linger looks... turn this one into uh, an opportunity for a little bit of a bluff. Yeah, I don't see Beckman folding here. Beckman's going to be approached with a difficult decision on the river here, I think. Uh, Linger's given up in these spots uh, quite a bit, so would be surprising to see him get all in, but is at the bottom of range, has that 7-5, doesn't really have any worse hands out there, does go for it. And if Beckman can find this call, then, I, I mean, that's the tournament right there. I this love this be... bet. I mean, even if Beckman does make the hero call, that was a, that's a good bet by, by Langer. Well, good bet by Langer. Great call by Beckman. Finds a hero call and is taking all of those one billion chips back home. And there you go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The champion, event number 65, the seven max weekender is Simon Beckman. And what a what cool a way to end it. That's just a cool hand. Like to catch a bluff with ace high to win the tournament. That's an awesome way to win. Congratulations, Beckman. That that was some phenomenal stuff right there. And this is exactly what they won, ladies and gentlemen. Simon Beckman taking home just over $35,000, while Simon Linger takes home second place of $25,986. This is a prize pool plus their bounties combined. And loan is there in third place, $16,908. Yuri, a very respectful $15,056 for fourth place. Dominic, $8,393. Brenner Vincenti, $6,398. Our seventh place finisher, Jerry Odin, $3,811. Uh, I mean, that was a phenomenal way to finish this, Tyler. Uh, it, it was the bluff at the, the bottom of the range, the seven high, and then it was the ace king calling for everything on the river. Yeah, I really liked how both of them played it. That was a cool, that was a really cool way to end it. Great stuff. Well, I, I'm always happy to be in the booth with you, Tyler. Look forward to sharing a couple more times. We do have the Party Poker Millions online main event tomorrow's coverage. That'll be day two, and that'll be right here once again on Twitch or Party Poker TV. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. My name is Nathan Gamble alongside Tyler Patterson, and uh, we appreciate y'all being here, and we'll see y'all again tomorrow. So congratulations to Simon Beckman. Cheers, guys. Cheers.